What's up guys? Building information modeling, BIM for short, as we all know, is an holistic process and integrated workflow where we learn, update and evolve while being in this process, for which till date Autodesk Revit has been proven to be one of the best and efficient softwares. The live project this time is once again going to be the real life executed residential project by one of the architectural firms of Surat Gujarat. This is that firm, the Octate, the part of design fraternity which provides services in various segments of design like architecture, structure and so on, of which architect Dishan Jariwala and architect Dishan Patel are the principal partners leading the firm. So, this is that executed G plus three and half residential project which has been beautifully crafted out by the firm. And if you see, it has this interesting elevation with unique form and massing, despite of adjoining structures to it. The reason being selected an executed project is that along with learning the modeling skills with Revit, you can also learn the design principles, hierarchy of spaces in perfect scales and proportions, and most important, the structural considerations implemented in that particular executed project. So guys, we are going to use the footprints of the floor plans of this particular project and the structural elements that is the beam and column and its exact size and its location as per the executed project and we are going to elevate this particular structure in Revit with perfect precision and joint condition. More specifically speaking, how a column is elevated from a footing and its joint condition with beam and floor and all of the structural elements, how are they joined to the architectural elements that is the walls and we are going to design various different wall types with its various wrapping layers that is cavity, insulation, etc. But we are going to do so by adding few amenities to the existing executed project and we are going to take certain design considerations and design decisions and edit it and customize it. So it is going to be very interesting and informative session. Watch the entire video till the end and if you think that it was, the video was worth then kindly enroll for this course and we'll, let's learn together and let's grow together. And welcome back to PTS CAD Expert and myself, architect Kumar Kapadia from the city of Surat in Gujarat. And now, without wasting a single second, let's jump into the interface of Rabbit. Welcome students for this course Revit BIM which is a combo of architecture plus structure plus MEP for architectural segment what all we have seen so far is under this architecture tab we have all this 3D drafting commands under this build panel and circulation panel but all of that we have seen in segregation and isolation but as I've been always saying that Revit is not only about the modeling of the 3D interface but it very prominently and efficiently does model the 2D interface. 2D interface refers to the essential building assets, the information that we feed to a particular build structure for its execution on site. That is the dimensions, the details, detail lines, the nomenclature that is the text, the tagging part, the colorful legends and symbols. But the implementation of that I am going to show you onto one entire complete project. So we in Revit today are going to elevate one complete project starting from scratch. Okay, so th this is that floor plans of that particular executed project which I have been talking in my introduction wherein this is nothing but a G plus three and a half typical residential project which has all the details that along with the architectural planning it has the structural inco structure incorporated with it that is the beam column sizes and the grid and everything and also the structural engineer has provided this footing plan wherein we have this eccentric footing, isolated footing, combined footing etc. So we are going to use the footprints of this particular floor plan, modify it, alter it, edit it and add few amenities to it, not only regarding the architectural segment, but also regarding the structural part. Okay. So and elevate that particular project, entire project in Revit. So this are the edited floor plans of that particular structure, wherein I have added an amenity that is wherein I have added a ramp, which is going to the basement floor, which can be used for parking. And this is the footing plan of that particular structure wherein you see that along this particular edge it has this eccentric footing, this is raft which is having the lift shaft, this is the combined footing and this is the step footing and this are the tie beams and this is the column positions. Okay. Regarding the structural concerns, I might be partially correct or completely wrong but the only motive is that I want to show you that how can you incorporate basic structure while working on an architectural model. Fine. So. This is the elevated plinth of uh, 1 feet 6 inches that is 18 inches which is having this home theater and a circulation 
<coughs> circulation staircase and lift shaft okay so moving to this upper ground floor it has this uh, uh, living spaces with uh, public semi-private and private spaces with extended floor plate which is having the garden area water body deck etc and the later part has this wash deck and kitchen garden fine and this is the typical floor plan and what what uh, one thing i would like to bring to your notice that what you see here this red columns are the floating columns okay the floating columns which will start from this floor from this particular first floor and due to the point load you can see that the beam grid over here the beam the size of the beam the beam width has been provided more and that is a structural concern fine so this is the first floor which is having this three bedrooms with a deck and garden and balcony and this is the terrace floor plan fine so we are going to elevate this particular structure in rabbit so without further overdue let's quickly switch to rabbit let me just close this and while in this file and new and let me open a project and browse and default okay and open and open so this was the project environment of rabbit fine so on to it what we are first going to do is that we are going to go to south elevation and lay some levels fine so this is going to be the zero zero that is uh, one road or let's say ground level ground or road level fine yes and then we will have at 10 foot we'll have the basement slab and then two more that is uh, I just need to check that from basement this is 10 foot and from this the flap top is 4 feet and this is 6 foot 6 inches fine so let's ll and at 4 feet 6 inches we will have 0 2 Putting top, yes, and two feet from there will be the zero one putting bottom. Fine, and this would be essentially two plinth level. And that would be 18 inches. And from there, 10 foot will be the upper ground floor. So, 3 upper ground floor. And LL and First floor, four, first floor, and finally nine foot six inches. That is the slop, the slap top. So by slap top. Let me just align them. And the following the the reason of following this numerology is that i want to see them all in order in the project browser so you see that you have this uh, basement slab and then footing bottom top and ground level plane upper ground time yeah so let me just uh, reduce the scale to one four and from here this should be Four feet six inches and from there it should be two feet yeah that's fine perfect and now by going to ground floor road level 
what I'm going to do is that instead we can actually go to yeah you can load it here as well no uh, first is that we need to go to footing bottom or footing top yeah fine footing top and just insert and load family and you will be provided with the AutoCAD plans what you just need to do is that you need to segregate them just like I have import CAD sorry import CAD and desktop and PTS and live classes June July and basics yes so you see that I have segregated this floor plan according to its level and what we want is that putting top and all and inch and this should be manual center okay and yes i'm going to lay this here fine and as soon as you load the autocad plan first step is that bg imported categories turn it to half time you can properly visualize this fine so what we are going to do first is that we are going to start laying this puttings imported category in half tone yeah sorry and okay so under this structural tab you have this various different types of footings very first i'm going to say that i'm going to use this isolated footing but modify and this is three foot nine inch by seven foot six inches okay so structure and isolated and yes you haven't so structural foundations and footing rectangular okay and just yeah but you cannot see it here and why is that yeah you need to move it uh you need you, you need to move to its depth so what is the depth here so just duplicate it call it uh, three cross nine three foot nine inches what was the depth i forgot sorry and this was seven foot six inches yeah so isolated and duplicate and call this three foot nine inches cross seven foot six inches wherein we are going to say that the foundation thickness is one foot six inches that's fine and no not one foot six inches i wanted two feet and the width to be three foot nine inches and the length to be Mm, seven foot six inches and with that training, um, okay and apply and okay and height offset to two feet so that we can visualize it fine and then we will move it to the designated level but right now first i want to place it after placing it what you can do is that m enter and move it but moving it, moving that particular floor, you see that one, 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 one more thing I would like to bring to your notice that 3D elements in Rabbit when snapped to AutoCAD lines will always have some glitch and error even though it is perfectly snapped. So you say modify and align and if I align this space with this, align and this to this and this to this. Then too, if you will zoom in, then you see that there is a little bit of glitch fine but that's okay even if i press li and snap to this point and draw a line and if you just zoom in then there will be always this little bit of glitch and error but that's okay fine that is snapping exactly to that point don't worry in that case so align and align this to this and this to this and now with this i need to copy this two three times so co one to two and this fine so now i this are the eccentric footing which has been created and now this isolated footing so that too again with that same function but i need to check 
the dimensions 7 foot 6 inches by 6 foot 9 inches fine 7 6 by 6 9 so again go to structure and isolate it and edit this and duplicate this call it 6 9 cross 7 6 okay and 2 feet is fine and this should be 6 9 and 7 foot 6 inches is fine apply and okay and yeah just place it so you see it is uh, some error 7 foot 6 and this is 6 9 I guess okay so uh, there was a problem <laughs> which should be actually 7 foot 6 inches and the length should be 6 foot 9 inches okay and apply and okay fine and now with this align and align this to this and this to this okay CEO copy and copy from this point to this point and this point too uh, again this will not snap so just place it somewhere and then align it okay and now we have this particular small footings and CEO and this I guess is one foot two nine by two nine yeah except square edit and duplicate and two cross nine two cross nine okay and both of these values will be two nine by two nine okay and apply and okay fine and just align them one to two and one to two okay and CO and one and two and three. Now we have this combined footing. So again, we need to measure this is six nine by this is twenty one. I guess yeah, almost twenty one. So CO and edit and duplicate and call it six nine cross twenty one feet. Yeah and one of this dimension will be 6 9 and the another one will be 21 feet okay apply and okay let's see yeah perfect align and this to this and this to this okay and this is the raft so architecture and uh, sorry structure and slab and raft slab structural and six inch foundation yeah that's better just duplicate it call it raft two feet why because we are going to add two feet of thickness to that in order to comply with the other other structural elements the exact size will be decided by the structural engineer and just finish you need to elevate it and yes yeah, so this is the raft okay so the only thing left is this particular step footing and this actually doesn't exist on site, but I just want to show you the modeling skills with Rabbit. And that's why I have created this as a step footing. Okay, otherwise on site, both of this are also isolated footing only. So structure and you see that this doesn't have an option to create that particular isolated footing. So, uh, sorry, step footing. So how will we create that? So not to worry, uh, isolated footing and I will just duplicate this. And what is the dimension of this? 11 6 by 23 6 okay and we are going to create a, create this particular footing in a different way so isolated 11 6 and what was that sorry i forgot 11 6 and 23 6 okay so structure and isolated footing and edit type and duplicate and call it 11 6 cross 23 6 okay and herein i have to enter the width to be 11 foot 6 inches and this to be 23 feet 6 inches okay and apply and okay and just create this but no i'm absolutely sorry this footing this particular footing will not be created this ways 
okay this particular footing will not be created this way so i just need to check undo uh oh redo yeah fine this particular footing will be created in a different way because you see that if you just see this particular section then you see that it has this tapered section fine so we need to create those steps in order to build that so for that i'll go to architecture and component and model in place and i'm going to browse to structural foundations yeah okay and call it step footing fine and we are going to use this 3d drafting commands for creating that particular footing and very i'm just going to say that extrusion and extrusion start to end and what is the height of that particular footing and from here to here it is three foot okay so three foot and again go to david yeah so zero and three foot fine and for before editing it just uh, move it to designated level fine so i need to take cross section of this and see it so as per the drawing this all footings should the the top of this footing should come here see since this is the footing top this level particular level is footing top so all of this footing should come so just select uh, go to footing top and select s a control press control select one and again s a s a and this and hold control key and again s a and this and all of this i will say that height offset to zero fine and now if i just check it in section then it's perfectly positioned but we need to move this particular footing the bottom of this should flush so i will select this and m enter and with constraint yeah constraint let's and disjoin just move it no sorry Un yeah uncheck constraint and then disjoin and move it two feet down fine so this would be three foot six inches and as per the drawing it is also three foot uh, yeah three foot six inches from this level because six inches this slab basement slab fine so now we need to create the steps so how we will do that for that i would just like to go to footing top again and what i'm going to do is that i'm going to take a section from here okay and i'm going to select this and edit in place and create and i'm just going to say that wide sweep i'm going to use this command wide sweep and sketch path and take a rectangle so the profile is hosted here so just finish and select profile and edit profile and go to section 2 and now we can edit that particular profile fine wherein i'm just going to deduct uh two feet one feet yeah one feet down and not one feet sorry two feet or let's just let me just check once yes two feet so two feet and li and come 12 inch down again 12 inch on this face again 12 inch down 12 and connect this to this and this portion i'm going to deduct from that particular chunk and just finish and finish and you see that we have our step footing perfectly modeled go to 3d and uh, sorry not 3d of this but oops not 3d of this but 3d of this fine so again vg and imported categories and turn that to half tone apply and okay 
so you can properly visualize the structure fine only thing is that you need to control c and edit type and select this press tab and select this and control a and control b yeah fine finish so okay so i wanted to show you this modeling skills and that's why i had created this particular step footing otherwise for no need of that now we need to create the tie beams fine so let's again go to footing top and for this i'm going to say that structure and beam but you don't have that rectangular column beams so load family and again if you have properly extracted your family then you'll be able to find that structural connections you no know, structural framing and under that concrete and concrete rectangular beam open and yes so i want duplicate and 9 inch cross 12 inch wherein the breadth is going to be 9 inch and the height is going to be 12 inch and apply and ok and with this command pick lines I'm just going to pick oh oh sorry so I need to say that I want the justification to bottom since I want to visualize it so one and yeah again the placement plane uh, see uh, the y justification y justification to left or right then it will properly see yeah one two three and four and five six seven eight and so on and this all of this have been created only this i guess oh, oh sorry i guess i need to change to delete and this i need to change the y justification to right i could properly position fine with all the style beams created now what we need to do is that select one sa all of that will be selected and just change this z justification which was bottom i just wanted to visualize this so that's why i changed it to bottom now just change it to top and it will be move to its designated level and sa and let's go to section and move it furthermore let's say the z offset value should be 12 inch not negative 12 okay perfect and 3d uh, not this 3d sorry this 3d and you see that you have your structure properly laid with all that connecting beams but here i forgot so just do one thing select this go to footing top and with that uh, just change this to bottom so no not bottom yes with bottom and that offset value of zero so you can visualize this and just see you and copy from here to here or just place it somewhere over here and then modify align and this to this and this to this okay but what we need to do is that we need to shrink it and just like that cs and pick lines and here also again right and one and two and one perfect okay and with that's all selected sa and the the justification to bottom and with the z offset to minus one feet and everything will be in place so just see in 3d no one two three the justification to top yeah sorry top okay so we have so much of our structure created now what next we need to do is that let's go to floor plan putting top and the next step after creating this particular structure what we need to do is that we need to create this particular retaining wall we should be having that particular strip footing fine 
So <clears throat> let's do that. So let me just go to putting top. Yeah, fine, that's fine. Fine, retaining ball. So architecture and ball. And I'm just going to call this edit type and duplicate this and call this retaining wall. Okay. And I just take it, this as a nine inches. And for materials, you don't have any material defined right now, but for that purpose only, that particular 3D file has I have kept open. So this is the executed project, live project of previous batch. You can find the videos on YouTube also on PTS CAD app, which is a pretty much detailed and huge project, the residential apartment. And this all, all this project has all the materials defined in it. Okay. So now I want to use this particular because since I don't I want to concentrate on modeling part and I don't want to waste time on creating this particular material since I've already created this material for this particular project. So how to do that? So what you need to do is that just by going to 3D, you have this provision in this rabbit that you need to go to manage, manage tab. And in the manage tab, you have this transfer project standards. Under that, you say that copy from, copy from which project. Uh, it is like now showing live project 23 batch, but that is not that project. Yeah, fine. That is the same project. Okay. Under that, I'll say the check none and I'll press M and materials and OK. Override. And with this, you see that all our materials have been transferred from that file to this file. Okay. And you see materials. And now this particular, our new file has all that material, amphitheater, basement, finished flooring, black stone. Okay. And brick beds and compound wall, dark glass, and all the materials, exposed column material. First floor, kitchen granite, wood bearing wall, everything which you can use. And how to create a material in Rabbit is not a rocket science. You just need to click this particular thing and say that create new material. Okay. And that default new material will be created. Now you what you can do is that you can just drop this down and use the existing materials of Rabbit. For example, you want to define any wood. Then just press this wood and make this part of this project environment. Or if not that, will that default new material selected, just select this particular asset browser. So that will open up this particular mat, mat files. Fine. And these are, the, these are the predefined materials by Rabbit. So the appearance library and that you have this table with different categories from which you can select, for example, concretes. And you can just replace this current asset in the material by browser. And I will just replace it and show you. Uh, concrete yeah fine so with that default new material has been changed to that material but just don't forget to duplicate it or else you'll end up messing with the project environment um the, the system files okay so i will just delete this since i just wanted to show you that how to add material and with this now we have i'll just close this file because we don't need it anymore and with this uh if i just go to that particular walls and you see that retaining wall and edit type and by category you have already defined we have already defined that particular retaining wall material in this file yeah see see retaining wall and okay and apply and okay apply and okay fine so now i again need to check that what is the level of that retaining wall Fine, the retaining of walls are also coming up till this particular. No, retaining walls will come only till the basement slab. So first we need to create the floor plate for this particular basement. You see that retaining wall is not coming till this depth. Retaining wall will come till the basement. This is the basement slab. So now we need to create the basement slab first. So grab it and let's go to basement slab. But you cannot see anything. Fine. So you have this option underlay range level and just change this to footing top. And yeah, fine. You can see everything perfectly. So we need to lay the floor plate. 
for the slab for that particular basement so floor and floor architecture or structure both are one and the same architecture and floor and duplicate this call this basement slab okay and let's make it typical 6 inch 150 mm 0.15 meters 15 centimeters and i'm just going to apply the existing material that is concrete cast in place gray okay fine okay apply and okay and i'm just going to draw the line starting from this point to this point or where will the lines come to me yes yeah it will come to that you know no, 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 doesn't matter fine and just finish where have we laid that particular basement slab yeah fine okay but before creating that basement slab what we were supposed to do is that we were supposed to create that small columns columns starting from footing top fine so structure and the and the architecture tab you have this drop down column when you say that structural column or architectural column also from this structure you have this column and you see that the blue shaped column and load family and just like that we added beams now we are going to add structural columns and where are those yeah and we have a lot of columns wherein i'm going to select this concrete rectangular column okay and just open yes and just edit it and Duplicate it, call it 9 inch cross 18 inch. Okay. And this breadth is going to be 9 inch and this is going to be 18 inch. Apply and find. And you see that right now it is showing depth. I'm just going to turn it to height and I want that to go to basement slab. From footing top to basement slab for now. And with that, what I'm going to do is that. Uh, place it yeah fine so one way of laying this particular column is that you see that i've shown you at the time of this particular basic rabbit when i was teaching you then you see that if you have the center lines columns across your center line then you you see that this the use of the center line or face line or this grid line in rabbit doesn't limit only up to the demarcation of center line or face line but you can use that for modeling purpose also and how is that so structure and this columns and all grids and you see that if i select that all the columns are laid but that is when the orientation of that particular columns are in such a way that the center line passes from that okay but that is not the case however in case may in in our case we have the orientation different and we don't have the center line but we'll have the face line anyways so coming to the points modify and align and just align this to this and this to this and if you just zoom in then there will be a little bit of glitch but that is fine 3d elements and autocad lines never match fine so what you need to do is co and wherever you have the columns of this orientation just place them okay just don't forget to snap to the end points so here it is again not uh, this is yeah so you you need to be patient and wait until it snaps to that end point okay and here we have that ro and rotate fine and then align one to two and three to four and co and again copy from here to here and this particular column has not been placed properly but we'll just rectify it in a while or oh, this also co and from this point two you have to wait until it snap to the end point and if it doesn't then don't waste time just place one instance and align it one to two and one four yeah that's perfect why is it not showing here here also there are columns just to see you and 
again it is not snapping so it doesn't matter I'm not going to waste time sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't see okay and this should be just drag it outside and align this to this and this to this okay and we have small columns over here one feet by one feet so duplicate this and call it nine cross nine okay and nine cross nine and apply and okay perfect and just align them this to this and this to this and with this selected CO one to two and one to two and one to two okay fine everything is perfect let's uh, see it in 3D oh yeah fine so see you have your columns but you need to attach this columns uh, to this level so basement slab and the base offset should be one feet i guess yeah okay so just like that here okay yes perfect and now uh, also for this particular tie beams and just uh, deselect this SA and with shift just deselect this and change this to Y justification to uh, not Y justification Z justification to top and perfect so see how efficiently you can work with Revit and how fast okay fine so now the column has been elevated up to this particular basement slab so just turn on that okay but you need to join the geometries so join and join this this is just going to take a couple of time but don't worry don't think that with columns will not go up anymore since we have joined we have to join just to properly shed schedule and quantify the elements in Revit okay so if I just select this SA and all the columns are selected and then if I just change their constraint top constraint to plinth level then they will go up so you don't need to worry about it but what will happen is that with that now you see that the overlapping volumes of that floor you see it is cutting that particular column so this will be the point where the reinforcement of the floor and the beam and the column will overlap okay so we need to cut that overlapping volumes in order to properly quantify it so that's why we joined it so i will just select all of this and right now i'll just take it to basement lab okay so what is the next part next is that just like we provided the tie beams which are joining this particular footings we also need to provide beams at this level okay the connecting beams between columns at the particular this floor level okay so how to do that so if i just go to basement slab then you can see that what is happening down but uh, you need to insert and import cad and lay the floor plan of this particular designated level that is basement and inch and manual center and open yeah fine just lay it and vg and imported categories and turn it to half tone apply and okay fine now if i just take it to the autocad plan then what you notice is that if i just draw some reference lines then what you notice is that tie beams are provided exactly from the center and has a little bit of reflection for for the particular beams that have been laid on this particular floor okay so what needs to be done is that first is that we need to properly align the autocad plan fine and then we can then we will use this particular beams and we will snap it to that level also and properly position it so for that first i need to go to this footing top and have some reference point 
wherein I can lay that. See here also I can see that particular floor plan because of view range. See the view range is right now associated. Uh, see offset is seven foot six inches and the cut plane is four feet. And if you remember then distance between this particular footing top and basement slab is only four feet six inches. And that's why you can see this plan here also. But it is not right now on this floor. See this is not this is right now on footing level and this is the footing top okay so we need to position it properly so i will just take a reference line li and from here i will draw that particular line okay and what i'll do is i'll select that line and edit work plane and with that footing top i will just change that work plane to basement slab okay so that particular line will jump to that designated level and now with this i will just change this underlay range none okay so we cannot see anything and we can properly position our autocad plan exactly in place wherein i am just going to use this as a reference and this point as a reference and yeah okay so this is perfectly laid now so now we need to lay, lay beams onto this so what i will do is that i'll go to 3d and i'll select all these beams i'll say S A select one S A all that beams are selected and you have this very powerful command copy to clipboard and paste align to selected levels and I will just go to basement slab yeah so all of that beams are now transferred to basement slab okay but uh, yeah it is having one feet of an offset so that's why I just select S A all of them and just deselect this tie beams which are laid on that particular level and with that selected I would just change this offset to zero and that justification to bottom why bottom because we want to visualize those beams in this particular basement slab floor plan and we just need to position it properly so I would just say that uh, mm, but in order to snap to I also need to take those columns above s a and just uh, change that to let's say ground road level yeah fine and just go to that basement slab and fine you have your columns also and beams also so now with this what you can do is that modify and align and just align this to this and this to this this to this okay and here in this to this I'm just snapping the beams to that AutoCAD floor plan and properly position it in place this to this and this to this this to this and yes with that I hope it's done fine so now what we need to do is that join this take this column all the way till the center of that column sorry take this beam all to the center of that column and actually we don't need this we can just snap it to this point or we can take it till here and tr and join this to this okay and i guess that we have a column here also that point is not uh, it didn't took that particular columns above so oh yeah fine yeah because those are columns of different category so s a and just change them to ground level ground root level okay fine and just go to basement slab and now we have see those beams are now being getting cut by this particular columns and just join this to this automatically it will snap to the center of the column what you need to do is just delete this and just take this all the way to this point and just like that remove all this deselect the column and delete and just tr and join this to this and this to this and likewise we have the columns beams here too but that too is not needed just join this to this okay and delete this or let's say that take this here and take this all the way till here at this point 
Here too, we have a lot of beams, which is actually not needed. Tia, I'm going this to this. Okay. Perfect grid. Yeah, fine. Only thing that here, there is a deflection because of this uh, floating columns. You see that the beam grid is shifting. And that might be a structural concern. I don't know. I'm just following the drawing that I have received. Okay, and this column will actually go all the way to this point. This beam, sorry, not column. As act as a tie beam for that particular degree level. Okay, and CS and just pick lines and with this select this and this and this just select this and change it to left okay fine and this should actually go to this point yes and this too this too should also go to this point This should come to this point and eighty this okay, that's it. Fine. This all this are the retaining walls which we need to construct the next, but just see it in three D CC and R enter. Okay, with all this selected and just deselect all this. Where's this one beam floating over here? I guess that I need to turn it to top and the option should be minus one feet. Yeah. So just select this SA and deselect this. And with that, just change this certification to top. Okay, perfect. And with that, we have our beams at that designated level also. So H, H. And what you need to do is that join the geometries, which is very essential, which is a bit tiresome process. But uh, we have to do it. So... Don't forget to join or you'll not be able to quantify it properly. Okay. So now we have the beams at that level also. But only thing, yes, one mistake again. This beams SA will be duplicate and having the depth of 18 inches. Again, the exact size will be decided by the structural engineer, but I'm just considering. So because of this, that these are the tie beams. So this are not having so much of depth. Again, this change to that 18 beam. So just select this SA and don't forget to deselect this. Okay. And then turn that to 9 cross 18. Okay. Perfect. These are the tie beams, so that just need to be joined at footing level. One feet is enough. And this uh, 18 inches. Yeah, fine. So what next? Let us go to basement slab. And yeah, only thing is that edit boundary and we need to deduct this lift shaft from that particular slab. Okay. Fine. So now we can design the compound wall. We can lay the compound wall. So basement slab and architecture and wall and retaining wall. With that retaining wall, I'll just pick lines. One, oh, sorry. Location line should be finished face exterior and height should be up till. Let's just take it to ground road level. 
and the base constraint should be base slab. Yeah, fine. One and two, three and four. Fine. So if you just see the AutoCAD plan, what you notice is that this particular face, this particular face has the normal eccentric footings with the normal beam column grids. Eccentric footing because it has the adjacent plot and adjacent property next to it. Okay, but it has the normal beam column grid as per the site. And you see that this much portion from this column till here is going up till the terrace level, wherein this this particular walls are acting as a compound wall. But we have taken into consideration that we want to we have added an extra immunity within we are going 10 feet down, providing the basement level. So this peripheral walls, this particular peripheral C shop walls will act as a retaining wall, fine, which will retain the lateral pressure of the soil, fine. But this much portion, I don't want to mess with the structure which has been already pursued. But here also, from here till here, we won't have the normal brick wall, but will be concrete wall up till ground level, because those will be the retaining wall, which will uh, retain the pressure of the soil, fine. So, see this particular wall so we need to manipulate this particular wall so i'll just go to basement slab and take this wall all the way till this point okay and with that selected i would say cs and pick lines and yes and no actually not cs and from here i will draw one press tab and then connect okay so this c shape c shape retaining wall which will come only up till this uh, ground level will have the strip footing and not the normal footing okay we'll have the strip footing and what is the strip footing so that is structure and you see the structural foundation that are hosted by wall fine so i will just create them and edit type and what is the width of that three foot three foot and two foot okay fine so duplicate and call it strip footing and i would say that the width should be three foot and foundation thickness should be 600 mm fine and apply and okay and with that i'm just going to select this it will pop up an error fine but don't worry those are created see okay they have been created along the entire that so this much portion will have the normal regular beam column grid but also till this ground level this will also act as a, a retaining wall okay which will retain the lateral pressure of the soil fine now regarding this retaining wall what do you understand by retaining wall so retaining wall is a wall which has a tapered wall cross section which retains the lateral pressure of the soil at different places it depends upon the function it serves okay for example, uh, you see that here, this particular on the hilly region, it serves for the different purpose. And here in garden, it is serving a different purpose. And retaining wall might be made up of stones or concrete, depending upon the function it serves. Fine. So you see that this, this particular cross section, it is showing that this is a straight retaining wall. Fine. And of entire concrete. And it differs from places to places and functions to functions that whether it is made up of concrete or stones but basically is that it has this heel slab toe slab and a stem and has this tapered cross section okay so how to create this thing in rabbit because we have created this retaining wall okay but i just want to show you the modeling skills with rabbit so if you want if you are handling a project which will be very in this particular retaining wall will be having a tapered cross section then how will we make it so for that i'll just go to basement slab and if you see that here in our architecture tab you have this component and modeling place and wall and okay and i'll quickly show you that you can create that by sweep so you just sketch path and create that path okay and just delete this so that we'll have the profile here and then just finished and select profile edit profile and go to south elevation and have that profile 
that tape on profile and just like this okay so that will be hosted along the entire path and if you just go to 3d then you have that retaining wall fine with that tapered cross section but while creating a wall with tapered wall section this way you cannot host a strip footing onto that okay so we have to achieve this but with a different way so how is that so i will just press delete and again i'll go to basement slab and i need to just check its cross section varying from nine inch if i just take this down then it is extending 1.3 okay fine so what i'll do is that again i'll go to architecture and component and model in place and walls and i would say that um, retaining wall okay and i'll apply the same command that is the sweep command sketch path and i'll pick this internal lines one two three four no sorry not internal i need to select this external lines pick lines and one two three four and five but what i want is that uh, profile yeah that's fine okay finish and select profile and edit profile and go to south elevation section one was also fine okay so with this you can now draw a profile and just make it like this okay and for category just give it a category uh material sorry not material, category material of retaining wall and fine and just finish and okay so now what you notice in 3d is that that particular wall has been made with that cross section okay but again what if you need to design counterforts over here what are counterforts i just showed you counter port retaining wall yeah so this this is the stem this is the toe slab this is the heel slab and this is the counterfort okay so with this cross section only i will show you on to here only how can you create that thing and with that i'm showing you just the modeling skills and i would say that void extrusion and from here i will just leave this nine inches and this toe slab uh, that uh, counterforce has the thickness of one to one feet six inches so i will just deduct so much portion Uh, 10 foot just a random and with that i will just copy it and copy it from this point to this point in a such a way that this should be one foot yeah that's fine and copy one to two two three and four and here one more yeah fine that's enough and extrusion start extrusion and will define later but with this if i just go to 3d then what you notice is that if i would select this void extrusion then i have an ability that i can pull it up and you see that you have your counterforts okay so this is the way how to use the modeling skills of rabbit and how to create okay so fine now what is the next step next step is that i would just go to basement slab and i need to create these two walls see uh, these two walls here and here and does that have the column yeah fine it has the columns so i would just say that w a and i would again edit type and duplicate this and call this main wall nine inch okay and edit type and i would just give it a material of have been since we have taken all that materials from that file 
the wall paint material will be always there. I guess that it should be there. Wall paint, yeah. So it is a simple material, not stone wall, wall paint, yeah. It is a simple material wherein I have just provided this color and the graphics pattern wherein the cut pattern uh, for foreground, just like AutoCAD random uh, ra because this particular dialog box doesn't doesn't provide a pattern which is so this was something similar so i gave it a this pattern okay cut pattern fine wall okay apply and okay and with that i would say that the base constraint this and ground top constraint groundable and so that makes it height 10 foot just design it from this point press tab to this point from this point tab and to this point yes okay fine that one has been created <coughs> we also need a wall over here right we also need a wall till this hand which will act as a retaining wall over here. But we'll do that later. First is that now we need to take this beams, this particular beams. We, we need to define the beam grid at this ground level. But before that, I would just like to lay the ramp. Okay, ramp. So architecture and ramp. And edit type. Uh, don't, know, don't need to duplicate it. Uh, solid and what should be the maximum incline length and what should be the ramp slope okay so now i would just like to explain you something before this so the maximum incline length over here we are getting is that 11 feet 3 inches and this is how much 50 feet so 50 feet of incline length we are getting 50 plus 11 so that is almost 61 feet or let's assume 60 feet of incline length we are getting okay and we want to cover 10 feet of the distance so ideally the incline length should be 70 feet so that so the 10 feet of height divided by uh, sorry the 70 feet of incline length divided by 10 feet of height so the ratio will be 1 gem 7 but the site condition since because this is not actually as per the site this is the amenity which we have added fine so but the concept is that the incline length that we are getting is 61 feet and we want to travel six feet of uh, 10 feet of distance within that so the ratio will be approximately six yeah fine doesn't matter apply and okay and with that run i will just start from this point and come and stop here so you see that 11 feet 3 inches of incline ramp created 14 8 and 9 still remaining so i will just start from here and I want to reach up to this stage, but it is not. So I will just drag this here and this point to here. So it will read that I need to deduct few something from here. So, okay, with this, let's just try. Delete and yeah, this should join here and this should join here and and this should delete okay and with this if i'm not wrong then just finish okay uh, 3d oh great have been created okay so just delete this ramps because we don't need it and only thing is that edit type and we need to convert this to solid with the same i would think that i have the ramp material just type in ramp yeah so see so much of fine and this is the ramp going from road level up till this basement okay now what next we need to do is that we need to create the beams at this ground level fine just if you see the section 
Then we have the elevated print of 1 feet 6 inches. This is the ground level and this is the elevated plinth of 1 feet 6 inches. So we are at this ground level, we'll have all the inverted beams. Okay. We'll have the beam grid which is inverted. So again, I'll go to basement slab and this line, this particular line which is the reference line. Again, I'll say that set work plane and edit work plane and I'll just take it to where? Ground level. Okay. And just close all others. And I'll go to ground level and fine. We don't see anything. That's fine. But I'll go to insert and import CAD. And I will ground plinth level. Ground and plinth level both are one and the same as per the AutoCAD plan. And manual center and yeah, fine. Okay. Okay, and what I'll do is that modify and align this with this and this point with this. Okay, so that AutoCAD plan has been positioned properly. Fine, and BG, and imported categories, turn everything to half turn, apply and okay. Okay, so what you can see is this, this ramp. Fine. But now you need to lay beams onto this level. Fine. So the beam grid will follow this. Oh, this uh, pink line that you see is the beam grid. Okay. So I will just. Actually, we can make use of the beams that have been provided here. So just CC SA. SA, no, so not floor, I would like to select beam and SA. I have selected all the beams on that level. Fine, and just copy to clipboard and paste align to selected levels. I would like to paste them at ground road level. Okay, but we want the inverted beams over here at this level. So, with all that selected, press SA and just deselect the bottom one cross window and deselect the bottom and just change this to bottom okay that's perfect fine next is we need to add the wall over here fine so let's just do that basement slab and let's select this and see yes and Let's let it be a retaining wall only from ground level to basement slab to ground level. Yeah, fine. And draw it from this point to this point. Okay, but that would have the regular footing as we just discussed. Okay. But now I would like to bring to your notice. Uh, but uh, yes, before that step, I would just like to add lift shaft. So let's go to basement slab. And let's add a lift shaft. Uh, it be a wall, and that too, let it be a retaining wall only, because that too also is going to be the shear wall entirely made up of concrete, starting from the foundation up till the top level. So the base constraint, I will say that footing top, and top constraint, I would say that right now let's go up till just the ground floor. And I'll just pick walls and with that, say that one and two and three. No, but this is the 16 shear wall. So again, we need to deduct, uh, delete this. Sorry, WA and with same material, just duplicate it and call it shear wall lift cabin. Okay, and just change its thickness to six inches and okay and apply and okay. And with that same constraint, uh, the location line finish face exterior and just pick lines and one, two, and three. Okay, and here there will be a regular ball. So let's draw that WA 
and edit type and duplicate this and call it wall 4.5 inch edit and just give it a material of wall paint wall paint and yes okay which has this color and the graphics cut pattern foreground cut pattern of this okay and yeah thickness 4.5 inch okay apply and okay and let's just pick this wall okay so let's see it in 3d okay fine no issues okay now one thing i would like to bring to your notice that right now whatever 3d elements you elevated we elevated and whatever you are seeing right now all of that is an unfinished state okay see this wall is also showing that let me just hide this autocad plan for now h h and yeah hide so you see that this column and wall overlaps so in this case also this retaining wall and then column overlaps in this case if we join geometries if i join this wall and join this to this then what do you notice that from exterior you can see this columns and this wall since they are joined this wall is an architectural element and the column and the beam are the structural elements so since now they are joined you can see this faces okay the column face what if we want to make it look one homogeneous surface so what to be done in that case okay so i will just delete this wall and i will also delete this wall okay and as far as this wall is concerned that's fine because uh, anyway this is the both of them the material will be concrete only Okay, so this wall, it's fine. But for the rest, the columns and the beams, whatever you are right now seeing is in, a, is in unfinished state. Okay, the person standing over here will see the exposed columns and beams and the walls. Okay, and if the walls are laid and if they are joined, then they will see the column faces. Okay, so what we need to do in that case. So for that, I would just like to take review this AutoCAD drawing also for flooring so right now the flooring is also in an unfinished state okay so whenever uh, this is actually whatever right now we have constructed is the same hierarchy in which the construction happens on site but once that construction happens you see that the finished layers are added to those structural elements and also to the architectural elements and what are those finished layers that is in case of wall in case of wall you have this layer of plaster that is 0.75 that is 19 mm plaster on exterior side and 15 mm 12 mm that is 0.5 inch plaster on interior side okay and that is how it looks like one homogeneous material and the structure part is hidden and as far as the flooring is concerned uh, wherever needed you see that on this 150 mm that is 6 inch rcp slab that is 150 mm of finished flooring layer so all together this makes one foot six inch plus six inch of this particular 150 mm this layer differ from level to level and from function to function whether if this particular is provided on the terrace then that brick bed layer that waterproofing that brick bed layer of waterproofing is having more thickness you see this is 165 mm thick flooring okay and on this level it is only 150 mm of thick flooring of brick beds for waterproofing okay and again if you just see the enlarged detail d of this detail d yeah fine then this is 100 mm thick bbc then 20 thick 20 mm thick we have sand bedding then 12 mm we have mortar and then 19 mm is the finishing material and the wall we have the layer of plaster so how to do that a particular thing in rabbit how to do that a particular thing in rabbit fine so let's proceed on with that so first let's start with flooring so let me just select this particular floor and if i just go to edit type and you see uh, no this is the foundation fine 
you need to select the flooring this is the strip footing strip foundation i need to select the flooring h h and h h and yeah see this is the basement slab okay so since this is the ground level so we need to add those layers not on the interior side but on the exterior side so one two three four and this would be substrate two and this would be finish one four finish one four and finish one four actually this also finished one four. fine okay now what is needs to be done is that the first layer will be 100 mm brick beds then 20 mm sand bedding march on then 12 mm plaster and 19 mm finishing material okay now we need to define all this material but since we have i have already defined all that material in that another file and we have taken the advantage of that so that will consume less time and with this you see that i have already defined that layer of brick beds so how did i create that brick beds so it is nothing wherein this appearance is just the color which is not going to seem this particular layer is not going to be seen but the cut pattern cut pattern it is reflecting this autocad hatch and how did i bring that autocad hatch that is if i just see that edit and from here you can browse to the autocad pad file wherever you have saved your AutoCAD pad file on your hard drive. You can just, for example, I have saved it at this location. And you see, this is that AutoCAD pad file. And from there, you can load that AutoCAD hatch. And that is how I have provided this particular, defined this particular brick beds. Okay, so I will just quickly assign it. Then next is PCC, sand bedding or PCC which is having the pattern of send dance and that is a predefined pattern in Revit. So we just need to apply. Appearance is not important. Anyway, it's not going to be seen. Then there is a layer of mortar. So gypsum plaster for the cut pattern. Graphics and you see gypsum plaster. Yeah. Okay. So that is 12 mm and 19. 19 mm there is a finishing material. So now we need to Define the finishing material and I have already made that. Uh, where is it? Parking. Yes, parking and backyard. So this is the, no, not this one. Basement finished flooring, fine. So see. So oh, now how have, how have I made this material? So just as I showed you for create new material and then under this I have browsed to that particular location wherein I have seen I have downloaded this uh, JPG seamless texture files okay JPEG files from where I had selected that particular JPEG and onto that I had given the tiling sample size 7 feet by 7 feet uh -oh. 7 feet by 7 feet okay and that is how that material apply and okay and okay and apply and okay so you see that material has been applied to that basement level slab but now what important things need to be inferred is that if i just go to ground level and if i take a section from this point uh take a section and here is that point where that ramp is joining okay so if i just take a section then what you infer is that first let me just change this to fine detail level to fine and this to one fourth of an inch okay so what you notice is that particular this 150 mm that is six inch of artist slab onto that this finished layer of flooring has been provided let me just turn on this fine but this is not the position where it will dock okay this particular thing this finished layer of flooring should come on this side so what we need to do is we just need to give it a height offset of 
but for that I need to change this units to millimeters okay fine okay units millimeters rounding up to two decimal places precision of AutoCAD and with that let me just measure how much is this so that is 151 151 mm fine so what we need to do give it a height offset of 151 enter and that will jump on the its perfect location okay so this is the exact join condition that how will no this is not a join condition this is the layer that will come but now we need to define the join condition at various places so join this beam this floor and this this particular column to this floor then what you see is that we have the slab joined to the beam and this column joined to the finished flooring okay so this is how you work in rabbit and this will exactly quantify all the elements properly with this you'll be able to properly uh -oh. join and join this i joined wrong i guess yes join and just do this and this particular thing to this yeah fine this with this you will be able to quantify it properly okay medium and 100 mm where are the hatch gone in this much portion yeah because of the ramp you cannot see it okay so now you see that this particular ramp this is the slab this, the, the ramp has been slab it has been casted so it will go up till unfinished level yeah that's fine but in this case what you can do is that you can just give it a base offset of 151 and that will properly elevate it to its position okay and now you can perfectly see it and visualize this okay so this was in case of floorings now what left yeah so in case of beams and columns what we need to do is that again let's go to basement slab and not basement slab where is the autocad plan hr did i read the autocad plan hr that is on ground level yeah fine so it doesn't matter fine so this is the column which is showing its unfinished state now we need to wrap the layer of plaster onto this so how do we will do that so under this architecture tab under columns just like structural columns we have this architectural columns okay so the column architecture and you see that rectangular column 24 inch by 24 inch i'll just edit type and duplicate it and call it nine inch uh, sorry not nine inch with half mm of plaster on both the sides it will be 10 inch cross 19 inch okay and uh, sorry guys un and this is the best part of rabbit you can switch between unit anytime working with rabbit uh, let's make it one fourth of an inch okay yeah and with that edit type and duplicate it and call it nine inch cross not nine 10 inch cross 19 inch okay and the depth is two feet this uh, depth will be nine inch sorry 10 inch and the width i'm not sure i am trying to check uh width should be 19 inch okay and apply and okay and with this if i say that i want to height and with basement slab i want to go up till ground floor level and i could not picking yeah it has placed that okay but you see that i need to align it properly so what i will do in this case li i draw a line i cannot see anything why is that wf wf yeah wireframe sorry i need it to turn it to wireframe in order to visualize it okay and move enter uh, that was the hidden style 
it was in hidden style and that's why nothing was seen I just change it to wireframe and this move move and 0.5 an inch okay and here too I will draw a line and move that 0.5 an inch okay now I can properly align this modify and align and snap to this point to this and this point to this okay what did what did this what this did this nothing but now you see that with that layer of plaster wrap you cannot see the unfinished concrete okay the unfinished state you cannot see it anymore fine but what important is that you need to join it so if I take a section if I take a section from here then uh, I need to turn on the graphics fine oh but we need to say take the section from column itself yeah why is it not 3d and just hide this temporary hide hide category ah uh, yeah fine so you see that this both are overlapping cc and sh no, cc is fine and you see that you need to join this particular two things that is architectural elements with the structural elements so what you in that case is join geometry and watch this point i will select the structural columns and then select the architectural column so now you have the perfect join condition okay r enter and this is the way the layer of plaster has been wrapped okay to that particular structural element so now we need to do that for all the columns so just go to basement level and select this with this you'll be exactly able to quantify it okay and wherever that columns are just place that one and again you need to just place it here oh but placing it there uh, this is a little bit time consuming job but if you want to work perfectly with rabbit then you need to and somehow it is not snapping to that point Okay, let's try for the other column. Yes, here it is snap. And where else? All these columns are embedded in wall, so we don't need to provide. And actually, even if you want to, then because we have this vertical column over here, fine. So let me just r o and rotate okay and l i one two and move oh sorry move point five of an inch and point five of an inch here Let, let you select this point and just snap it also i need to move 0.5 of an inch move and 0.5 of an inch in this direction also okay so with that co and snap this is the floating columns so no need to provide here 
where else do we have a rectangular column? Uh, Okay. Let's just uh, let me just show you by snapping here also. Okay, and fine. And this one was not snapping, so let's just select another face of it. One. Uh, yeah okay <clears throat> what remains is here this small columns so again just select this co place it somewhere over here and just duplicate it call it 10 inch cross 10 inch and both this values should be 10 inch apply and okay and with that, uh, L, L, I, both the faces, move and 0.5 an inch in this direction and 0.5 an inch in this direction. So, M enter and just snap this point to this uh, uh, wrong one inch. Yes, oh, sorry, not one point five inch. Okay, and delete, delete, and just copy it from this to this and this to this to this this walls this this particular columns actually i haven't provided those columns only because they are actually part of this retaining wall so we don't need to yes but now let's go to 3d and let this hide this by category and what we need is that HH and we need to join this at every all the junctions so join and this is just going to take a bit of time but structure with architecture and structure with plaster and structure with this Tab and select structure and join this. Tab and this. Tab and this. Tab and this. Tab and this. This been join. Uh oh. It made a wrong connection. So just read here, it should read structural column with this plaster. Here I forgot to add that layer. But where else? Yeah, find this here. Structure with this. And structure with this. Yeah. Okay. Clear everybody? Yeah. Fine. Only thing remember is this is CO from this point, CO, and from this point to this is a vertical uh, horizontal yeah horizontal ones so let's select this CEO and from this end to this end yeah and go to 3D 
and that one column was remaining so join and join this to this we made a wrong connection undo and join and join the structural tab structural with this okay fine now let me just take a section of this and see it in section okay so you need to join it in section also join and this to this and this to this this to this okay but what you infer is that the structural columns should go should go till this particular unfinished state so in this case just join switch order and this to this fine so this is the perfect so you see the, the layer of plaster starts from this unfinished unfinished layer of flooring unfinished flooring layer okay so this to this and we need to do this at each and every junctions this is just a one time of hard work with this you'll be perfectly able to schedule and quantify this everything okay so join and join this to this yeah fine so likewise if i just go to basement slab so likewise you need to check this take this section at various junctions and make join all the connections properly okay but right now i'm not getting into the depth of that hr okay now what next is that just like this columns we added the layer of plaster to this particular columns okay so now if i just create a wall over here then you will see that it will look one homogeneous material so basement slab and wa and main wall nine inch yeah and with this base to one just start from here press tab and finish it here and this tab and finish it at this end and go to 3d but still you don't see you you what do you notice is that you see this little bit of glitch okay and why is that because that particular wall is a still is an unfinished state okay here also we need to provide the layer of plaster down and this should be finished one four and this should be finished two five and the uh, i have already defined that material plaster and yes and graphics doesn't have a graphics it only have the appearance it is equivalent to wall paint and this should be actually ideally this should be 19 mm but right now just i'm taking an ideal situation and 12 mm on both the side okay apply and okay so nine inch and 0.5 inch and 0.5 inch because of the units still it is not perfect so why is that yes because delete and wa and with that main wall instead of finish face exterior you need to select core face exterior and then when you will draft you see do you see do you notice the layer of plaster is getting wrapped okay and from here till this point one element is completely inside another uh, wa and core face exterior and press tab just join from here to here 
and join and just like that we also need to delete this wall and WA and finish with exterior and from here to tab and from here to here yes and join in 3D then what do you see that again we need to Actually, we were not supposed to add the finished layer for this particular column because here there is a wall. This is not, these are not exposed columns. So that's why the error popped up. Sorry. So I need to select this rectangular column and delete. Delete. And this column were anyways going to get grabbed within that wall because this is the nine inch thick wall and this is not the exposed columns. Fine. So that's why here also. Anyways, uh, let's not waste more time on this. And now, what my point was that just like you added the layer of plaster to wall and columns, you also need to expose, you also need to hide these beams because you right now you see that the beams are in unfinished state. So just like this architecture columns, you have this column architectural and for that wall, you added the layer of plaster in its assembly, edit type and edit and here you add it okay but copy and paste but what about this beams because for beams we don't have architectural beams for beams we don't have architectural beams structure and beams are only the structural framing so how will you add the layer of plaster to this so in order to do that what you have to do is that you have to create a beam wall a beam wall that would wrap around this particular structural framing that is structural beams okay so for that purpose i would like to go to basement slab and what are the range level yeah underlay is nothing but still it has this autocad plan but you cannot see the beams here you cannot see the beams so what would you do in order to see the beams because anyway we have the inverted beams on that particular ground floor level so under this view range you see that the top level is basement level so i will just change this to not ground level but plinth level why because those beams are inverted so with that i will just change this to one feet and the cut plane cut plane should be from basement level it should be at 11 foot because the floor height is 10 foot and the beams are above the 10 foot level okay so with that, now you see that you can also see the AutoCAD plan, but again, I will just hide the AutoCAD plan and you can see your beams perfectly now. Okay. So what I'm going to do is that just change this to fine. Yeah. So you see, these are the concrete beams. Fine. And yes. Okay. So we need to create a wall, but you see that this is the wall with plaster added on both the sides but we need to properly constrain it in order to make it act like a beam wall. So what do we do? Basement slab and the base constraint should be uh, the 9 foot 11.5 inch and the top constraint should be plinth level. So that makes it 1 foot 6.5. So I will just draw that and you will understand it. With this core face, oh sorry core faith exterior and this point and yes so see I'm just snapping to the lines and finish so now that wall is drawn but you need to draw that wall for all the beams exposed beams so instead just pick that would be easy so the location line finish faith exterior just pick one and two and just flip the direction that's okay one two and this and wherever that is not created properly uh I let it balls overlap yeah that's fine okay and here and here at few places it is not snapping but that's okay 
we can always reverse the direction just by pressing space okay and space and here to space okay and this to i guess space okay so now all the beams this one is left all the beams the concrete rectangular beams are wrapped with the layer of wall so see if you just see it in 3d then you see this two are left why were they left just extend it till this point and this two if this is the main wall with that same constraint just extend it to this point okay and yeah fine so feet in 3d now then you see that all your beams are also wrapped okay so this is also left yeah here because there is a so it doesn't matter you have this beams and it's a concrete rectangular beam will the beam come on that edge uh -huh. yeah yeah it doesn't matter okay here we don't have a beam actually that's why basement slab and select this main wall cs oh sorry cs oh how did i happen to do this hr oh i don't know some setting view and yeah fine okay so hr hh -H, and hide that and hide this as well and architecture and wa wall and with that same constraint just pick lines and snap to here also and then just extend it from this point to this point yeah fine why is this line what is this line doing here move and move and move it from this point to this uh, I didn't uh, it's not able to properly position this now uh, modify and align align this to this and with that selected move it and move it 0.5 of an inch okay so that would appear perfect yeah fine so you will see that you need to be very careful while working with Revit if you want to properly schedule and quantify all these things so this is perfectly done okay and here there will be a wall anyway so you don't need to add the beam will be flushed within that wall so you know why did it uh, showed an error here that was because of that this wall is anyways going up till this end and we added a layer of plaster so it had overlapping volumes so in that case what you need to do is that from ground floor by the top offset say that minus 0 0.5 inch perfect so now the joint condition then you don't have it you have a clean joint okay perfect and before joining all these things because joining is a big big uh, big thing it will take a lot of time to do all that thing but before that i would just like to go to basement level and create this particular this shear walls yeah that have been created so what is left yeah hr and we need to create this particular section uh, this particular staircase fine and also you see that here one beam is there which we forgot to add so i will just select press tab and structural until it reads what this point until it reads structural framing and say that select that and cs and pick and create a beam okay fine perfect and with that also you need to wrap it so 
with that main wall and CS and again pick lines and wrap it but you need to flip the direction so where did had it been laid and this is fine but where has the concrete beam the concrete beam was supposed to be at not basement slab because basement set to start hoga uh, edit work plane and that should go to ground ground level or not plinth level and okay it will act as an inverted beam and this also should be the base constraint to be the basement slab and yeah everything is fine just see it in 3d okay and this needs to be top okay absolutely perfect no issues fine so now in this basement slab what we need to create is this particular stairs but for that what you do you notice is that from minus 10 foot also you have an a plinth on the which this staircase has been laid on and that plinth is of one foot six inches fine so let me just uh, quickly go to architecture component and model in place and floor and okay and floor one and just create simple extrusion just to save time and one to two and yes that should be essentially zero to six inches finish and the same should go here copy from this point to this point but that should be from zero to one foot and copy the same from here to this point and that should snap to this edge and should be 18 inches so 18 inch of a plinth fine so see but that particular finished flooring is only also finished flooring is, is in itself is six inches so we need to get rid of this step fine and only this two step so why why to do this because the typical floor height is if you say just see this particular floor plan then we have 20, 20 19 risers fine if you just see the autocad plan of this then you have 19 risers going from this particular parking level up till this level which is one foot six inch height so what i understand is that this height becomes 11 foot six inches so we need to add with finished flooring level we have already provided the finished flooring level of six inches so now we have this 11 foot but the staircase typical staircase from the consecutive other levels are this, these are showing that these are 19 risers okay between the floor height of uh, 10 feet so one riser is six inch and that will cover the 10 feet of height between the floor heights between the consecutive floors fine so we need to add this extra plinth so with that extra plinth of one foot now we have the floor height of 10 feet and we can lay our staircase so finish yes fine and ground level and why is we are seeing this so much of view range everything is fine why can we see it? this is the main wall and basement lab and lighting then why why are we able to see that particular thing we shouldn't be able to see the beams at least ground level no we need to go to basement level yeah fine and i don't want to see all this so again i will just change this view range to the level associated level basement level and i will make this seven foot six inches and this to four feet okay and yeah fine with this now you can see your floor plan properly and you have to create this particular staircase which will take you from this basement level up till the ground floor 
not ground floor, plinth level. Fine. So architecture and staircase. And we will have the monolithic steps since we want to create it with the base slab. Okay. And the constraint I'm going to define is that from basement level up till plinth level. Fine. And here in I'm going to give a base offset of 18 inches. So that would make the desired stair height 10 feet and edit type and under this family the run family 3 4 inch of a nosing I would say that the structural depth I want to be 6 inches and nosing length this is fine and nosing profile I would say that stair pan nosing okay and risers I want to see no I don't want to see because that is a Okay, and with this apply and okay. And rest anything landing. I just want it to be six inch thick. Don't forget to duplicate, but I am just like right now. And yes, tread material, tread. I want to see tread and tread it should be one inch and tread profile. Uh tread material, sorry, tread material should be the ramp material okay and apply and okay and apply and okay and i'm going to create it with sketch on also you can create it by run doesn't matter but just take a look over this inst actual run width this is four feet so four feet and should be 20. so that would make it six inches and i will start I would like to run from exterior, run right, okay, and support system, I hope that I have, yeah, support system is off, so it doesn't matter, and also I would like to add this glass panel bottom fill railing, okay, and on tread, I run from here to here, so what it reads, nothing, okay, from here, Five risers created, eight remaining. From here, eight to thirteen. See, it reads one, seven, eight, and thirteen. See, thirteen and thirteen, this comply. And finally, this point. Okay. So, twenty risers have been created. And with that, I would just finish. And okay. Let's go to 3D. And wow. See, I have unchecked. If I just press tab, then you see that I need to uncheck this in order to properly perceive this connection. End with riser. Okay. And yeah. Yeah, because of that plaster layer, you, you cannot see the connection. But anyways, end, end with riser unchecked. And you have this perfectly leaning up to this floor, floor height. So basement slab and let me just take a section and properly visualize it and modify and measure this from this is yeah see perfect okay only thing is that it is going inside half inch of a plaster but that's okay that is not a glitch that's fine we have added the staircase also Okay, and now what next we need to do is that we need to lay the floor plate for the this particular ground level, not ground level because ground level will just have a ramp going from this point to this point and this steps. Okay, so uh, uh, let's do that. From ground level to plinth level and architecture and ram and just edit type and duplicate this ram call this ram 3 and solid and what will be the maximum incline length so in this case the maximum incline length will be 16 foot 10 inches and what distance do you want to cover 18 inches so 16 foot 10 inches if you convert it to inches then 16 cross 12 192 plus 10 that is 202 
divided by uh, what is the height that we want to cover we want to cover the height of 18 inches so divided by 18 so 11.22 is the 11.22 so 11 foot 10 inches is the maximum inclined length and this ratio will be 11.22 okay and just apply and okay and with that run from ground floor to plinth level okay and just uh, i guess that oh sorry not 11 foot 16 foot 10 inches is the maximum incline length and within that you want to cover the height of 18 inches so the scale factor is 11.22 apply and okay and with that four feet still remaining so you can just drag this all the way till here and for this point and you see there's a little bit of glitch uh, that can be solved and you need to touch this and minus 364 that's okay that's an negligible so just snap this boundary lines to the interior of the plaster yes and just finish oh that's great and just let's see it in 3d okay not an issue i don't want the railings and i would say that the material the ramp material is already added to the matter fine so this way we have added a ramp okay the bottom of this ramp will be a slab there will be a slab between these two beams otherwise this will not rest this is just a pcc or the filling work it will not rest <laughs> so a slab will be casted and then this ramp will be laid but that's okay you can understand it okay next is that we need to go to plinth level and lay the floor plate okay but underlay is right now i want to say that none oh but with that we cannot see anything but doesn't matter that's okay we can what we can do is that go to ground level and this line and just work plane and edit work plane and take it to plinth level okay that's fine go to plinth level and then insert import cad actually the same plan will come ground level and the same plan you read see one two ground and plinth level both so what we need to do is that just take this to plinth level okay and if i just see it in plinth level then that plan might have imported that yeah fine that's okay but why is that we can see it in here on ground level also it shouldn't be seen here so for that what we need to do is that view range view range view range yes and yeah because of this cut plane that is four feet because of the cut uh, four feet cut plane if i just change this to one feet then you will not be able to well, see that also view range and associated level offset one feet oh that's gone fine okay and i would like to pursue that on this particular print level yeah that's okay and vg imported categories and turn all of this to half tone yeah okay and now we need to create the beams are already been laid what we need to create is the floor plate for this particular level and architecture and but i guess that i forgot something and if i just take you to this particular 3d then what you notice is that you see that here also we need a beam you see this pink line uh, cc and you see that autocad plan according to autocad plan here also there needs to be one beam because this is the washroom and therein i need to provide a sunk slab 
which will bomb, uh, which will flush at beam bottom. So we need to create a beam over there. So again, let's go to uh, ground level and yeah, let's again turn back the view range to what it was since I need to, where is the view range? And yes, you view range and sorry, uh, UN and let me just turn this to feet and fractional inches. Okay, and okay, and view range and whatever it was, seven feet six inches, and the cut plane should be four feet. With that, we'll be able to visualize this and just hide the AutoCAD plan for now. And yes, you see that. You, uh, let me just turn this to fine. And can we snap to the tab? Yes, structural framing. Okay, fine. But we need the AutoCAD plan so that I can properly. So you see so just go to structure and beam or let's select that beam and see yes that is create similar and with all the constraints same the placement plane should be ground level and yes not an issue and just snap this okay created okay now we need to wrap the layer of plaster so again go to architecture and wall but this time the constraint should be basement slab and up to plinth level so one foot six inches and what you can do is just snap snap with the score face exterior and yes so that have been created okay fine that's perfectly created but i couldn't see the concrete beam where did we create that beam uh, the beam is perfect yeah sorry the wall has been created with wrong so ground level and nine feet yeah not unconnected but plinth level and this should be basement slab okay i guess we made that changes then why did it apply and plinth level so yeah fine perfect no issues okay so after creating this particular beam but now we can create the floor plates and go to plinth level and just say that floor and floor architectural and just uh, select our basement slab and go to edit type and edit okay and let's just the, with this variable that just create the and then we'll reposition it properly but i need to change the finished floor so plinth and plinth flooring public yeah fine that's okay and okay and apply and okay fine and just rectangle and create this rectangle and we need to deduct this much portion since there is a so select this point to this point and also this entire lift shaft will go okay and delete and split lines and split it and tr and join this to this and join this to this okay and you need to get rid of this lines oh sorry one more tr and join this to this and get rid of this lines okay so with this just finish and don't attach and i guess that we have created that okay only thing is that we need to position it properly so if i just break you to this particular section then what you see is that right now the slab is going the finished floor the finished flooring layers should be above this particularly unfinished level because this particular plinth level is the unfinished level okay so what we need to do just uh, modify and measure this and it reads oh so you have to again switch back to or uh, you can align it also but i just want to show you one command so with this you can just measure this 151 and height offset 151 and that will perfectly snap to its location and now what we need to create is this uh, i guess this should be okay let's just take this lift shaft also to that particular de designated level and yeah so yeah perfect no issues fine and now we need to create this sunk slab and this sit out landscape part and also this portion this entire portion 
it should having the entry steps and this steps leading to the upper ground floor okay fine and so let's uh, yeah that's fine so let's go to principal again and here also we'll have a backyard so let's go and that backyard will be at exactly at ground level so what we need to do is just architecture and floor and floor architecture and call it edit type and just duplicate it and call it uh, backyard okay and that would be just again a slab so all this is fine but the finish will be uh, mud mud yes the layer the material has already been defined okay rest everything will be perfect okay fine so no issues apply and okay and just create one from this to this and yes and just finish don't attach okay and now we need to create those wireframe and we need to create this particular sunk slab first so floor and floor architecture and edit type and go to duplicate and call it um, washroom sunk slab okay and just change this finishing material and we will manipulate this floor for uh, later because it's assembly will have different variables for that brick beds but first let's wash and And yes, so see, finish flooring, plinth level toilet. Okay, and let's just create. Okay, apply and okay. And let's create that one from this point to this point. Okay, and fine. And don't attach. Now let's just see the pin section. And what you notice is that you see that this beams need to be flushed at this particular level so just go to this level and edit type and insert one more layer and down and since that portion is going to be visible from the floor below so it's need to be wrapped with a layer of plaster plaster and yes and okay and okay and apply and okay Fine, so now modify and align and just align this. Oops, sorry, align and align this with this. Okay, just like that, we'll also have a layer of plaster for this because that is going to be visible. So let's add that, insert one more and down and finish to five and yes, plaster and yes okay and this is supposed to be 0 0.5 mm and 0 0.5 inch okay and apply and okay yes uh everything is perfect is that particular floor snapping to the level yes okay doesn't matter fine so now what we need to do is that we need to take this particular flooring up till this level in such a way that will have just one tile drop so we need to add the brick bed layer we increase the brick bed layer and how much to increase so i will just randomly these are just guessing games and you need to sit with a calculator but right now i'll just show you the method 436 mm you need to add so where will you add that edit and edit type and this brick bed layer needs to be changed from uh, 395 okay apply and okay and align and align that with this this to this and yes okay perfectly you see how perfect so we just have the one tile drop that is 9 mm yeah that's fine okay actually it should be 12 mm but you can manipulate it i guess that you understood the concept Okay, we need to join all this structural elements with the architectural elements, and that is a big, big, uh, big time work. We'll do later, but also we need to uh, align this and join this to 
the unfinished yeah okay so okay so now let's just go to 3d yeah okay now what we need to create we need to create this sit out and this particular entire part okay which will be having the same layers which will be affected by the external rainfall water and going to be the wet area so we need to provide the same layers okay so what we can just do is that go to print level and architecture and floor and floor architecture and with that washroom sunk slab just edit it oh it's not edit first duplicate it and call it uh plinth level landscape okay and just okay and fine edit and just we have that material already so see it saves a lot of time when you transfer the materials this way from project to project project standards it saves a lot of time and restore everything fine okay and apply and okay and just create the boundary lines and from here to here from this point to somewhere over here this point yeah okay and just finish don't attach i let it flow overlaps where did we place it no you got a plinth level then why did it have overlap I guess I snap to the wrong lines. And no. Then why did it show that error? Anyways, uh, after creating this, we need to flush it in a such a way that that will have a one tile drop with this. So again, we need to go to section and let's just modify and align and align this with this. And you see that we have one tile drop okay so this is how you can manipulate and modify and the floors and the levels and everything okay i'm just showing you the concept the it might the construction part may differ in your neighborhood or wherever you put up but i'm just showing you the concept that how to use this modeling tricks okay and we just need to position this particularly this and and this is should be have a halt offset of let's say that again the one tile drop difference should be there and 132 but this ratio i guess that we need to change and 10 apply okay but that didn't change i guess that uh, we need to enter this 12 apply okay oh that has gone furthermore down so yes 10.5 apply okay and just give it an offset of how much was this the 131 sorry mm, this is a little bit tricky uh 131 over here yeah see so now with this height offset if you just change this 10 and apply okay uh, no changes actually the concept is that you have to divide this particular unit length uh, whatever it is meter feet inches centimeter whatever but the unit distance that you travel in length divided by the height that you want to travel that will give you this particular scale factor perfect and with that you'll be able to properly lay that particular ramp properly okay so we just need to manipulate this a bit so maximum and fine length is 5 and 3 0 let's just change this uh, units to me feet and fraction inches for now and okay and let's just measure this and from here to here it is 16 feet 10 inches and by 16 for 10 inches i want to cover the distance of 1 feet 11 inches almost so you need to sit with the calculator and what you need to do is that 16 feet 10 inches is 16 cross 12 192 plus 10 202 
divided by uh, 1 foot 11 inches this is how much 1 foot 11 inches so almost 24 inch so that will give you the scale factor 8.41 yeah so that is the so let's enter 9 and apply yeah see perfect so this is the way how you manipulate this and if you still want it to go so 8.5 but that will take it yeah, yeah that's fine 8.35 apply and okay fine so this is how you manipulate this particular thing and ram 3 what material it has got ramp material and the ramp material doesn't have a cut pattern so let's just define the cut pattern a concrete okay apply and okay apply and okay fine so this is the way how you deal with things in rabbit so everything is uh, done now only thing that to create this entrance steps so again go to print level and here now i'm just going to create one simple component and model in place and i'm going to say that stairs okay and just say that entry steps and i'm just going to use this extrusion and define it a material existing material of let's say that black stone yes and okay and then i will just draw we need to reach the height of two feet with one two three four five and six risers okay even though it is one foot six inches but you see that we have six inches that is almost 150 mm of finished flooring levels finished flooring layers to it okay so we need to reach up to this level we need to again compute that in order to reach 24 inches divided by um, six inches so the uh, six risers so one step should be four inch high and finish and with that just see you and one two three and four yes and just snap this to this and say that zero to eight inches and this particular thing should snap here no i made it wrong undo and wf yes wireframe and delete this is laid this is supposed to snap to here there's four inches and this to here and that should go to eight plus four that is one foot 12 inches and then this should go to uh, 12 plus 4 that is 16 inches and yes and like this way is just finish it and let's just see it in 3d and oh okay so edit in place and select all of them we forgot one riser so edit work plane and we created a print level but we need to create it at ground level okay that's fine perfect okay but only thing is that one two and this should actually be zero to one foot and this should be 16 inches and this should be 20 and see you have perfect steps leading up to that particular level fine and just finish just beams are exposed because they are inverted beams mm, doesn't matter i don't want to get into that right now because that is not important okay only thing is that we need to create here a piece of wall just go to plinth level and where does that wall starts from ground level yes and yes okay and 3d okay perfect after coming up to this point now is the toughest job the hardest job that we need to do is that we need to join all geometries so right now you see that this particular concrete beam and this architectural wall you can see this that they overlaps okay 
So we need to join all the geometries and cut the overlapping volumes in order to properly quantify and schedule it. Okay. So this is the toughest part. And let's start with that. So just try to follow. So first is that I will hide all this uh, floor and temporary and height category. Okay. And also hide this AutoCAD plan so we can properly visualize the structure. Let me just select this and H H height. Fine. So now what do you see is that this beams overlap with this concrete columns. Con uh, sorry, this beams overlap with this external layer of plaster that we've wrapped. So we need to join that and all all this uh, all the junctions. Okay. So join geometry and very carefully try to select press tab and structural framing and wall. Fine. And just like that, all the junctions, structural framing and wall, structural framing and wall, uh, tab, structural framing and wall. Yeah. So we need to do that all for all that junctions and structural framing and wall. Okay. But this needs to be, this needs to join at this point. And why is that not? So again, let me go to ground level. And I can visualize this HH and yeah, so take this point to here, okay, and 3D and yeah, see, so now it is joined. So we need to do that for all the overlapping volumes. So join and first let's get them the vertical grid. Oh, sorry, I joined, made a wrong connection. Join and structural framing with. Oh, sorry. Need to be very careful while doing this. So, tab and structural column with wall. Yeah, fine. So, this is done. This grid. So, structural framing and wall. And all the vertical grids are done. Yeah, this is left. So, structural framing and wall. And structural framing and wall. Sorry, I made a wrong. So, undo and join and structural framing and wall and again here structural framing with wall yeah fine so all the vertical elements are done vertical grid is done now let's get to the horizontal grid and let's start from here so structural framing watch this point you need to press tab and select structural framing and wall oh my god to be very careful, structural framing and ball. And likewise, here too, structural framing and ball. Join and structural framing and ball. And likewise, this also, structural framing and ball. Yes, highlighted elements. Uh, cancel. Join and structural framing to wall yes and this is done no this is also left structural framing with wall and structural framing with wall and sorry join and tab and this and the last one i guess okay and you see that how perfect it is now. Okay. So now just press HR. And yeah. So see. Okay. Now don't worry about this this end. So whenever we will draw the wall, we will keep the base constraint as this particular ground level. And once the wall is constructed, we will join the floor with the walls also. Now the same thing we need to do in section. Uh, horizontal and vertical sections so let me just go to print level and let's start from here so this is the toughest join junction wherein we have the sunk slab so let me just go to the section and let's start from bottom okay so join and this to this yes perfect and what we need to do is that whether this wall is getting cut no this is not getting cut so not an issue this is that elevated plinth so yes and fine there are no walls 
so this to this okay so this particular edge is complete and let me just hide this staircase and this so we can properly visualize okay and also hide the autocad plan hh -H, and this is hh -H. yeah fine so now is the toughest part wherein we need to join this so join and select this concrete structural framing join and structural framing with the slab this to this yes but no not properly so join and join this with the structural framing and join this to this yeah fine but only thing is that you need to switch order and this to this okay fine and we have a perfect connection see how perfect it is again this is a little bit tough junction wherein you see that this are the flushed beams these are the beams which will get embedded in this particular this particular structure okay so what we need to do is that in order to join them properly we need to first select this and edit type uh, again i need to change this to un and convert this to millimeters okay okay fine and then if i just go to edit type then in order to make it perfectly wrap i need to reduce this brick beds to something like 100 okay then only it will join properly and then then what we need to do is align and align this face with this okay now what we need to do is that join and very carefully select first let me just hide this okay so we have already in plan in 3d we have already joined this particular segment okay we have joined this wall and the structural element so that is fine what we need to do is join and join this to this okay so we have a clean joint clean junction and now hr and we need to join this in order to make it visually appear perfect so this to join and very carefully select that structural framing and this so they are joined see what you just need to do they are joined what we need to do is the switch order and this to this okay and we have a clean joint okay after this you need to join this with this oh how perfect it is okay and just like that join and join the structural framing with the slab and this to this and this particular portion switch order join this to this okay and we have the perfect join condition so this is going to take a lot of time to for you guys to understand that how to join this and you'll have to work a lot and this will not work at first go you'll have to tie it a couple of times with various options see right now this particular junction is again creating a problem so i have to undo and it should appear like this so what we need to do is that join and select this and join this to this okay and now first join and switch order this to this yeah perfect and then join this to this and right right to perfect but again join and switch order so yes no i don't know there is a little bit of glitch over here but that's okay that's fine you can just ignore it and move ahead so just like that we need to join this portion also and yeah once done that now you can again go to edit type and edit and enter here that value of 375 but before that let's just join this part also because here also we have this sunken slab but that is a different slab so not to worry about it this is only one so edit and just enter here 395 okay 
apply and OK and then align and align this face with this. And see, now this particular beams are hidden. OK, this particular beams and the slabs are hidden in that particular sunken slab and still you have this one tile difference. How perfect. OK, and the layer of plaster is getting wrapped. OK, only thing that you don't find here, but, but that is because here there will be a wall. So once we construct the wall, we'll join the geometry, then everything will be perfect. OK, so just like that, join and join this particular concrete beam with this. Once join geometries and. Uh oh. Join and concrete framing with this. Yeah, it is already joined. We just need to switch the order. So this to this, yeah, perfect. And join this with this, yeah, perfect. Okay, so again, we have a sunken slab over here. So first is that HH and let's resolve the junction first. So join and the concrete beam with the floor. And once join, again join and join this to this. Okay, but only thing I need to switch order. So select this beam and this floor. Yeah, fine. So we have a clean joint. Now let's turn on HR and yeah. Okay, so now this we this is the plinth level landscape. Okay, and we need to join it with this particular layer. So what we need to do is that first join and select this concrete beam and then join that with this. Okay. It is joined, but you need to switch order. So switch order. So uh, again, select this very carefully. The beam tab and this. Yeah, fine. Okay. And then again, join and join this layer with this. Oh, and we have a perfect clean joint at this tension. Okay. Likewise, we also need to join this two. And one thing I would like to bring to your notice is that if you see then this particular slab, this is the basement slab, okay, basement level slab onto which we are providing this layer of waterproofing, okay, which is actually not needed, which is actually not needed 100 mm of waterproofing. Okay, so what you need to do is that just get rid of this edit type and okay, let's just delete it. Uh, and delete and OK and we will join it likewise. Fine. And let's have a flush connection, but that won't happen. So level and yeah. OK. So considerably you have to decrease this layer of waterproofing here in such a way that we'll have just one trial drop. OK. So just edit type and just reduce this to now again guessing games. Mm, how much did we 100 mm we lost so 225 okay 100 mm and now this align and align this face with this okay and we have a perfect one tile joint one tile drop between um, still this hh and this is actually not one tile T1, so two inch almost. So not from this from here to here, here to here, this point. So that is 98. This point, sorry, 78, 79. So we just need to increase it a bit more. Let's keep it to 75. Okay, apply and okay. And with that, now what is happening is yes so align and level and this but actually not align and level and this without plaster and we have a perfect that 29 that is fine okay you can manipulate and enter your preferred value, whatever you want. But the point was that here, there's, I forgot that here, that layer of waterproofing will not come. Okay. 
and here too we just need to reduce this particular thing sunken slab and what was how much was that edit type and edit and 275 let's make it 280 and okay and okay so again align and this with this and likewise you can manipulate it your ways but i'm just showing you the ideal situation 280 okay apply and okay and just align flush this and see perfect you still have one tile joint okay so one tile drop sorry so this is how you work in rabbit and this this is this portion will be exposed so here you need to provide the water pumping that's fine but here that was not actually needed only but because this was wet areas so here we need to provide water pumping otherwise we have provided waterproofing in basement slab, okay, so that the moisture from ground won't penetrate into the building, but here it is not needed. Fine, so now let's move on to next segment. And from here to here, we need to check at all junctions whether the joint condition is perfect or not. And let's have a look. And yes. I just click undo then you still need to join this too see yeah fine so this is exactly perfect yeah perfect okay and again go to plinth level or basement whatever just flip this section yeah we already checked this junction i need to check this so here you see a lot of things are needed to be joined and let me just turn on thin lines so properly I can yeah okay so what needs to be done is that you need to join this apply and join and concrete beam with this slab and then join layer of plaster with this okay only thing is that join switch order and select this concrete beam and this yeah and we have a clean joint same way oh this done great okay fine okay and this blue line is i guess of autocad plan yeah that's okay. so no need to worry worry about it hr yes yeah also we need to now reduce this because we earlier took it on the basis of that so this need to be nine apply uh, ten okay and nine point eight no ten point two yes and perfect Okay, let's go to ground level and just take this section a bit here. Let's check. Yes, again, we need to join this. So the same process, join concrete column, press tab, join this to this, join, join this layer of plaster and then join switch order and concrete beam with this. And yeah, see, we have a clean joint and then is the ramp not cutting or what it is cutting i guess yeah it is cutting and again need to go to ground level and take this bit here yes perfect and just take this here oh again this is the exposed part so that will have the layers of brick bed so don't worry about it 
only thing is that join and join this concrete with this and join this with this oh fine and join and switch order and no see again this is a problem redo yes so here we first need to reduce this layer of waterproofing to perfectly make it join so 150 okay apply and okay and just have a clean it's a little bit confusing but uh, you have to just work on it and figure it out so structural framing with this and then join and switch order and select this and this and perfect join this with this yeah perfect and also join this to this fine and with this now if you give the layer of waterproofing what it was 150 so what it was i forgot let's first join this and then we'll work on that so join and join this to this and join and switch order and join this to this and join this to this okay fine at some portion we will have this glitch so don't know it is just a matter of hierarchy of steps that you perform join and after joining this Uh, join switch order and first we need to join this and still it is showing that little bit of glitch okay that's not worry join and concrete beam with this and join this to this and join and switch order mm, sorry join and switch order yes perfect and this is already joined okay so now we need to elevate this particular thing in a such a way once join before join before uh, you see that uh, if the particular layer of waterproofing is as designated and then if you try to join then it will pop up an error message that one element is completely under the another element and with that you'll not be able to join properly so for that purpose you we purposely need to reduce this uh, finished floor layers and bring it in this proximity in such a way that we can join that and then once join uh, you can again switch back to what it was and how much was the layer of waterproofing yes oh it is this only so I guess that we need to check here and how much was this edit type and edit and 150 280 yeah copy apply and yeah fine and just select both of this so that will also be selected private level landscape it is one and the same 280 and okay and apply and okay and just align align it to perfect or uh, align with the unfinished level to the unfinished slab beam bottom slab bottom sorry and with that now if i just go to ground level and take this section here then it is perfect okay no issues and the joint condition is perfect see and you see that this finished layers are coming up and this concrete beam is hidden so this is perfect join condition okay before proceeding further i just need to have a cross check uh, and you see that we earlier provided this on the basis of that particular level so we just need to edit in place and we need to shrink this okay fine so that's not issue you can manipulate it 
but just that I want to and okay my most important bottom part and let me just turn on thin lines and yeah this is fine let's join this to this yeah okay perfect and uh, let me just take a section and drag it a bit over here and this oh sorry uh, actually i made a mistake small mistake doesn't matter uh, is that we removed the waterproofing layer from this particular floor okay but that floor when i cast it i forgot to duplicate it and that made the changes in the basement slab also so it doesn't matter we'll just select this entire slab this particular slab and what i will do is that i'll go to edit type and i will just duplicate this and call it plinth level slab okay and that is fine okay but hearing i would just like to get back to what it was that in we need to add the layer of brick beds which we removed for that upper portion so i'm sorry for that and just uh, call this brick beds yeah fine that's selected okay and 100 okay and just apply and okay and now yeah for now the joint condition is perfect also join this to this yes and join this wall with this and yeah it is joined i don't know why is this line popping up oh this is the floor line so we also need to join the floor with uh, this join and join this to this yeah it has joined but why is it getting inserted all the way till this point unjoin and yes and join again yes perfect join this to this yeah and we have a perfect clean joint but still this is making some problem maybe the yeah let's forget it okay but this is perfect now and also we need to join this and join and here there will be no layer of plaster because it is inside so that's okay and let's remove from basement slab the finished layer and delete okay apply because that is not going to be visible so this is the perfect way it will appear and also we need to join this to this join all the junctions perfectly and yes join this to this yes and this to this this to this this to this yeah perfect fine the only purpose and the only reason of doing so much of hard work is that you'll be properly able to schedule and quantify it otherwise there is no need of and this is just a one-time work once done you will have a lot of benefits of that let me just shift this here and yeah this is perfect and perfectly joined no issues the join connection yeah fine okay so now let's just like this vertical one we need to have a cross check of horizontal segments at various junctions and you see that there are a lot of connections but that's okay we will quickly do that one to two this to this this to this and fine concrete to this and you see that now we are moving pretty much fast once that detail is established okay you're seeing it in section so you are not cutting it so not that's okay join and what is this mm. yeah these are those beams okay and what is this backyard okay a backyard is perfect no matter let's join all the concrete beams one joined switch order yes
and join this to this. Uh oh, sorry. Join switch order I mean, join and join the plaster layer and get rid of the plaster from that. Okay. Join and it's only removing the plaster from one end, another end it is still, but that's okay. And actually we can take this particular backyard to this particular level. Let's check. And uh, Yeah, fine. Let it be like this. What is the issue? No problem. Fine. Road level and now let's shift to this junction and we'll just check again. And join and concrete with concrete and just join and switch order this to this oh, perfect 20 yeah 25 yeah okay join and this to this and join this to this and join and switch order once this concept is understood by understood uh, understood by you then it will not create so much of problem but important is that you need to do this and see it only then you'll be able to grab this and join and switch order this to this yes perfect we don't have issues at any end. Oh, uh, yeah, this is so again. Join this concrete beam, join and tab this to this, and join this to this. But we need to switch order and tab. Oh, no, sorry. Join and switch order. Yes, but we cannot see that concrete portion. So again, we need to manipulate this in a such a way that it is joined. Yeah. So last step was join and switch order and this to this. And yeah, fine. So again, we need to length level landscape and edit type and 280, 200, 150. Okay, apply and okay, and just align this in, in order to join it perfectly. So join and join this concrete with this, and join and switch order this to this, and join this to this. Okay, and with this now again. We need to go to edit type and 280 what it was okay and apply and okay and just flush this yes so perfect okay and here to join this to this this to this and yes no issues oh this are joined then why is it appearing like this okay that's perfect not an issue here it is joined here it is joined here it is joined here it is joined yes all the junctions are perfect as far as this is concerned now let's move to this and toilet portion and niche ka sab kuch join kar liya. Only thing is that we need to join it here. So again the same process. Here it is joined but here we need to lower this 
washroom sunk slab in order to properly join have perfect join condition first align once you will understand the concept then it will be very easy for you guys but till then you know, there will be always some doubts which will keep popping join and switch order and yeah see so edit type edit and again 280 okay apply and okay and just align and align this to this yeah perfect don't worry about this the moment you will draw the wall here this layers we can bring in inside and join it okay so this is perfect now you just turn on thin lines yeah perfect let's move ahead and now the last section through staircase okay and let's just see okay and we need to join this and you will notice that the last riser this is 152 and this will be 152 plus this two inch more that is the finished floor but that's okay last level last riser the first riser is always small and the last riser is big uh, actually it is the other way around but you can just ignore this or you can just manipulate it by just pressing u n and going to length and feet in fractional inches and you can select this and you can enter the top offset of let's say that two inch and if not that uh, sorry let's say that zero fine so it will flush okay so, and it will adjust the riser height likewise it will manipulate it fine so this is the power of rabbit okay but we need to join these junctions so again let me just turn on thin lines and join and join this to this join and switch order this to this and join this plaster join this oh, oh sorry join this to this okay perfect and likewise all the beams are joined now perfect and here too it is perfect ground level and last one okay and we need to join this join and join this to I guess it is already joined. We just need to join this. Yeah, fine. And likewise, join this to this. And having the perfect join condition across entire structure. Fine. You just turn on this. Yes, so see, this is still remaining. Yes, so join and this is the ball. So join and join. Yeah, it's fine. No issues. It's perfect. Only thing is that join and switch order this to this. Why is this layer of plaster going to the so we need to join and switch order just to like this and this? Yes, so here it does, but here it is not somehow due to some reason. So that's fine. Okay. And now let's go to 3D and see. Fine. So now our structure is perfectly and we can perfectly schedule it and perfectly quantify it after scheduling. Okay so this was the hardest part things will be easier now since we have established a lot of details and if you take the section from any end vertical or horizontal things will be perfect this one last section was remaining yeah. sorry 
that wouldn't take much time. Yeah, see, so everything is joined perfectly now. Okay. Here it is still. Oh my God. Again, we need to. For this joint connection, we did it vertically. We did it vertically, but horizontally is still left for this. So again, edit type and edit and oh, uh, UN. And, uh, length and millimeters. OK and OK and edit type and 282, 150. OK, apply, yeah, apply and OK, fine. And just align this to this to this. And fine, first join it. So join and join. Join and switch order and this to this and join and join geometry this to this and perfect okay so this one last thing was left so 280 again okay and apply and okay and yes that you can have the perfect join condition fine no issues So the journey so far was tedious and time consuming wherein you see that we have joined all the structural elements with the architectural elements applying the layer of external layer of plaster in case of beam column and also in case of walls. Okay, so now let's continue with the modeling part and now things will be easy and we are going to use the functions of Revit, the modeling skills, we are going to use the modeling skills and elevate this particular structure. Okay, so the first part is that I would like to select all of this and go to filter and check none and from this I'm going to select the structural columns and architectural columns apply and OK. You cannot visualize but the columns have been selected OK but say say that base level varies and the top level is ground floor I will take all of them to upper ground floor OK. So you see that with the layer of plaster wrapped with the layer of plaster all the columns are elevated to that particular designated level and I see it's a little bit of glitch over here varying if I just select this particular rectangular column and oh sorry I didn't I forgot to apply the material and let's quickly apply the material and do the needful. So plaster layer and OK apply and OK. So all the columns wrapped with the layer of plaster has been elevated up to that particular level. But this four columns now regarding this I would like to take you to the AutoCAD plan again and if you just closely absorb this particular floor plans then what you notice that this four columns this three columns here this particular three columns are part of this retaining wall so that's why I haven't modeled those three columns but this columns are part of the wall and we have modeled that particular this particular columns all these four columns we have modeled that but those are the part of wall fine but on to this particular plinth level what consideration we have we have taken that this particular C, this particular one and two columns are terminated. What does that mean is that they will stop at this particular level and wouldn't go up. And this four columns will start from this level because they are part of the retaining wall. So I haven't provided a footing for that, but that will start from this particular level since it has to support the balcony or this garden that is on the level above. But again, this level will, this column will also stop and terminate at this particular level. Okay. So we have to do that. Fine. So this particular one, two, three, and four columns will stop at ground road level. Fine. Because they are not going to take a load anymore. And that's why we'll terminate that particular four column here. But no, actually, sorry. This column will stay. This one, two, and three, this three columns will stop at ground road level because this column and this four columns will support the slab that will be above it okay so we need to wrap the layer of plaster so I will just say that uh, uh, let's go to plinth level and we cannot see it here but in basement slab but basement slab we don't need to provide the layer of plaster so 
um, what to do what to be done in this case is that I will go to print level only and I will say that column architecture and column and column architectural and with that rectangular column 10 inch cross 19 inch I just uh, I guess that 9 cross 9 inch is not defined yeah 10 cross 10 inch we have that particular column we just need to provide the material of plaster to that external layer okay apply and okay and what I will do is that I will just with that constraints uh, right now I will just place it somewhere over here and I will just say that I wanted to go from ground level up till upper ground floor yeah that's fine and what I will do is that I would modify and align it again we need to position it properly in such a way that li and move it 0.5 of an inch and here to one line and that line also needs to be 0.5 of an inch on this side and see this is the point wherein we need to snap that column so align this with this and this with this and perfect okay and delete and with this now what we need to do is that let's go to 3d yes and we need to join and select that structural column tab structural column and just join okay fine what we now need to do is that uh, again where was that column created on the plane level yeah fine so we need to select this copy and copy it from this place to and place it here and here and here and perfect and let's just go in 3d and see it okay so all of that columns are starting from ground level wherein this particular this particular column is starting from footing and going up to the ground level okay so there are two columns so i need to delete this that one that starts from one that starts from ground level i don't oh sorry okay let's delete this three columns one two and three because anyway they are part of retaining wall so they are going to start from here and no sorry okay yeah fine so we need to select this three columns and just change the constraints sorry and we need to change it to we want to start make them start from ground floor and join elements yeah fine okay and likewise we need to add this column here also so plinth level and i forgot to sorry co and copy from this point to this point okay and let's just see it in section whether that appears properly or not see so this is the retaining wall and that particular column is starting from this 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 designated level that is from ground level yes see if i just select this then you see that base constraint is ground level and it's perfect fine okay now what we need to do what we need to do next is that we need to have the beam grid before we uh, elevate the walls we first we need to have the beam grid and for that i will just take you to again this particular designated level so we have to lay the beam grid in such a manner column and this line yeah so this will be the beam grid on that particular level and this two will be the terminated columns so this would be the beam grid okay Erin, we have this beam here also and i guess that yes okay no issues so we'll have a beam extra beam over here also which is not on the level below so what we need to do first is that we need to select this entire thing and now rather than modeling what important is that how you position smartly things so check none and i will select the structural framing this and walls okay and apply and okay so with that selected what i will do is that i will just copy to clipboard and with copy to clipboard i'll paste align to pay align to selected levels and i would say that i want them to be at upper ground floor 
upper ground floor and yeah yes upper ground floor fine so let that let's see that where did it move mm, it took up the entire chunk sorry so we need to very carefully select and only select this and yes and filter and check none and structural framing and walls apply and ok and copy to clipboard and paste align to selected levels and select paste them at upper ground floor yes but they have been copied at wrong doesn't matter we will position them first select this one column press tab structural columns select that a structural framing and sa and with that all selected just uh, let me just select this one and what does it read yeah sorry okay <laughs> okay again select all of that and filter and check none and first select the structural framing apply and okay and with that selected edit work plane and snap them to upper ground floor and okay yes highlighted uh, elements are joined but do not intersect okay fine doesn't matter okay so the beams have been passed onto that portion only thing is that we need to yeah but we will position it later first is that we need to select all of this and change their constraint from third upper ground floor to uh, plinth level and this to upper ground floor yes so now they are perfectly positioned only thing is that we need to snap it down but before that i would just like to go to the floor plan of that first upper ground floor and yes okay so again uh, before exiting i would just like to take this particular and edit work plane and snap it to upper ground floor and okay fine and we have that line on upper ground floor okay and if uh, if i would have taken this particular beam column to designated level we would not be able to see it so that's why i have purposely uh, elevated it with the offset of one feet six inches fine so now insert and import cad and uh, which is that level yeah upper ground floor upper ground floor upper ground and inch and manual center and open and just paste this yeah fine and just position it properly so this is the end point but we cannot see it properly so just hide it this temporary hide and yeah now we can see it so modify and align and align this to this and this point to this okay and with that vg and imported categories on all of the plan floor plan but there was no point only this upper ground needs but anyways okay chal, fine okay so we have perfectly positioned this particular thing and hr okay now what we need to do is that properly design the beam grid according to this particular autocad floor plan wherein you can see that you don't need a beam here fine so main wall i will just delete it and all this i will delete and i will just h h and tr and snap and join this to this and this i will snap to the center of this this i will snap to the center of this okay and hr okay fine what else yeah we don't we we also don't need this so again i would just say the main wall and main wall first i will just snap it to this point and then the beam the concrete beam just like that this main wall and snap it and then the rcc beam and snap it fine and this yeah this beam we need because we have to rest the floor plate this particular entire so this beams will need i will need also this beams this concrete rectangular beam i need to drag to this position and why were the columns not elevated up till that point yeah it is elevated but we need to position it properly and 
the layer of plaster didn't appear here uh, so it is not there here also so what we need to do is that here an hi okay so just hide this particular floor and we need to add <coughs> a wall here <coughs> just like this and what i will do is that i will just select this main wall and cs and after that i will just pick pick lines and with that core face exterior and height and level plinth level yeah fine i'll just snap it and where did it snap sorry cancel hmm uh, no undo undo again undo yes and just h h and select this particular this uh, let me just hide the autocad plan h h and yes and let me just select this main wall and c s and with pick lines i want to snap that at plinth level yes that is the plinth level and not the base offset should be zero and the top constraint should be unconnected and that should be one foot 6.5 6.5 let's try and pick lines and with fingers crossed location line finish face exterior and yes oh perfect but only thing is that not plinth level but ground level sorry ground okay and press space, space and that will perfectly occupy the space and instead what would have yeah what would have been done is thus hr and yeah fine so no issues and just snap it till this point yes okay and that's perfect but the only thing is that we need to one feet uh, six and a half i guess one feet six yes and then this we need to join and join this tab structural with this yeah fine okay fine so perfect no issues and just like this now we actually we there was no need of creating this because we, anyways we are going to construct a wall here so doesn't matter and all this yeah few are going to stay exposed and few are going to say doesn't matter let's let's just proceed ahead further and this beam why is it hanging in air like this uh, top constraint of this what is this so right now just change this to bottom yes that will appear perfect okay no issues fine so the structural framing has beam and structural framing have also been taken up now with this what we need to do is that select all the structural framing and sa and just deselect this by holding the shift key and cross window okay and change all the certification to top and that will perfectly be placed at the designated level again select this and sa all this be selected cross window and deselect this and then change their constraint the top offset remove the top offset of one foot six inches okay and, that. and zero uh, the top of the wall is lower than the base uh, what is your problem man yeah nine foot six nine foot eleven inches this was on the this consideration was pertaining to this particular level so what i'm going to do is that 10 foot uh, yeah fine so 8 foot 5.5 5. so just evaluate this thing in section and you'll be able to understand that by thing 8 foot 5.5.5 5. 5. 
and the top should be upper ground floor yes zero and yes it will perfectly snap to its location and you see that the BIM column grid so efficiently we have taken up taken to this particular NHR okay and let's just hide this AutoCAD plan and this too and you see that our structure has been created only thing is that on this particular level upper ground floor we see before snapping to that we should have seen it that whether we need this particular beam or not and let's see it in AutoCAD plan now and upper ground floor and this is the beam column grid of that and yeah see so we actually don't need this so this is the grid and we this are the terminated columns so we don't need the beam over here fine so let's go to rabbit again and just sorry guys tr and just trim, join this to this and join this to this okay perfect only thing is that we need to join and join the structural column with the architectural part and likewise this is join i guess only thing is that structure with architecture or this with this oh, oh sorry join and the structure part with this yeah perfect and just like that tr and join this actually this beam has so tr and join this to this first and now we need to lay the layer of plaster so cs and pick lines and upper ground floor and everything constrained are proper just pick lines and snap okay and just press space and join and see the modeling skill how efficiently we can work structural framing with this join and the structure part tab to the walls yes and also the tab structural framing and get rid of this and i guess this is join yeah so not an issue fine with this we have perfectly done oh, only thing is that this tab structure and this but we need to get that from column so join and select that column structural column and yeah fine perfect okay so how easy it was <sighs> fine okay so now with this let's elevate the walls and for that i need to go to plinth level and see the well where where the walls are so let's go to we cannot visualize here let's go to autocad plan and we have this one wall and this four walls okay which we need to elevate so fine and okay and wa wall and main wall and now the constraint will be starting from plinth level and offset zero and up to the upper ground floor so unconnected height of 10 feet yeah perfect no issues and what i'll do is that just pick lines and i'll create the core face exterior snap okay highlighted all the overlap yeah, that doesn't matter click this yes and select the four face yes and this too okay now what we just need to do is that trim trim this to this and trim and join this to this okay perfect one is this also is remaining yeah okay and one wall over here also cs and from this point let's press tab up till up till yeah let's check it in autocad plan yeah so that's yeah oh, overlaps why you know why is the error popping because here also we have wrapped the layer of plaster which would acting as a wall which, which is reading rabbit is reading it as a wall and that's why when you draw the wall it says that the overlapping volumes 
there are overlapping volumes so join and join this yeah but it's already they they already get joined when it finds one discipline so not you don't need to worry about it okay only thing is that you see that here fine so what we need to do is join and select the structural column structural beam framing and join it with this newly created wall so that will deduct the overlapping volumes and join this join this uh, with this yeah and we have perfect okay yes so the overlapping volumes will automatically get detected and we'll be properly able to schedule and quantify it okay and just like that we also need to join this at various places so join but now we are working in 3d and structural framing with the wall fine and structural framing with wall structural framing tab watch this point structural framing with the wall yeah it's perfect and uh, here there is still the problem so there is a column there might be a column so that's why this with this yes and also this with this okay perfect you see that we are not even leaving a single sliver and perfect now select this lift shaft and take it to upper ground floor perfect okay no issues only thing is that I guess that we don't need a wall over here. The deleted. Oh, sorry. Or actually, we might have drawn it for some other other purpose, but that has snapped to the wrong point. Where in here it stops here at this point. Here we need to. Delete. No. So why is that it has joined with this? Maybe, I don't know. Anyways, we will resolve that particular thing in plan, upper ground floor, but uh, we cannot see anything. Plinth level. And where is that junction? Here it is. Uh, but we cannot see anything. So we have to do it in 3D only. So how we will do that? Uh, this is stopping here. But this particular thing, I need to. Okay, let's do one thing. Let's go to the ceiling plan of ceiling plan of upper ground floor. No, sorry, plinth level. And yeah, see, so when things don't work, you have to try a couple of options. Highlighted wall overlaps. Yeah, fine. Okay, doesn't matter. And now if you just see it, then it's perfect. Only thing is that uh, here it has created a problem. Again, this needs to be stopped here. And then I guess we will have a clean joint. Yeah, perfect. Absolutely perfect. No issues. See? And now let's continue. Join and join this tab. Structural framing with the wall. Yes. And... Does that here we again need to join? So join this wall with no, it is join only, but why it is showing different faces? Is there a niche? Why I am not able to select this wall? Yes, so join and join this wall with this yeah and then we have okay that is because we have added a beam wall also and the main wall also so we need to join in order to so join this with this perfect and likewise here also yeah this is perfect and only thing is that this is remaining so join and press tab structural framing with the wall yes and the column structural column with this and also the structural column with this no yes because uh, here also there is we shouldn't have added the layer of 
plastered with these beams because anyway this wall we were going to come up anyways for the next floor we won't do that mistake again but since we have done that for this floor we have to get it perfectly the join condition and join this to this one completely one element so yeah okay cancel and select tab and the main wall and that beam wall mm. join and this to this yes fine so here we could not select this and this okay unjoin this with this okay we're not able to rectify this corner yes okay and only this particular thing is left varying this particular column join and concrete with this problem kya hai yaar? I know this is taking a bit of time but if you want to do this achieve this with perfection then structural column and this then you have to do it okay let's hide this particular thing h h and hide this h h yes hide this yes okay so here is the problem so join and join this to this okay perfect and h r fine here too it is Oh my God. Join and the beam with this particular wall. Yeah, fine. And also this with this. Okay. And also this with this. No, sorry. Join this with this. Okay, perfect. And somehow that portion this part has been deleted uh, this layer of plaster this main wall so we need to add here and just cs and with all that same constraint just pick lines and core face exterior just snap okay and with that we don't need to join it. CS and pick lines and snap. Just go it and make it go inside and join and join the tab structural column with the architectural part. And here it is joined, I guess. Structural framing with this. Yeah, fine. It was not joined. Okay. We need one more beam onto this particular entire edge because here there will be a flower bed and extended balcony garden area. So what we need to do in this case, just uh, again go to the ceiling plan of plinth level and yes, very quickly just uh, rest tab. We cannot see the structural framing because that category might be off uh, structural framing. Yeah, see, apply and OK. And yes, with this S press space and structural framing and CS. Okay, and just connect it from what are the constraints? Why is it not showing me? Just draft it first, then we'll properly align it. Yeah, none of the adding ones created. Where did it create that? It created somewhere. Undo. Uh oh, yeah, see. Redo. And here it created here. So again, just edit work plane and pick a plane or oh, sorry. Edit work plane and snap it to upper ground floor. Okay. Perfect. And let's so it in plane level in. Yeah, it's perfectly, uh, but it is not perfect. And move MV and this point to this point. Yeah. So now we can 
and also join this to this mm, yeah fine okay some errors are always meant to pop up and main wall and now we can snap this in 3d with that selected just uh, cs that is create similar and pick lines and you see that one and two three okay and this has been created on the wrong end okay after this autocad plan is annoying so just hide it okay properly visualize this even this h page okay and just join and join the structural framing with the wall also this columns structural column with that uh, structural concrete yes okay perfect and also need to deduct this small sliver fine perfect and here too um, this particular tab structural column with wall and this to this and this to this and perfect and this to this and perfect okay and just like that tab and join and also get rid of the small slivers in order to properly quantify that join this and of that column i guess that column where is that column so join and why doesn't it select that column huh. structural column with this uh oh let me just save this before i don't lose anything while working so join and okay let me just hide this oh this is part of this actually so see that's why it is this is a bit annoying but yes finally you have to be very careful while snapping to the lines and just select this and join and this to this yes okay and you see that after so much of hard work <laughs> we were properly able to constrain this particular floor plan and the walls and the beam and column join connection and everything see absolutely perfect everywhere no issues only thing is that we need a parapet over to here and here uh, that doesn't actually that is not needed also but yeah, here also we need, we could add the railing. In. So let's add and let's go to the plinth level, not ceiling plan, plinth level and architecture and railing and sketch path. And with that glass panel bottom fill, I'll just sketch a path from, from plinth level and base offset, uh, base offset kitnata, sorry. And just draft it from this end this exterior part till here okay and finish move it from this point to center yes and just like that again cs yes cs and connect from here till here okay and finish and cs from this point to this point and this point to this point i guess this will not allow it needs to be a close shape let's try see <laughs> uh, i was pretty much sure and cs 
lines and from here to here finish and cs and lines from this point to this point and yes okay let's see it in 3d yeah perfect this was actually supposed to be at this point location but doesn't matter let me just check that what is the finished floor level of this so with that we'll decide then how much we need to offset it section 3 and we cannot see it section 4 uh, neither we can see it here yeah we can see it here so how much do we need to elevate it offset modify and measure and from here to here oh ugly fraction so align and align from this point to our other eyes don't align just change un and length to millimeters okay and okay so with that you can measure it now 51 so one and two and where else this two are selected this three this four and five and all of them base offset 51 finish floor level and yeah perfectly only thing is that i need to snap it to this point so again go to plane level floor plan and this should actually be moved from this point to this point and this both of this one and two this shouldn't be a this should actually move from here till here and let's edit path and join this to this finish and edit path join this to this and finish and this I guess CO and copy from this point to this point and just edit path and make it snap till here and finish edit path and why is it not snapping yes uh -uh. perfection working with perfection in Revit is very important otherwise there is no use of the software you can do it by google sketchup also okay and fine so you see that with so much of hard work we will be able to build up to this particular level but the precision and the detail with which the joint conditions and everything with which we worked was, was worth it okay so now um, i can see some glitch wherein i guess that join and join this to okay join and join this particular wall to this uh, yeah maybe the other way around join and select this wall and select this it is not allowing to join and join this to this yes okay and also we'll have a wall over here hh and you see that we need to construct a wall over here but that would be just 4.5 inch and for that we need to go to plinth level and yeah see so hh and w a that is the wall and we already have our 4.5 inch wall but what we need to do is that we need to add the layer of plaster so insert insert and bring that down and change this to finish to five and this to finish one four and just apply the material of plaster okay that is selected and 0.5 of an inch and 0.5 of an inch i don't remember that for what purpose we created this wall but wherever it will be created yeah we created that wall that was particular lift shaft okay so we didn't add forgot to add the layer of plaster and from here i will just drawing no first is that from i want it from ground level and zero up till the upper ground floor and now when you'll draft it you'll be able to see it so see perfect and yes I let it ball overlap yeah that's fine okay so this is a perfect joint condition 
and let's see it in 3D. Okay, and we need to again join the overlapping volumes. So join this to this, and that's perfect. And why is it? This is also the main wall with the plaster layer. Then why it is appearing different? You press undo and H H. Yes, that is also grabbed with the layer of plaster. Yeah, plaster. Let's see. H R and just hide this. Hide this AutoCAD plan and let's join that in section. Okay. So, but before here we can just try joining the concrete beam with that wall. Yeah, fine. But here we can join that overlapping volumes in section. And let's go to the section three, section four, I guess. Yeah, fine. H H and hide this as well. Okay, we can have a proper look. Okay, and here too, I guess here we have joined on the upper segment. Here we need to join. So actually, let if we want, we can make this wall, but let's just join and join the wall with this and switch order. Oops, no, sorry. We can actually just take this wall on here. No, but wall will join, join, wall will come till this point. So join and join this to this. Okay. And fine. Okay. So this is done. And join and switch order this to this. Actually, the other way around. But still, this again needs to be joined. Okay, perfect. Fine. So we have to do a little bit of hard work, but that's worth it. You can properly schedule it and quantify it. So that's perfect. Why is this so align? Yes. Okay, perfect. 3D and yeah, see. But still, this portion doesn't seem to be joined and the overlapping volume. So join and select this wall and this wall. Yeah, fine. Perfect. This and this. Yes, absolutely perfect. Okay. Only thing left for this particular floor is that if you just see the AutoCAD plan, then this, this particular periphery has this flower bed. Okay. So what we need to do is that we need to remove the railings from here and just go to that particular floor plan and say that WA wall and wall 4.5 but we haven't added the layer of plaster to it while we were inserting that using this wall per particular lift shaft. So insert and insert. Okay and this should be technically finish 2.5 and finish 4, finish 1.4 and both of that 2.5 of an inch. 0.5 of an inch and the material should be plaster yes and where is plaster yes okay so just click okay and copy and paste okay okay and okay actually here there will be a six inch for the but that's fine you see there's a six inch but anyways that's okay and four face exterior and see that here still there is a glitch so we need to modify and join this first join this to this and this to this yeah fine. perfect and then wa and with our that four inch 4.5 inch wall with the uh, core face exterior i'm just going to snap to this point press tab and yes Okay, and highlighted wall overlap to uh, upper ground floor, but unconnected, and that should be just three foot. And finish this to this. 
Yes. Okay. So we have that our flower bed. Why is it not joining? Here it does, but here it is not. Delete and the CS from here till here. Yes, fine. Doesn't matter. Let's move it to this end. Okay, that's it. Fine. And now we need to add the floor plate and WA nine inch wall. Wherein the unconnected to this and fine from here to here and here to here and here to here. It's okay. Now what we just need to do is that we need to add the flower bed floor plate just for the representation that there is a flower bed here. So just go to this and architecture and floor and floor architecture and call that you can do it by a couple of ways by extrusion and components and whatever, but I'm just going to use this particular function flower bed to do the needful and edit type and finish all this and delete and this should be grass yes and okay it should be only let's say that uh, 25 two inch yes okay apply and okay and boundary line from this point to this point and from this point to this point yes overlaps that's okay delete and delete this as well and tr join this to this and this to this okay and the height offset should be two feet nine inches apply just watch it in 3d yes fine so it seems like that there is a wall and there is a parapet wall and there is a flower bed okay. but since now we have made the wall here so again you need to join join this to this you know what that is a floor oh yeah sorry so the the constraint here for this three wall one two and three should actually be plinth level and minus uh, or not plinth level let's say that ground level and this should be up till plinth level and the top offset should be four feet six inches or let's say that no ground level and plinth level or let's actually just change this to unconnected and the unconnected height from ground level should be four feet six inches that is 18 inch of a plinth and three foot of parapet fine okay perfect so now you cannot see that okay and just check it in section whether it is joined and if not then just do the needful and yes it is not so need to join and now perfect now even for this too yes and join and join this to this and join this to this okay and perfect but to join and switch order yes okay it's done it's perfect Three. yes now what next we need to do is that we need to go to the we need to create the floor plate for the upper ground floor and for that we are just going to use the footprints of this particular floor wherein i'm just going to say copy and with paste align to selected level and I'm just going to select that upper ground floor and that floor will jump to that designated floor and also we can use this particular thing that is sunken washroom sunken slab copy and paste align to selected level and upper ground floor and okay which has the one tile drop okay we will also use this and edit the footprints okay let's just take it and copy and paste align to selected levels and upper ground floor 
okay highlighted floors overlap that doesn't matter okay so now we just need to edit this boundary and get rid of this entire thing okay delete fine and if i just go to the upper ground floor then this will stop here and this will stop here because here we have a water body okay so just finish this and don't attach and just change this particular floor edit type and duplicate it and call it grass okay and just edit it and i'm not going to change all this i'm just going to say that the finish one pour instead of entrance quota i just want to define the material of the graph and rest all the materials will stay same okay and grass yes one okay and okay apply and okay next is that again cs and we need to create the water body so just duplicate this and call it water body fine which will not have this all this materials and just uh, delete all this and just have this brick bags okay and okay and yes one more insert and finish one pour and that should be uh water this uh this particular tile water body tiles okay that should be 19 mm okay and okay apply and okay and just create this one and create a this particular point okay and apply fine now what next we need to do is that within this particular floor we have two types of different flooring see here we have this guest room where we have this wooden flooring and again we have a wash deck and a kitchen garden here so let's do that the wash will stay same as this particular thing just copy it and let's say that with that just add edit boundary and just flush it we'll make it part of wall later but right now just finish that and yes don't attach just like that this kitchen garden and ceo copy and just to this or lay it somewhere over here and wherein you can just edit boundary and just finish it and don't attach yes this is how you manipulate floor in rabbit okay and you need to create one deck so what to be done in that case is that here also we have a deck okay so just let's first visualize this so for this from this particular floor edit boundary you need to just change this this point to here and and this to this point okay and just finish and don't attach and herein i will just create c get and boundary and finish and this i would call plinth level uh, plinth level private okay and edit type you can name whatever you name you want to give but i'm just uh, plinth flooring finish private yes the material is already defined okay so okay and okay apply and okay and just finish likewise we are going to select we are going to create cs and let's change this particular name edit print level slap to rename print level public and okay and with this i'm going to say that cs and create two floor plates one over here and one on to here and that i'm going to sell that duplicate and call it wooden deck 
okay and all the material will be same except for this wood let's see that what material do we have first floor private stair material wooden deck yeah so wooden deck is already defined so we can just place that apply and okay. and with this we have defined different floorings just need to check in 3d and h h and h h yes so see why is this yeah okay the newly defined flooring has been given the offset by mistake so just change it to zero yes fine just hide this autocad plan okay fine so we need to join again a lot of geometries but that's fine that is not a big deal here it is 51 so all of this one and okay this undo and one two and three with that selected change it to 51 that is the finished flooring okay and still we will have a one tile drop between this okay and this should actually be flushed fine so here we will have a parapet wall and we have a water body okay fine so but before that we need to model the staircase which will be coming from the ground level to upper ground floor and then we will proceed on ahead with the modeling part of this particular floor so first let's go to plant level so let me turn on the cc fine and you see that we have a lot of elements defined already defined over here so i just need to see the autocad plan hi in order to create that custom staircase and you see that its flight is something different than the regular staircase okay so we can create it by sketch also but i'm just going to use the ideal method wherein i'm just going to click stairs and we have already defined that particular typical staircase monolithic steps and edit type let's see that what the thread material is ramp sorry i need to change it to stair stair and okay and apply and okay and apply and okay fine so now if i just edit this type you can duplicate this since we have defined that material so now you can duplicate it and call it steps to upper ground and control c and duplicate this as well and control v and call it steps to upper ground flight okay which has all the same properties and same modifications okay and what we just need to do is that i want to go from plinth level with the base offset of we will enter that value later while we see that in section the finished floor level but uh, from a upper ground floor a plinth level to upper ground floor i want to go in 20 risers so see the actual riser height has changed to six inches okay now let's start creating that run and actual run with four feet yeah fine and i want to run right that's fine and let's start from here one two and five risers created and from here to here and this to this 11 15 and 17 and i will just finish oh, oh sorry the last run i was supposed to start from here and 20 yeah fine okay but the 20th riser i guess that uh, we will edit fine we'll edit it later and railing i would just like to say that i don't want any railing for now i just want to see the state part okay and from this the last step if i just say that i want this to be convert to sketch base okay and i will edit this sketch then what you can do is that you can drag all the way to this point and this is the ri riser actually so riser needs to be created here the last riser and the boundary line i need to select this join this with this and boundary line 
this and this. So you see that the last step will be custom. Okay. And the stair path, I need to join from here. Okay. With that, if I say that finish. Oh, see, the 20th rider had been created here instead of this point. Perfect. Okay. No issues. And just finish. So let's see it in 3D. And we have that custom staircase perfectly created with no issues. Okay. With this last step, you just, just need to manipulate while in section because we need to elevate this staircase. And I will just show you that how. Okay. So let me just go to ground level. Any of the floor plan. And just take this section over here. Just see this. And you see that we need to elevate this to the finished floor level from the level line. And this and HI, HI. So this is perfectly on that level, but I need to elevate it. And what I will do is that modify and how much is this? Seven uh, ugly fraction. So UN and convert this to millimeters. Okay, okay, and just measure this how much 31. So just give it a base offset of 31 in. Okay, and yeah, 31 is not exact from this point 26.2. Okay, so 26.2. Okay, yes, so fine, and here in. This is the, so we need to take a section from here, ground level, and this section should be here. And let's just open it and see that WF, uh, I cannot see the last step, might be because we have taken it a bit far away. Okay, and see that, yes, okay. So this is that particular step, you see that it reads steps to upper ground it's getting inserted in the wall that is because of its properties I'll just go here and say that the stair nosing should be zero okay and with that okay and apply so yeah see you have a flush connection only thing that what we need to check is that riser height so from this end to this end it is something eight eight inch so that is big so what we just need to do is that give it a one offset of one inch and okay but it didn't make any changes again zero and this is again one inch yeah fine so now it has changed and it is actually we can enter at 1.5 inch okay so that will compute it properly and we have our staircase properly perfectly laid going from length level up till this upper ground floor okay now what we need to do is that we need to create the internet uh, intermediate uh, landscape elements and railing we will place later after placing the element so we need to go to length level and what you see is that here we have the flower beds okay so that can be done by multiple ways so i will just use this wall command and with that four and a half inch wall what i'm going to do is that i'm just going to create from here to here and actually it should be a six inch it should be a six inch per the but that's fine right now just to save time and or actually we can create that wall and we can use this retaining wall which is a concrete wall okay uh, the lift shaft lift shaft where do we have the lift shaft wall left shaft no which wall have we used for that left particular essentially let me just go to 3d and let's select this uh shear wall yeah we can use that particular shear wall press tab and select it to let it go to first floor press one and press tab so that will select uh, the chain of walls and let it go to first floor yeah shear walls okay so let's create that here 
you can do it by extrusion component and modeling place by extrusion also but i just want to show you that how can you make it with constraints so length level and i'm going to say that wall and your wall where are they see a lot yeah lift, lift cabin it's not life cabin <laughs> rename and it's called lift cabin okay and it's six inch thick yeah perfect so now what we just need to do is that length level and this we will uh, manipulate later but right now just first is that i need to create this and just delete this and join it from here to here and here to this point why is it not perfectly joining oh yeah it has joined with the layer of plaster so don't no, not to worry about it okay and see it in 3d yes fine so now we need to snap it in such a way that it will it should be at a three foot height from this particular landing step okay so we need to go to south elevation and see that wall select that chain of walls and just change that unconnected height but of first we need to measure this okay so modify and measure this from cc r enter and measure it from this point this finished level up till this point five foot five inch plus three foot so it should be approximately five plus five five foot five inches plus three foot so that is eight foot six inches so chain of wall and just change this unconnected height to eight foot six inches yeah, that's fine oh that is too too much five foot five plus three inch yeah so let's see it in 3d yes okay that is perfect no issues fine and now we need to go to again to plinth level and architecture and floor and floor architecture and just change this to our flower bed where is that flower bed use that yeah, flower bed and just create it from here to here and height offset is right now just change it keep it to zero just finish don't attach yes and just again see that in section three oh section four i guess yes and just snap it to move just snap it to somewhere approximately which will to portray like a flower bed okay visually it should look like a flower bed fine and just like this now we are going to create that here and here also but we are going to do that thing smartly and what i'm going to do is that go ground floor and not ground floor plinth level and with that one two three and also in 3d let me select that flower bed as well control hold control key and select all of that and go to upper ground floor yes and just copy it from this end to let's say this end and also one over here we'll properly reposition it later but right now just important important is creating it and go to plinth level and see this needs to be uh, this needs to be here also and actually copy and need to flip the direction snap it to this point no this point only but co and create it here also and tr and join this to this and likewise this is perfect only thing that we need to adjust that in height so again go to section four and this should this wall shouldn't be uh, this can actually start at this level and chain of walls and what is this height so plinth level and we need to see that modify and measure this is exactly three foot so again un in order to flush we need to see the exact value of that and un and millimeters and rounding up to two decimal places precision of autocad just measure it now from finished level it is 
1184.75 press and 1184.75 okay yes so that will have a flash connection almost and this is now we need to create the unconnected height again we need to bring it from three foot from here so this is just a mathematics and manipulation you can just and I, now I will just change it randomly to 1500. Zero, zero. Yeah, that's fine. Perfect. Okay, no issues. And just like that, this particular thing needs to be flushed till this point. And let's see that. What is this? 211.058. 211.0 .0 Multiple categories selected. 211.0 Level two one one two one one zero two one one zero. Okay, yeah, fine. So this this is a little bit of glitch that you can actually do by align command also, but I'm not going to waste time on that. And this should be somewhere around. 1500 again yes absolutely perfect okay just change this to uh, move this m enter and move it somewhere over here okay you you don't follow this method this is just i'm showing you uh, what you will do is that you will create this wall with perfect constraints in order to properly quantify it okay Otherwise, you will not be able to quantify that. WF and where is this? Yeah, this router. Now, this is C. And you see that we have this flower that's perfectly created. Okay. Now, only thing left is that we need to create the railing. But that we will create later after creating this walls. Fine. So, now we need to create some walls. Also, here there will be one wall from this end to this end. So again, go to plant level and oh, I was supposed to create the flower bed here also. See, so just select this entire oh, oh sorry, WF and no, select this, deselect this. Uh oh, press tab. And select this and copy this from here to this point. And height we can adjust by going to section 4. And this should be with high. This too should be with high. Okay, and this should go from copy from this point to this point. Okay, so now what we need to do is that we just need to select all of this, press tab, and the should only be this finished flooring level. So just change it to 31. Yeah, and this should be somewhere over here randomly. Okay, so 3D. Okay, that's perfect. Now we need to create a wall from this end to this end for the let's go to plinth level again where is plinth level yeah and i would say that the blue a and that would be a same lift shaft okay to so, no we need the wall perfect wall of nine inch and uh plinth level and 31 and unconnected should three foot oh uh, no 15 inches okay and from this point i will draw till this point sorry not this point this point to here and highlighted wall overlap yeah fine okay yeah the flower bit wall i mean yes that that's why okay edit yeah fine perfect no issues fine 
what we just need to do is that join join this to this first and then join this to this and join elements there is a little bit of glitch yes this is the error i guess that that providing the 31 inch offset is an error zero now we can join yes see perfect oh this wall should actually go up to this end sorry where is plinth length this should go all the way to this point tr and join this to this here ready okay perfect next is i need to construct this particular compound wall this l-shaped compound wall which will be starting from this particular retaining wall and we'll be using retaining walls at the base with columns at various locations just like this particular columns which started from this level and i guess that i have made some mistake and yes so so this is most likely to happen that while working in third dimension with rabbit you notice that you missed something and the problem is that if i just took it take you to this particular autocad plan then this particular slab this extended slab what will it rest on and also this uh, compound wall height i guess that the one that will be resting on that retaining wall will not only be eight foot but from this level it will be almost three foot high so offset and uh oh offset three foot offset three foot and yes and that would be almost like 16 inches okay fine and with that i guess that i need to extend this framing and also provide a couple of columns over here yes at this point one two three four and five and complete this grid beam column grid in order to rest this particular slab otherwise what it will rest on fine so doesn't matter we we'll do that quickly fine so let's first uh, elevate the columns so let me just go to ground road level and take that particular column and just concrete structural columns 9 inch and just take it and place it one over here we will align it later I, I guess that the snapping exactly to the points and if not then we will just cross check it and verify it don't worry move and move from this point to m enter and yes yeah okay here don't worry about the plaster layer because anyway it's going to get wrapped so we just need to lay the concrete columns it is going to wrap in the compound wall so i made this mistake sorry for that okay and while in this particular ground floor plan or uh, let's go to plinth level yeah we have the columns but now we need to extend that structural framing also but we cannot see it for in order to perceive that particular structural columns i need to change the view range and edit and uh oh un un and change this back to feet and fractional inches nearest to one fourth of an inch okay and yes edit view range and the cut plane should go at nine feet and nine feet and with that if i just press tab then now i should be able to find yeah see what's this point here and now i should be able to find that structural framing 
okay and just drag it all the way till this column and complete the grid structural framing and grid likewise here to structural framing and grid and it's not selecting the framing here why is it not okay we don't have a beam over here so fine that's okay so we can just get rid of this we can just have this frame okay and just like this CEO and copy from this point to this point because there also along the entire length we will have that beam and structural framing and CEO and copy from this point to this point okay and structural framing tab tab uh, a lot of 3d elements here so it is yeah and just draw it and this too and connect tr and tr and let's see it in 3d okay fine the grid is complete now okay HR okay undo yes the grid is complete now don't worry about the plaster layer once we'll add the wall the compound wall the remaining beams which will not be added we'll add the plaster layer to that but right now just let it be just like that and also select this column and randomly just place it at distance and this is just a random consideration the exact location will be decided by the structural engineer I'm just making you clear the commands and conceptually I'm trying to make you clear and okay fine so now we can draw the compound wall starting from ground level and ground level yes sorry ground level no? I guess base constraint here is ground level yes okay fine so let's go to ground level and ball and edit type and duplicate and call it compound wall compound wall okay and edit it and just change this plaster material plaster to compound wall and i guess the material will be there yeah see appearance and this is that particular material or compound wall okay and okay apply and okay and start it from this point and the base constraint ground level of base offset zero and unconnected height not top constraint to upper ground floor but top offset of three foot okay so start from this point and go all the way to here and likewise till this point great okay and let's just see it in 3d yes okay so fine no issues only thing is that it should come a little bit okay doesn't matter fine. that's a small glitch that this column is getting visible and that will rectify once we join it okay and that's fine and now if i just see this beams will be part of that particular yeah see so now it is technically correct okay so only thing that we need to add the layer of but that we can just go to where upper ground floor yes 
and draw a ball. Also, we need to draw a couple of balls here. So let's just do the job. Parapet ball. So ball and our main a nine inch wall. Where is the nine inch wall? Main wall. Yes. And the constraint upper ground floor. Yes, fine. Base offset we will provide once we lay it and unconnected height up till three foot. And it will start from this press tab and here. Yes. And also we need to provide that here. Actually all the way around from this end to this end. Press tab. And yes. Okay. And here there is a six inch flower bed ball this so you can just make use of the functions of rabbit wherein what we are going to do is just select this both walls and this flower bed and let's see that how much yeah fine okay 3d and Copy the clipboard, paste, align to selected levels and place it on upper ground floor. Oh, perfect. Only thing is that we need to extend it. And extend it till this point. And extend this floor plate, edit boundary. Extend it all the way till this point. Finish. Digital ball on button my matter. CS. And upper ground floor and connected three foot height and from here to here we'll draw one and finish it this end okay and yes this floor plate i guess that added boundary and that needs to be to here okay and let's just see it in 3d okay perfect now we can just apply some material wherein we can make it just like a water body. But then the point is that what is the meaning of this water body if we cannot see it. So we just need to lower this and make it only 15 inches. Yes. Okay. Fine. Okay. And upper ground floor, and just yes, and join elements doesn't matter, and CS and join from this end to this end, and move this point to this point. Okay, yeah, fine. Why is this small glitch? Okay, it's perfect. No issues. Okay, and now we need to add the material of water, making it look like water. <laughs> Just visual appearance. And floor, floor architecture and Water, water, yes, water body, and that is already added. Just edit type and actually, we can just component model in place floors. Okay, water, extrusion, and start end. And find an extrusion start 14 inches of the ground floor and end to 14.5. 
and material I'm going to say water okay and finish let's go to 3d yes okay perfect fine with this the next part is to join all the geometries and make it technically correct all the flooring the finished flooring layers with the structural elements to architectural elements fine and what i can visually see the glitch is that this compound wall should have its internal layer also be defined with the same material and yes and okay now this particular wall we can just give it and uh, top offset of this uh, base offset sorry base offset of 18 inches and that will wrap uh oh sorry and negative 8 inches negative 18 inches and the unconnected height to 4 feet 6 inches so that will make it perfectly wrap with that yeah fine okay so let's join the geometries let's start from this end okay and the first part is that we need to join the newly added structural columns in plan with the architectural walls okay you see that right now it overlaps so and here also there is some glitch and at various junctions we just need to cross check okay so here in uh, what i'll do is that modify and this is wireframe i'll just turn it to hidden line yeah no but with hidden line will not be able to see the so join and select this structural column watch this point and structural column with the wall uh oh structural column with wall yes okay and turn off turn off hidden lines and here what is the problem this is the big issue i guess hl and yeah that is just the connection showing it in wireframe otherwise it is technically correct to join okay and this needs to be joined so join and column with wall column with wall and now i'll be pretty much fast yes because i guess that you understood the concept and with this let me jo join all the structural elements to architectural elements in plan first and there we go it's done yeah oh yes okay now what next is that is it remaining anywhere somewhere yes see here it does so join and join structure with this also join this with this and the structural part with this much portion is getting overlapped so join and the structural columns with the wall yes okay perfect and you see that how the layer of plaster wraps perfectly with one another the rest everything is fine and this uh, you know this is not a problem when if it does then i don't want to waste time on that now anymore because we'll spend a lot of time join and column rectangle with oh, oh sorry join and tab structural column with the ball yes okay and again this structural column with this ball tab and join with this yeah okay here to the structural columns with walls yes and join yes so ideally somewhere this line we need to figure out that which join and it should appear the clean joint 
tab tab and structural framing this structural column structural column with this yes fine so you need to be very precise okay yes here it is remain join and the structural column with this and this to yeah okay fine rest i don't see any glitch anywhere in plan it is perfectly now let's just turn on the section and that will be a bit headache so no problem you see that we have this i just uh, turn it to wireframe then you see that we have a let's hide this column or uh, let's hide this and you have a wall with that particular beam the newly added beam that we just added here in this portion this portion we added the extended the beam up till this particular compound wall fine so first part is that we need to join the wall with the beams so join and structure with this yes and where else okay hide this as well and join and structural framing with the wall yeah fine okay so now what we need to do is that we need to adjust this properly between we need to join this particular washroom sunk slab that is actually the wash area over here this part this this particular part which we need to join properly so for that let me just hide the wall for now and again we have to follow the same strategy wherein i am just going to edit this type and edit and brick beds layer uh, un and distance not length and millimeters okay okay and just select this and edit type and go to edit and 280 let's just turn it to 100 okay and apply and okay so that will reduce the layer of uh, brick beds for the purpose of joining and unfinished to unfinished okay and now what we need to do is that yes okay so now we need to join this so join structural column or structural beam with this join and yeah it is already joined now switch order this to this and yes the job is done join this with this okay here it seems perfect let's check it on this end yeah this end also we need to wooden deck and edit type and 100 okay apply and okay and align unfinished to unfinished okay and join the structural column of framing with this and join and switch order and this to this yes perfect okay no issues and the last so join this particular beam with this flap it's already joined i guess okay only thing is that we need to switch order no it is not joined so join and is there a beam here h h yeah there is no i did not allow to select join and tab yes tab framing to this due to this particular yeah it was not snapping to or not for the scale and just select this beam and this and yes join switch order this 
to this. Yes, perfect. Okay. Fine. And this also needs to be grass. Edit and 100 open and kitchen garden area. Yes. So align again and unfinish. Turn on thin lines and unfinish to unfinish. And this needs to be joined at this point. Okay. So join and the structural framing to this. Yes, it's joined. Just need to switch order. And yes, okay, it's done. And let's join the layer of plaster also. Yes, perfect. Okay. I hope that here there is no layer of plaster. Here also there is no layer of plaster. And here, yes, there is. Or is that something else we are seeing? Yes, that was something else. Okay, here also there is no. So now with this, we have perfectly joined. And now select all of this. And but let's press HR first. And just confirm. Yeah, that's fine. So now one and edit and edit and 280. Enter. OK. Apply and OK. And just need to align. Unfinish. Sorry. Align and unfinish with the unfinished one. see you need to be very careful unfinish with unfinish yes absolutely perfect and likewise edit let's just check first yeah okay so it is perfect and you need to just join this to this and see how perfect it is wooden deck edit and 280 okay Apply and OK and align. Unfinish to unfinish. Yes, perfect. And you see that the beams are hidden. The beam and the slab are hidden. And only that finished flooring layer gets wrapped. OK. Likewise, edit grass also and 280. OK. And apply and OK and align. The unfinished with this. Oops. Align this to this. Align and align this to this. Yes. And yes. So see, we know we don't have any errors and any issues and any problems. So this will take a bit of time for you guys to understand. And you need a lot. You need a lot of practice for this because you see that. Even after having so much experience, even I am struggling to do this every time. So it is going a lot of time to take a lot of time for you guys to crack this particular thing. But once it's done, then things will be very much pretty much easy. And why is this junction appearing like this? I don't understand. HL and wireframe also it shouldn't appear like this. But, uh, the weird junction. Okay, let's just forget it. Let me just take this section all the way here. Yes, and see, again, you need to join this with this. Yes, and first hide the, this is already joined to this. HR, what we just need to do is join and tab, watch this point bottom here and press tab until you yeah, until it reads structural framing no not structural framing but that floor so join and join that floor with that column yes also join this to this hl and yeah only thing is that join and switch order this to this and yes it's a perfect join condition okay at all these places join and join this to this and join and switch order let this beam dominate join and join 
okay you need a wrong connection i guess control z yeah control undo redo and yes first is that join and we need to join this to this and with this i say the switch order yes and then join okay see so there is a hierarchy of steps one needs to perform while joining this if that is cracked then you would love the modeling part so again this floor with that beam and then join and switch order and let this beam go top and then join and join the plaster layer okay how perfect it is so here too but here this is joined only thing is that we need to join this to this oh my god perfect this to this and this to this uh oh sorry yes so this perfect this section is perfect and the bottom we have everything perfect clear no issues ground level and now let me just change to this point and i hope that you remember that this is the staircase see uh, steps to upper ground okay and which portion is this uh, washroom sunken slab so it is this particular portion so fine so here also it is very important for you to join the geometries if you won't join then the wall won't go up okay so let's go to section three and again we need to follow the same strategy <laughs> edit type and edit and just change this 200 okay and apply and okay then only you will be able to join otherwise it won't join and unfinished to unfinished and then join the geometries and concrete beam to this and just switch order and this to this and perfect and join and join this to this oh my god see how perfect it is and now with this just edit type and edit and again 280 and yes apply and okay and align align it from unfinished to unfinished and yes we have the perfect join condition see so now if the layer of the wall go up what you notice see this was the point i wanted to show you this was the point so this is this was the reason of so much of hard work so let me just press undo if i just select this and you see that the wall go up right the layer of plaster is wrapped okay so this uh, hard work is worth it okay believe me and join and join this to this yes okay and fine here everything is perfect i guess we have already joined and we have worked on this so yes few glitches and errors are there but we can always rectify that see for example here this layer of plaster is getting inside maybe join and switch order and this to sorry join and switch order this to this or maybe why, why is it this layer shouldn't be so join and join this to this ah yeah perfect so see okay anywhere else anything left nowhere and yes here join and just do this and perfect fine let's go to road level and let me take this section to here and let's just have a cross check whether everything is perfect yes here is the beam is the retaining wall and on the top of that is a normal wall and here we need to join and again turn on thin lines and join the structural framing with this and this to this 
and join and switch order and this to this and perfect see i have cracked it <laughs> so it works perfect for me now and again join and join this to this this to this external layer and yeah fine again join this to this hmm here it is perfect this connection is also perfect everything is perfect as far as this section is concerned let me just turn on thin lines okay this is that extra we elevated we can take this here and likewise we can take this here Ten lines and just take it at this point yes okay yeah see how perfect no issues join and switch order and this join and switch order this to this yes perfect <laughs> okay fine and road level and let's go here and this i guess will be perfect uh oh hmm. we just made the changes to this particular same section it is the same section only the yeah fine okay this needs to be joined so joined and this to this and also the concrete beam to this and join and switch order this to this and perfect i have cracked it this to this this to this to this uh oh sorry this to join and this yes perfect yes and just join and switch order let the beam go to the top yeah fine yes no issues thin lines but with thin lines you don't be able to visualize properly see everywhere it is absolutely perfect all the joint conditions yes ground level and yes now the last one and here i guess that yes see a lot of geometries to be joined because here again we have that layer so h h and first this particular thing is joined but h and what we need to do is that just thin lines okay h h then here there is the beam so yes so doesn't matter just select this particular thing and edit type and i don't need to remind you that we need to make this in order to join we need to select this and just edit type and go to edit and 100 okay okay apply and okay fine and enter and just align it but unfinish to unfinish okay and then just join and select this beam and join it hl yes and join and switch order it is join yes and just join this to this okay and you have a perfect join connection and likewise join this to this and join and switch order and this to this and join and join this to this okay and here too this to this and switch order with the concrete beam to the floor and join the sunken slab with the plaster okay and with this changes now again you can switch back to 280 okay fine and apply and okay and just align and the unfinished to unfinished okay you see 
and just just join and join this to this okay and likewise join this to this okay now the last portion this particular part again i need to hh -H and see that yeah there is the wf and there is first this concrete beam which we need to join so join and join this to the wall yes and likewise here too this to the wall okay and after that this is the plinth level public and let me see the view range of this oh that's too much let's just see this much only okay fine drawing appears a little bit clear okay with this just just press hr and just edit type and edit and just make it 100 okay 100 or 150 whatever yeah fine i let it over here. okay and just align align from unfinished to unfinished okay yes and join and join this concrete beam to this slab and join and switch order this to this and join the layer of plaster and everything is perfect and likewise join this to join join this this okay and yeah okay so again here everything is perfect no issues here there will be on beam yeah will be my god anyways now let's not further waste time on this edit and 280 okay and apply and okay again we need to align it with the unfinished to unfinished sorry unfinished to unfinished yes and join and join this to this okay perfect how perfect it is so with that we are done with all the horizontal sections now the same <laughs> work for that vertical one and this we have already joined i guess in plan and yes just check here oh and what is this grass yeah fine so hh -H, and first is that we need to join the structural columns with the wall beam sorry not columns beam with the wall and let's just take this view range only up to that particular segment and you can properly visualize this hr and just edit type and edit and 100 okay fine apply and okay and align unfinished to unfinished and then join and join this tab structural framing with this and it's join but just need to switch order and yes join and yes likewise join yes okay perfect fine no issues here it is already joined i guess yes some glitches which might have left off at the time of modeling we will cover this ways and here there is no nothing else with only a ramp yes okay no problem okay hmm. fine so now ground level and just move this point to here and let's see let the view range be only this much okay and no problem everything is fine yes and this is the staircase <coughs> sorry <laughs> this wall seems to be at wrong m enter and this should flush here yeah that would make it join and join this to this yes certain things not laid properly not snapped to proper lines you can rectify it when you come across that error and that glitch fine ground and now we are going to this segment h yeah 
Here we need to join, but that's not a problem. Okay, wooden deck, yeah. Edit and 120 or 100, whatever it is. By mistake, I happen to enter 120. That's okay. And align and unfinish to unfinish. And yes, with this, the walls are already joined. Walls are joined with the structural framing. What we need to do is that this is also joined, I guess. Join and select that and this. Only thing is that we need to switch order. Uh oh, sorry. Join and switch order and this with this. Okay, it was already joined. Don't know how come, but join and now this layer of this is not getting joined. Let me turn on thin lines. Due to some reason, it is creating a problem. Join and join this to this. If it's already joined, then why does join switch order? Let me press undo. What it was? Yes. And HH. Yeah, here and wooden deck, yes, HH, and why is this? Okay, let's first just uh, join this HH and this to this, this to this, and join and switch order, this to this, yes, at least this is perfect. And join this to this. Sorry, join and tab. Yes, join and switch order. Undo. Sorry, and join and press tab. Yes. Structural framing with this, then join this to this, okay, and join and switch order and this beam plush. Same way, join this to this, and join this to this, and join and switch order and this to this. The same way, join this to this. Join and this to this, and join and switch order and this to this. And likewise, the same way, this also needs to be joined. This is a top section. Okay. What part is this grass? Where is this actually? Here. So yeah, so this is that particular portion. It actually needs to be get flushed at beam bottom. Why is this space? What is this space for? Edit type and yeah, I have reduced it for for join purpose only. Yeah, so align and this to this. Okay, and now uh, join this to this. And join this to this. Okay, perfect. Likewise, join the structural framing with this. And join this to this. And join and switch order this to this. And I guess that switch order and this to Okay, I made a wrong connection, I guess. H, H, and just undo. And H, H, yes, fine. So, join and select that concrete beam. And join it with this. And then join this with the floor, yes. And join and switch order. 
the beam should come here. No, but it's making a wrong connection. Why is this behaving like this? HH and beam is joined to the wall. So what we just need to do is that select that beam and join it here and join and switch order this to this. Join and switch order this to this. Yes. So sometimes uh, that problem occurs. You need to be very careful. Yes, and pop it. And this should actually be flushed. That's fine. Edit type and now enter 280. OK and OK and apply and OK. And with that, just join and make a flush connection. Join. Join and unfinish. Sorry, not join. Align and finish to finish. Okay, pop it, absolutely pop it. And just join this with the wall. And yes, let the wall go up. Yes, okay. That wall doesn't need to. Yes, this is the pop it. Only problem we had here also, but that was also solved or not. That's not yet solved. So, join and switch order this to this. Oh my God. So, this is going to create a problem. This is join and join and switch order this to this. Yes. Okay. Perfect. And join and this to this. Yes. Okay. Join and this to this. Once you are conceptually clear, you don't need to follow this video. You can just complete the steps and then join the loop. Okay. What is this? Backyard. Uh, why this backyard? Yeah, fine. That's okay. That's not important. Okay. Ground level. And this was the pretty hard section. Let's shift to here. And yes, everything remains joined, no issues. Mm -hmm. Yes, fine, okay. And now let's shift on to this part. And here, see, join and join and join, yes. And HL, yes, fine, okay. And join, join this to this, perfect. And here there is no, uh, yes, now again, this is the tough part. HH, and first is that, yes, we need to join the structural framing with the wall, yes, fine. And the HR. And again, edit and just change this to 100. OK. Yes. OK. Apply and OK. And align the unfinished to unfinished. Yes. OK. And just make sure that you join concrete beam with this and join and switch order. And this should go here and join and just join this to the external layer of plaster and pop it okay and just edit type and edit and make it back to 280 and okay and apply and okay and then align and align to finish to finish yes and we are perfectly done Join this to this, yes, and join and switch order this to this, yes. Okay, and with that here, uh, hope that everything is fine and we don't have any issues. Yes, 
perfect join condition and perfect join connection so much of hard work but that is worth it and yes this is the last one and that is going to be real tough because you see that this particular beam this particular concrete framing if i just go take you to the 3d then it is here see this part this particular part which we have already joined here this while while joining this particular two floorings we have already joined that particular thing and why is the depth of this still edit tight and okay minus so we need to elevate this and where should be this at this is that grass and yes the finish too i uh, sorry the unfinished too unfinished yeah so what my point was that again let me just take this here and if you just see this section then you see that this is not appearing properly but why because we have already joined it to the continuous beam and we have already joined at these two places so we need to technically just work here and just do the job so what we need to do so because you don't have anything to join here so how will you do that see h h then this already is a join beam so now again to make this work i go to edit type and edit and 100 okay apply and okay and align this unfinished with this unfinished and now you can join and join earlier the beam was not popping up so where would you have joined it okay and wf and fine and now join and switch order and this to this and now you have the perfect connection as far as this part is concerned so again edit type and make it 280 so this is the last segment so just be patient and unfinished to unfinished yes fine one tile drop and perfect join condition same way here if i just select this h h then here the beams are visible so not to worry but again the washroom sunk slab edit type and 100 and okay and apply and okay and align and i am now become used to this so join and concrete with this and concrete with this only thing is that join and switch order and this to this and this to this okay and join and how fast this to this and this to this and again edit type and edit and make it 280 enter okay apply and okay and everything is fine align and unfinished to unfinished sorry let's do go for finish to finish undo and align and this is the unfinished so this should be here yeah okay yes okay it's done and that has lost this connection the plaster but that's okay we can always join it join and join this to this yes perfect absolutely perfect and now you can take this wall above and not fine and just join and this is easy join and switch order and this to this and join and the plaster layer okay that was pretty much easy this to join this to this yes and join and switch order this to no sorry and join and join this to this and join and switch order this to this then this should not appear something is wrong okay so what is that wrong so again let's edit type and yeah he just doesn't have big bed so why it was behaving like this weird 
So join and join. Join and the last segment is okay. Join and concrete with this and then join this to this. Yes, and join and switch order. You have to try it <laughs> with different ways to make it work. And yeah, everything is perfect. Join this to this. It's already joined. And you see again, this plaster layer is. So join and this should not go inside. Yes, perfect. Okay. See, fine. So the last section has also been rectified perfectly with all the joint conditions perfect and details perfect. So a lot of hard work and a lot of time consuming job. But with this, now we will perfectly be able to quantify it. And modeling, modeling part now will become very easy when we'll take this walls above. Okay. And let's start with the modeling part of this upper ground floor walls. Okay. And let me just close all this unnecessary views. A lot of views open. And what we need is just the upper ground floor for now, right now. HR and yes. Okay. So let's start. So the first step follows is that if you just have a closer look for this particular floor plan, let me just take you to the AutoCAD plan. Then what we will do is that first we will elevate the columns, all the columns from the floor below. And then what you notice is that we have this three floating columns. Okay. But this particular columns will start from the floor above. But what important is that due to point load, the structural consideration says that this beams this beams will be wide, wider than the regular beams. It will be 18 inch cross 18 inch, 18 inch wide and 18 inch of depth. Okay. So we are just going to do that. So let me just go to 3D. And first is that the AutoCAD plan, uh, sorry, the, uh, the columns. So what I'm going to do is again, I'm going to select all of this. And let me select all of this and filter and say that check none and just only the structural columns apply and OK. So they are selected, multiple categories selected and the top level varies. So I will just take the to uh, top level to first floor. So with that, join elements. Yes, all the columns are elevated. Fine. But what you infer is that we don't need all these columns now. So I will just select them one at a go. Let me just select all these columns and make it upper ground floor. Likewise, all these columns, upper ground floor. And all these columns as well to upper ground floor. Okay. Next is that we need the beam grid. Okay, sorry, this columns will stop at, okay, let me just press undo. And this columns will stop at plinth level only, not even plinth level. I guess that ground floor, yes. Okay, this will break the connection. And this columns will stop at upper ground floor. Yes. Okay. Now we need to take the structural framing above for this particular floor. So what I will do is that I will just select this and filter and check none and call structural framing apply and OK and that is selected. Just uh, copy the clipboard and paste align to selected levels and copy them to first floor. Okay. Fine. But what you notice is that we don't need this all. So I will just TR and join this to this. This to this and I will get rid of these beams. And also here we just need to complete the grid. And we don't need this onto this particular floor and this particular beam. And let's go to the ceiling plan. 
of upper ground floor and we'll not be able to see anything yeah we can see that's great just snap it to the center okay and now he this particular two core two beams this two beams this beam will have the same depth but herein we have an extra grid that is what i infer fine so let's just do that in autocad plan upper ground floor and i will just hi isolate this particular autocad plan and you see that there is one beam over here for this particular floating columns okay and so we need to add that grid and we need to add this two beams also and this beam i guess this also will just forget it i will build that particular beams again this entire grid will build again okay so what i'm going to do is that um, structure and beam okay and then justification to top so what does this mean that whenever you will lay the beam will be laid in a such a way that its top the top segment of that will be laid so i want to perceive and see this beam so i will lay it into bottom okay so bottom and nine cross eleven fine and from here to here so we can see that beam one and this entire beam from here to this point okay just change this to left okay and now we have laid these two beams so beam and duplicate it and call it 18 cross 18 okay and herein the breadth height is 18 this also we need to change it to 18 apply and okay and with that now if i lay this particular beam then you see that it has been laid but all both of them i need to change the y justification to left okay perfect fine <clears throat> with this now with this uh, z justification to bottom i will just see it in 3d and all of that are created on that particular floor because yes we wanted to see those beams and i will just change and edit work plane and take it to first floor perfect and then change this justification to top so that implies that the top of the beam will be laid when you draft okay we laid it with the that justification to bottom you know so because we wanted to see that what you are drafting so top yes fine perfect no issues so now let's elevate the walls now let's construct the walls so let me just close this and let me go to upper ground floor and you see that this particular one wall this is the box wall for elevation treatment or to cut sunlight if this is a south facade okay and the width of this is two two feet so how will you construct this particular wall so that is again interesting part so i will just go to wall and wall architecture and i will say that nine inch main wall and edit type and duplicate this and call it box wall okay you can name it anything and before that uh sorry i just need to change this un back to feet and fractional inches with one fourth of an inch precision and okay and then i will edit type and duplicate this and call it box wall okay and edit type and then i'm going to lay the couple of layers insert one two okay so again all of this is going to be one fourth of an inch and this is going to be the cavity layer which will be the thermal air layer fine and that would be 10 inch and this plaster layer will go above and again this would be the sorry this would be uh, substrate 2 and that would be the same wall paint copy and paste okay and here in i'm going to enter 4.5 inch and yes then last is the finished floor layer for which i'm going to say that material south wall uh, you can add anything as a material i will just right now use this okay 
and wall paint 9 inch and yeah that's it so the now the the thickness overall thickness of the ball is two feet and a half inches so we will just reduce this to nine uh 10.5 well, let me just see it in autocad plan that what is the total thickness and this should round up to two feet exactly two feet fine so we need to reduce this in a such a way that two feet wall is created okay fine okay apply and okay and i want it to go from upper ground floor and go all the way till Slap top. Uh, we'll let's move technically and by hierarchy step by step. So I will just start that. But you see that the core face exceeded has been selected. I need to select the core face interior and tab. And I will lay this particular wall to this point. Okay, that's great. And herein, there is a problem, I guess. Uh, I suppose that we need to move it and move it at this point. No. Move and move it to. It's not snapping to any of the points. Okay, let's just delete it and wall WA with that main box wall selected and just pick lines. And with that pick lines, interior, and yes. I guess that here there is a... We actually need to make it 2 feet 1 inches. So, this should actually be 10 inch. Or 10.5 inch, I guess. Yes, 10.5 inch. Then it will create that layer of plaster. Okay. Apply and okay. Still, it is delete and delete and WA. And with that, now if I draw and press yes, perfect. Okay. So you see that. Yes. Okay. Fine. And here there is a problem of join, wall join. And what is that problem? Yes, so this is not going till this point. So, upper ground floor, and let me just drag it all the way. But it did not modify and wall joints. Disallow join. Disallow, and yes, with that, now if I drag, okay, fine. There might be a wall over there so that's why it is popping up the error okay fine no issues okay so this is how that box wall is created fine now let's build the regular walls and first is that lift shaft has already been taken to the designated level so not no, no need to worry nine inch wall so wa and Again, switch back to our regular main wall, 9 inch, and start drafting. You can also pick lines, but yes, just pick lines. And core face interior. Yes, perfect. And press 1 and 2. Okay. And WA. And pick lines. And this. Press tab, TR and join this to this. TR and join this to this. Highlighted wall overlap. Why is it showing that error again and again? Here again. Uh, yeah, but that's okay. That is just a glitch of 0.5 inch of a plaster. Okay, fine. And now here we have a 4.5 inch wall. But let's just take this uh, this particular wall. I guess that I was supposed to take it from the bottom level only. This is the main wall. And this is that wall. 
why you need to add that beam wall yeah because it is a 4.5 inch wall so we actually anyways this supposed to be taken to first floor uh, perfect yeah we added that beam wall because there is a projection over here so that's why that's wall was needed on that side but this i guess again this two first floor okay yes and let's see it fine and w a and just draw and connect this to this fine this is hl just press hl yeah fine okay and this should join here but it's not joining allow join yeah fine then why does not join strange thing happened with rabbit it should actually join okay <laughs> Uh, all the way okay so cs and press and connect connect here yeah so that will be join okay okay perfect and do you need one ball over here as well pick lines yes okay let's see it in 3d fine with this now you see that all the beams over here are exposed this particular beams so which we need to hide and here also i get that yeah see so i forgot one wall over here so cs and pick lines and one and press tab connect it okay fine so now let's join the geometries so just join and pick that structural framing watch this point structural framing and that with wall okay perfect structural framing with the wall structural framing with the wall structural framing with the wall why am i repeating every time <laughs> sorry and this to this and last one don't worry about the openings that we will add in the last it's not a okay we need to join the columns concrete yes perfect join condition here to this oh sorry join and mm -mm. column might be column see this is the column or uh, this is the beam and from there we have to beam and yes okay sorry like same way here too and same way here too and this is the wall so no need to worry here again column and yes okay clean joint and this junctions are really needs to be taken care of see again here and just like that mm -hmm join and join this to this yes and likewise this to this and this to this okay this to this this to this okay cc r enter join and okay perfect and also this beam to this wall yes c 
See, we are working in three, third dimension. Okay, fine. And now we need to wrap the layer of plaster to this particular exposed beams. So how we will do that? We will again go to ceiling plan of upper ground floor. And therein, we will just select this particular thing. That is... Uh, Mm. How we will wrap this? And let me just show the final. Okay. And WA and CS, but this time this would be one, sorry, eight foot, 5.5 inch, and top should be first floor. Okay, so that will be the unconnected height is one feet six and a half. And now whatever you will drop, you'll be able to see this. Yeah, see, perfect. And just drop it till this point. And likewise, tab. Oh, this is the bigger beam. So connect this and connect from here to here. And this two beams will have more width. So it's 18 inches. So if we want to wrap the layer of plaster, then again, we need to make a special wall for that. And that would be, let's say that beam wall. Okay. And its width would essentially be 18 inches of and half inch of plaster on both sides. Apply and okay. And then connect from here to same constraint, I guess. Let me pick lines. Yes and yes. And what is just flip. And this should go all the way to this point. And this should all go all the way to this point. Okay. Now let's just see it in 3D. And you see. Perfect. Okay. Also, yes, we need to hide this. So what we need to do in this case, here also it is left. So again, let's go and just do the needful WA. And with that same constraint, but not that beam wall, but main wall. Main 9 inch, where is it? Yes, but the constraint will remain the same and just connect it from here to here. So yes, overlaps, I know. And from here to here. Okay, and if I now see it in 3D, then, oh, this one is still left. Which is that? This. Press tab and connect. And hopefully, now all the walls are perfectly wrapped with the layer of plaster. What we just need to do is that we need to join them. And which was the last one? Yes, this was the last one. Okay, so join and structural watch this point struct tab structural with this structure with this and on this side this to sorry join and join this with this okay so it will be one surface and the overlapping volumes will get deducted join and structural framing with wall structural framing with wall same here, this, and this, and this is joined. Yeah, fine. So see, now, okay, this is not joined. Yes, now it is. Okay, so we have the clear cut, clean structure. If someone is standing over here, then he wouldn't see the structure part. But what we'll see is the finished layer of plaster. Okay, and what is this? By just popping it out like this. Yes. So maybe this particular wall has not been laid properly. This projection should not. Mm. If I just place, select this wall and say HH. -H, and yes, so see, I guess that this wall has changed its constraint. Yes. 
which is that particular floor uh, and I guess that it is plinth level and there in yes see the wall has moved to the interior move and the design is turned on and let me just okay and let's see it in 3d now yes fine and if you remember then that error popped up that has lost the connection and yes and now if i just hr okay that's perfect now is something remaining yes this bean is still remaining waiting here it has so doesn't matter just let's go to the ceiling plan of length level and with that selected just drag that all the way to this point yes okay 3d okay fine and perfect joint condition but you see that we have a little bit of glitch for this particular portion and what is that let me just go to upper ground floor and this actually this wall should not be drawn like this if i just say select this wall and see yes and draw it on this outside and just edit type and interior should be changed to exterior okay fine yes okay so this is the per, per way this particular wall should be drawn wherein its exterior layer should wrap and this should represent like this but it is not in this case because of the joint condition and let's just move this wall here here and yes see moving it outside and this it's unjoined then you see that here it is perfectly appearing so let me just drag this wall as well and also this wall here okay so first is that we need to take this wall all the way till this point okay so now it is appearing it is still not appearing perfect because it is joined so what we need to do is that uh, disallow join is fine yeah if i say that unjoin yes and then if i just start, take this yes okay so now now it is perfect what we just need to do is that now you can drag this here and this wall up till this end okay and with that if i just go to 3d and now if you see okay so now we can join fine now we can join upper ground floor and just take this till this end okay and again this join it just joined with it or multiple times you have to do this and disallow yes and just drag it still this pasture layer should exactly okay a little bit of glitch fine okay and with that now if i just go to 3d and if i now join it first join structural elements with that wall and also tab and tab and column with that wall okay so now if you just see this in plan then the perfect joint condition okay this is what i was wanted to achieve okay yes so sometimes we have to okay and likewise here too see so again just unjoin this unjoin first unjoin it and then drag it okay but uh, dragging it uh, again joining it you have to do it a couple of times or let's just unjoin it this to this still um, yeah this is this is not joined then why is it okay yeah because of this particular wall so this particular wall also needs to be dragged and drag this as well okay and now snap it to this exterior face okay one more wall 
this two needs to be separated and yes after that just snap it here but it is snapping to this particular wall take this wall a little bit far away and just snap this point here and yes yes perfect and then drag this point here but again as soon as i take this it wraps so see so you need to disallow join yes and that will make it appear perfectly this is bit tiresome process and time consuming but we have to do it in order to have the perfect join condition okay and now it appears perfectly and with this if i join and select that particular structural column and join it with ball yes no, the moment I do that, it loses its connection. Let me just drag this wall outside. And first, let me rectify this particular thing. Join and join column to this. This should not happen. Yes. Okay, fine. Half inch of plaster layer should be allowed to wrap then only it will join perfectly okay now it is perfect see now you can even join it yes see perfect and no issues and now if you see that face and you have a perfect join condition okay only thing is that somehow this wall has displaced its path just need to move it okay and you see that perfect join condition we have okay so time consuming job but with this we have the perfect join condition now what is next that once we laid this particular wall again we need to go to the upper ground floor and check the join condition at various points so let's start with the horizontal ones and let me just see okay and yes join and now we just need to join the walls so it will be easy process see the layer of plaster gets wrapped and go up here okay and uh, this to this okay this is done and just take it here we need to join this at various points oh this is join yes okay and just a cross check okay so see how beautiful this connection is now perfectly technically correct And yes, all this is perfect. Take it to this point. Yes, everywhere it's perfect. Take it here and oh, see here it here we need to join. And yes. What is this wall for? Uh, might be the beam wall which we are seeing it in elevation. Yeah, so no, but it's getting cut. Okay, we'll see that later. First, let's complete this. This also needs to be joined. Yes, and join and switch order. 
yes and join and join this to this this layer should stop here yes fine and h l yeah fine okay hidden lines this is what the which which one is this let me just check okay there are two walls drawn over here i guess yes so that's why that okay now it is perfect join this to this yes there were two walls okay so upper ground floor and yes the last no but here there is no wall so there is no point of connect now the vertical ones join and this to this this to this and this to this here again sorry undo undo join and this to this this to this okay why is this small glitch this is the main wall and this which wall is this 4.5 okay this is uh this is related to the yeah okay we are seeing the particular wall in elevation and this is that yeah fine so just join and switch order no okay and the moment i join it this is getting cut yeah fine join and join this to okay switch order yeah fine forget it okay upper ground floor and just take it from here till here this path was left i guess yes okay just a cross check and then here uh, yeah join and join this to this okay and join and join this to this and yes we are perfectly done with the join condition of that particular floor plan and let me just close all this okay and okay oh, oh sorry fine so what is next now after joining this particular thing now we need to elevate this further so first is that the lift shaft should be taken up to uh, let's take the lift shaft to slap top I guess that I have forgotten to add one level and what you see is that first floor and then directly we have slap top so where is the terrace level so let's just go to south elevation and yes this should ideally not be slap top but this should be terrace level yes and this should actually be 31 six inches okay 10 feet and from there ll and nine feet six inches that is or nine feet whatever fine we'll just consider the ideal and this should be six slap top uh -oh. yes let's just take it drag extent and snap it okay and yes so with that now 
first is that we need to take this floor all the way up all the flooring so I'm not able to select that floor doesn't matter just uh, select no but all that floor will also so we have to manually select it by pressing tab 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 not able to not allowing me to <clears throat> so let's go to section any of the section and yes this is section 3. I guess that section 4 will help. Fine. And which part is this? Plinth level public. And this is the actually just select all of this and filter and check none and close and apply and OK and HI. Okay, fine. With this now, we'll be able to easily select this. And all of this, press hold control, shift control key, and then copy to clipboard. Copy to clipboard and paste align to selected levels and copy them to terrace level. Fine. Okay, and now we will just while going to that particular floor plan hr and where is that line yes so snap that to edit work plane and edit work plane and let it go to first floor okay yes and sorry and this all should be at one two and three and that is aligned to selected levels and that should be on first floor yes so just delete this one two and three okay this will remain the same but here we'll have some difference so how we will make that difference out so going to first floor plan we cannot see anything and oh this is the ceiling plan Let's go to the floor plan and yes. Okay, now insert and import CAD and browse to that location wherever you have segregated those floor plans. I will just take to that location basics and this is the first floor plan with the or an inch and manual center open and yes. And first change this visibility graphics to half tone apply and OK. Yes. And WF. And now we need to snap this. So just HH all this HH and modify align and align this point to this line. Oh, oh sorry. Align this line to this line and this point to this okay and we have perfectly snapped our AutoCAD plan HR and HL okay and with that you see that we need this particular here also drop slab and all all this particular different load plans we need to add it so edit boundary and first we will define this and make this uh, let me snap this to this line okay and this delete tr and just join this to this and join where is this line yeah just join this to this okay and delete this and tr and join this to this okay so in this case on this particular floor this will be the public area of which this much will be the cutout which I haven't placed even on first floor I forgot to that we will do very quickly after this and yes okay 
unfinished lines must be in closed loop or what error did it show then somewhere that one line will be intersect yes this line okay and finish and don't attach okay and this should be just co and copy and rotate so we don't have to do all that labor work again and just snap it to move and just snap it to this point highlighted floor overlaps yes okay i know sorry so just snap it to the exterior of this okay and forget um, edit boundary and don't attach yes and the same here co from this point to this point okay and that's perfect okay what next actually this should snap all the way halfway to this particular wall let's let's join it here oh, no let it be we will see it when the point comes okay what is next yes this particular should be here and this should be here okay and with that i will also define one more both of this flooring are going to be same so edit type and don't attach and instead of drafting this different we could have just edit boundary and with that draft it but does it allow yes it does so edit boundary and boundary line and from this to this this to this and here to from this to this okay and finish don't attach i let it over close overlap yes so here there is a problem edit boundary and here that's because from here it is internal lines so pick lines and just tr and join this to this don't attach okay now deck we need to provide the flooring of deck to this so what we will do is that let's hide this wall H H and select this and copy to clipboard paste align to selected levels and to first floor okay it will overlap but that's fine we just need to edit it <coughs> sorry just like this we also need the garden copy to clipboard and paste align to selected levels and first floor but we just need to edit the footprints okay so doesn't matter let's go to first floor and first edit this snap it to this and this is going to be the normal regular slab with no waterproofing but here the, the garden area and this also is will be exposed so what we need to do is that this should have a drop slab for what profile considering ideal situation uh, just snap it garden and this balcony both no but balcony has okay let's just you can change the finish finish material as per your need but right now i'm just considering both this to be garden okay so lots of floor plates and this bedroom edit boundary and one more over here too on this end to 
this end. And snap it to the exterior. Don't attach. And this ought to will go here and here. Again, it will pop up an error. I write it one through a lap. Yeah, fine. So I did boundary and yes. Don't attach. Okay. Just go to the upper ground floor and select this and edit boundary and just get rid of this particular thing which is cut out and split lines and join this to this and this to this. Select and finish and don't attach. Yes. Okay. Now just see it in 3D. Yes, perfect. So again, the join conditions before elevating the walls. First, we need to check the join conditions everywhere. Or actually, you can just... Uh, where did this wall go? HR. Yes, it is there. Sorry. <laughs> okay only thing is that this particular wall on to this level upper ground floor will stop here so stop and join yes and here there will be one wall so wa and just the 4.5 inch wall and just snap WF and yes, no, it is a nine nine inch wall. So C yes and just snap this to this. Okay, only in section you need to join that wall. Join and join this yes and three D. Okay, that's perfect. Only thing is that now we need to join all these things before elevating the walls because if we draw the walls and then join then it will be confusing for us so let's just quickly go to that particular designated level and yes so join and join this to this join and this yes join and switch order this should go up join and this to this and this wouldn't take much time now since we are already used to it and why is this first floor and where is the section taken from yes so the beam are slightly off axis that we have drawn the beams where is the beam grid 3d and why did this beam appear slightly off the axis fine so let's not just waste time and Let's adjust it according to this particular beam. For the visual appearance, I will just take this particular beam temporary in order to visualize. I will just take this to bottom so we can see it. And going to first floor, I will just edit this particular floor plates, washroom, and this, this to this, and this to this. Okay. Actually, let's just delete this line and let's have a complete drop slab for this particular area. We'll join and get rid of that. Okay, and don't attach. In section three, yeah, fine. So now just change this to 
top okay and just h h fine and now we need to join this so again the same method which okay here also there is a beam and i guess that here there will also one beam which i forgot to draw as per the autocad flow plan c h i h i of course sorry h i and yeah see here also there will be a beam at that level so where is the architecture and structure and beam and 9 cross 12 9 cross 18 sorry and with that the justification to top i will just draw it and connect it but you cannot see it yes but it has been created so you don't need to worry about it and was it created in perfect okay just edit uh, sorry section and redo and just change this to bottom okay so we can visualize that and where is it place it is placed on the wrong point and move it from here to here yes and now just go to section and then just change this to top okay and with that now again the same process and uh, 100 mm oh sorry 100 mm okay apply and okay and just modify and align unfinished to unfinished and then join join this with this this with this and this with this okay and join and switch order this to this perfect this to this absolutely perfect and this to we have not joined it join this to this yes and switch order this to this and see how perfect it is everything is perfect and with this now if i will just make this again edit type and edit and 280 mm okay and okay one completely yeah that's fine one element is completely under under and that was the purpose of unfinished to unfinished and see the beams are hidden they join but still the beams are hidden so join this with this yes and likewise what is this oh this is again very slow so the same process we need to do i did um, won't take much time 100 mm okay apply and okay and align and align this to this and join and join this to this sorry join and join this beam to this and then join this to this okay and likewise join this to this and switch order yes and then join this to this perfect okay and only thing is that this is not let me just take it all the way up no sorry so join I join and switch order mm -mm. forget it and then edit type and 280 mm again okay apply and okay and just have a flush connection once this wall will come over here then we'll join again the flooring with that wall and be perfect but here too right now it is absolutely perfect and you see that we have one tile drop see one tile drop between this particular flooring that is Plinth level private. I just copied it, so we need to rename it. We had copied it all the way from plinth level, so right now, also we need to change it here as well. Plinth level public. 
duplicate and call it post upper ground public and okay just rename and this is plain level public this is upper ground public okay fine and this is the washroom chunks lab this is grass and this is plain level private i will just edit uh, sorry i will just edit type and duplicate and call it first floor private okay and yes now where is that section hr we need to take this section over here let's see the join conditions yes again we need to join here where is the splint level public i will just change it to edit type and duplicate and call it first floor public and edit type and just change this to 100 mm no sorry send bedding so this is fine okay apply and okay and what we just need to do is that join structure with structure structure with structure and then switch order this should go up and this should also go up and this should also okay and join and switch order yeah we have done that you just need to join this yes perfect okay only here is that we need to switch but that's not join that's why you cannot yes join and switch order and this to this yeah perfect okay and now let's shift here this is the toilet area i guess washroom area and um, yeah so again h h and there is a beam so washroom sunk slab edit type and 100 mm okay apply and okay align align unfinish with unfinish join beam with the floor and join beam with the floor and yes it's joined you can see it has cut it has joined just switch order and this to this and then join this with this okay and with that edit and back to what it was 280 mm and okay and yes apply and okay and just align it unfinish with the unfinish align and unfinish to unfinish yes perfect the moment now you when you draw ball over here see this is the same box ball which is going to go up and this is going to go up all the way till this laptop so you see the moment i took it up what do you notice see watch this point and slap top the unfinished level layer has been grabbed okay so this is the power of rabbit and it is perfect fine perfect join conditions only this here we join and join this beam to this and join this to this and join and switch order and this to this okay yes beautiful 3d and not 3d sorry now here and here join and this to this this to this and then just again modify and join and switch order and this to this okay likewise all of this are done i guess we need to switch order here as well switch and yes okay okay perfect join condition and let me just take this all the way up and first floor and 
shift from here till here okay and yes this is completely done okay here there is a problem join this to this and join this to okay yes join first this to this and then join and switch order and this to this okay and yes always is perfect which part is this the wooden deck yeah okay so, uh, and finally the attached toilet wherein uh, we don't have a beam here we don't have beam h h this here there should be one beam oh sorry on this level so um here also there is one beam there here also there needs to be one beam at this particular level so what we need to do uh, we have to wf and yes see so uh, structure and beam and just change this to bottom and draw and draw from which 9 cross 18 yeah that's fine and draw from here to here and just change this justification to left and this to top after drawing it okay and then now if you visualize in section then you have a beam perfect so modify and join and join beam to the wall and then hr and again the same process this edit 100 mm okay yes apply okay 100 foot name 100 mm 100 mm okay apply and okay and align unfinish with unfinish and then join this is already joined you just need to join this to this and then join and switch order this to this and after doing that edit type and edit and again back to 280 mm okay apply and okay apply and okay fine and just align it unfinish to unfinish and that's perfectly fine and one tile drop yes here too i guess we need one beam because which area is this particular this is grass so uh, this is grass so here this bedroom is still here so no here there won't be a beam but here there is a beam actually but it is at this point so again this is exposed and here i guess that we will need one beam so fine let's draw it but then if here then here also we will need one beam let's draw at both the end both the part let's complete the grid structure and beam and with the bottom i would just like to draft from here to here and from here to no, so funny. here to here and both of that right justification to left and this should flush okay flush okay and now if you just see the section then this should change to top okay and then same process again edit type and edit and change this to 280 oh, sorry 100 mm okay and apply and okay and then align and align this to the unfinished level and this should also be joined i guess first and then join and switch order this to this and why is this not showing the wf yes fine okay and 
join this to join this why is not allowing to tab and tab. yeah it better join h o h h and yeah it is perfect okay because of that wall we are not able to see that which wall is that there is this wall in 3d okay because of this particular wall but this particular wall yes edit type edit and back to 280 mm okay and apply and okay and section 3 and align unfinished with unfinished okay only thing is that what we need to do is that we have added extra beams which we need to wrap so join and let me just hide this for now until you can see the beams yes so in both these cases the bottom is here it is here it is wrapped but here it is not because this is the extra tie beam that we just added so i will just select this and see yes and pick lines with that same constraint and yes okay perfect and join and join the structure with the architecture and likewise structure with architecture and this wall this wall actually needs to be flushed at beam bottom so top offset minus 18 inches perfect fine no issues and here this beam why is this why is this beam hanging in air delete yes you do need that okay uh, only thing is that join and join this to this and this columns are exposed okay and this particular wall cs and pick lines and here also that will be one wall yeah fine just join and join the structure to the wall and yes okay and since here there is no beam so that's why yes so see so tr and join this to this not yeah it is joined but it have cut it or what it is still different and why is it not showing hr H H H H. We'll see to it when we see the vertical sections. Okay, fine. So right now this is fine, and also we need a structural column here. H I H R H R, and down yes. So. Rectangular column, just take this to first floor. Yes. Only thing is that we need one here, but beam, why is that beam not seen? Anyways, first floor, and with this, all the horizontal are done. Now we need to check the verticals. So, vertical section, upper ground floor, and yes, here it is. So, let's start from this particular one 
section 4 will be deleted and first floor uh, let's say yes first floor and just draw in section each page and draw from here hr yes fine okay so in rabbit a lot of things you discover while working in third dimension see and what you notice is that here if this is the balcony or whatever then on this end we need a beam if it is going to have a sunk slab okay but also you see that this wall this particular wall which is on the upper ground floor it is this puja wall okay so what about this connection what about this junction either we have to shift this wall here provide a beam over here I don't know if it is a structural concern, so I'm not getting into the depth of that. And let's now just continue with this particular part. Here, this small glitch I needs to be rectified. So, 100 mm. OK. And apply and OK. Ideally, if I just take it to this particular first floor plan, then what you see is that here there will be a beam. And we just see that upper ground floor, then also this 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 beam needs to connect to this grid, this particular grid, this pink line that you see here there will be on beam, I guess. Yes. So let's just provide that irrespective. But then what will happen to this wall? So I just take to this particular beam, or let's say that let's draft it out. So first floor and beam, and with this bottom, I just draft from here till this end. Okay. And let's just see that how it been placed. So see, this is what is happening. Small glitch. Okay, so let's uh, just ignore that for now and just join it. This portion join to this to this. Yes. And now let's just take this to top. Okay. Yeah, fine. And let's join this to this yeah and join and switch order this to this so you see that small glitch actually this wall should start here fine let's just take this wall inside let's flush this corner yes join and join this to this yes okay so and then align unfinished to Unfinish and then join beam with this and this beam with this. Okay, so this is perfect. Only thing is that join and switch order this to this and yes, and join this to this. Okay, fine, no issues. This particular beam is again being exposed. Let's see it in 3D and H I and W A and upper ground floor. Yeah, everything is fine. Just pick lines and draw one, but not upper ground floor. Yes, upper ground floor. So draw. Yes, it's drawn. Don't worry. So H R and then just go to that particular section and join this to this. this to this yes perfect and move it this from here to here okay and join it fine so this is how you manipulate things in Revit and after joining just go here edit type edit and 280 mm okay and apply and okay and align and unfinished to unfinished Fine. Perfect. Now we will just have a little bit of 15 inch of coping here. 15 inch. And yes. Okay. Perfect. Let's just join this with this. This plaster layer shouldn't come. Let's just switch order. Then to this, this.
Okay, let's forget it. And here there will be a railing. Okay, and just like this, we need a beam over here also. As I said, when we'll come to this particular section, we'll see. So just go to 3D. And while going to 3D, I guess that select this point and filter and structural framing check none and structural framing apply and okay and just isolate category okay so you see that this particular beam needs to be connected come all the way to this point and yes it is there but somehow we have cut that portion uh -huh. hr if I just go to this section and do I need to switch order or what we have done? Because if this is the section, then that beam should appear here. HH join and switch order. No, where is that beam one? HR join and switch order. That beam has probably joined with this. If I just delete this, then you see that you can see that particular beam. So, how to bring that beam back? Okay. So, yeah, so uh, I just edit type. And so, okay, let's start. Continue from here and then we'll come to that particular point. And join this to this. Concrete beam with this this with uh, sorry join this to this and join and switch order this to this and likewise join this with this bigger beam okay and join the plaster layer and then join and switch order and let this beam go to the top and likewise what is this wooden deck okay join and join this particular beam with this wooden deck then join this to this and join and switch order and this to this i let it for overlaps here yeah, that's fine okay now we need to bring this back down so how how we'll do that 100 mm and OK and apply and OK. And with this, I'll say that align and unfinish to unfinish. OK, perfect. And now we can see this beam. So join and this beam was there, but somehow it was due to that floor beam. I had cut it by mistake. So join and now this particular beam with this and join and switch order this to this and join and this to this and how perfect it is fine and now again back to edit and make this 280 mm and we will have our beam perfect not 100 foot meter high uh, 280 mm 280 foot enter say anyways align finish to finish how perfect it is see absolutely perfect and now if i just go to 3d then you see that your beam is visible what we just need to do is that we can take this particular level this or this particular layer are this uh, cs and pick lines and yes overlaps That was drawn along the entire path so delete uh oh sorry undo again and let's see whether i can take this particular beam upper ground floor and uh, ceiling plan of upper ground floor yes and just snap it to this point okay and now if i just go to 3d then yes it's done okay 
perfect no issues only thing is that we need a wall over here a little bit 15 inch of hoping that we can draw here itself in upper ground floor for the first floor and uh, wa and that would be uh, start level should be first floor uh, sorry not first floor yes first floor and zero and unconnected height of 15 inch and draw from this point till this point okay and 3d Yes, under this our railing will come and we just need to join this to this, this to this, and this wall with this, and this to this, and we have a clean joint. Little bit of error, a drafting error, I guess. See. Again, go to upper ground first floor. And yes, here it seems perfect. And why is that? Yes, uh, 3D. No, it's more inside. So, first floor and fine, let's forget it. That's okay. And now, first floor, and just take this particular section, the edge pair, and from here to here, vertical horizontals are done. We just need to check the vertical segments, and see here again there is a problem. First floor, and let me just take this all the way, only to leave this point properly able to visualize first floor private yeah this we joined that particular glass grass the balcony slab but this slab also needs to be joined okay so here it is joined and the thing is that here we need to join and join first this structural slab with this then join this with this and Switch order this to this. Okay, perfect. And just like that, join and this. Join and this to this. And this to this. And join and switch order this to this. Perfect. Fine. First floor and now is this toilet. So again, we don't have a beam over here. Wash from sunk slab. Uh, tie beams are very important. So if I just go to first floor, we provide the beam over here. By here also we need one beam. As per the AutoCAD plan, there is no beam here, but we will need one beam. So uh, structure beam and uh, change it to bottom yes and from here till this point okay and now if i just see this section then where is it yes here okay so let's change this to top okay and it's perfect in place so now just H H and let me just see this section only to this point. Don't want to see what is happening in elevation. Fine and H R and the same process. Hundred mm. Okay. Apply and okay. And align unfinished to unfinished and join concrete with concrete oh, oh sorry join this beam with this 
this beam with this and join and switch order this to this this to this and join this class earlier with this okay perfect join this to this and switch order no first join class earlier and then switch order and let this beam go up join and this to this join and this and switch order and this likewise concrete with this particular slab so join this to this join and switch order and this to this uh -uh. this is weird junction redo and yes mm, how will we join this join and the concrete with this yes and this hierarchy of steps very important and then join and switch order and this to this okay perfect no issues fine rest everything is fine okay first floor and let me just shift to this and this i guess we just did only thing is that here join this to this join this to this and join and switch order this to this like way join this to uh, uh, join and this to this join and this to uh, uh, sorry A plaster with this and then join and switch order and this to this okay hmm. join and this to this and yes it's done first floor and again taking up to this section okay and see the section and join and join this particular thing to this yes and also we need to join and switch order and no, so that, that particular thing is not joined yet. So join and this to uh, this. Undo and HH. -H. Fine. So join this particular beam with this. Then join the plaster layer with this. And then join and switch order. Uh oh, sorry. Join and switch order this with this yes okay and rest everything is perfect again first floor and where we were where the last part okay the last segment yes so again washroom sunk slab and this needs to be Okay, join this to this, this to this, and join this to this, join and switch order this to this, this to this, and this washroom sunk slab, edit, and this should be 280 mm. Yes, okay, and okay, and apply and okay yes and align unfinished to unfinished and perfect oh my god hh yes so again washroom some slab edit type and doesn't matter the last so 100 mm 
ok and apply and ok align unfinish to unfinish join structure to structure join structure to structural slab join and beam to slab and switch order from year to year from year to year yes and join the plaster layer join and this to this yes okay and just edit type and edit and 280 mm okay and yes apply and okay and just align unfinished to unfinished fine perfect with that we are done with all the horizontals and verticals now just we need to continue the wall or lay the wall, new wall and then join the walls with that structural elements okay so just go to 3d yes so now we need to build the walls okay here in what is this this i say the zero yes and the, this we will have to draw a different wall just like this while going to that particular designated floor plan and cs and draw from here to here and draw from here to here and make it straight tr and join this to this what about these walls yes so join and join this to this perfect this to this yes and just like that here to join this to this and likewise take this here and join this to this okay ready yes now let's quickly go to let's just close all this and just have the first floor plan let me just save it before i don't lose it and yes let's wf and draw the walls this wall is already drawn so we don't need to draw that we need to draw the other wall so wa and first floor and up to terrace level fine and just Quick walls, core face, interior, exterior. Let's have and just uh, for simply just WF and select this AutoCAD plan and wall and wall. Or select wall and then the AutoCAD plan and just eyeglasses isolate category so we don't have unnecessary elements popping around hanging around yes so draw from here to here and here we have 4.5 inch so WA CC and 4.5 inch wall with that same constraint tab and connect it to this point tab and connect it here and tab tab space okay and now the 9 inch wall so CS Pick lines, 
Pick this. Pick this. Pick this. Press space. Oh, oh, sorry. Too fast. Space. And CS. Pick lines. One, two, three, four. And where is that? CS lines and one and two TR and join this to this TR join this to this TR and join this to this and this should come all the way to this join this to this oh sorry here we need to draw one CS and pick lines Press space and select this and CS create similar and pick lines and yes let's press space and one to two one to one to two and this should go all the way to the and join this that's fine let's see it in 3D this should TR and join this to this and likewise, this wall will also go to here. But we need a wall here. Then only we'll be able to lay the, uh, what do we say, door. So CS and pick. Yes. And yes. Okay. Let's check out the 3D. And wow. Okay. Fine. But before laying this walls, we should have taken up the columns and the beams above. Oh my God. We should have, as per the hierarchy of steps, the first step was that we need to, we should have taken the columns above up to that particular level and then we should have taken up the wall. But that's fine, okay. Because if I just HH, then you don't have any column. Forget it, not to worry. Just uh, see that in plan, in section, the joint condition HR, yes, and just as per the walls, that will be real quick. That won't take much of time. You just need to join the walls. Okay, and first floor and here to here. And join this to this. This to this. First floor. join and this to this yes this to this this to this yes to this and this to this yes first floor and yes we just join that particular section and come to here what is this Main wall, yeah, okay. Which section is this? Yes. So where is the slab? Oh, let's see the wrong. Yes, okay. This is the sunk slab, I guess. Yeah, no, it's the main wall. Which portion is this? Oh, yeah, it's the stair cabin, so that's fine. Okay, this wall it is. And join and this to this.
Okay. First floor and let's take this here. Last, I guess. Join and let's do this. Let's do this. Okay. Now we just need to elevate this particular ball and that should go to terrace level. And join and join this to this. Okay. First floor, uh, not first floor, 3D. One wall which I forgot to elevate to that particular designated level. So I just did that in section. Fine. But what my point is that we forgot to first, as per the hierarchy, we were supposed to take up the columns. Now, just SA and select all of that particular wall. Or just so again, we will do the same method, and that is this. We have to select this all and filter and just check none and select the structural columns, apply and OK. OK, and those will be selected. But the top level varies, which uh, ideally should come to come up to the terrace level. And yes, with all the isolate category, all the others column did come or not. Mm, it's hard to visualize. Let me just press undo. And yes, first this wall should ideally, let's stop it at terrace level. Okay, and let me just select. Actually, let's uh, select all of this and filter and check none and say that structural columns apply and OK and isolate category. Isolate category. Fine. And now this are the columns which are supposed to be taken up so I will select all of them and the top level is first floor I will bring them to terrace level yes perfect so this is the way how to do it and then I just press HR okay so now we need to join them in plan so I'll just go to first floor plan and HL or WF and just hide this AutoCAD plan and wherever needed this is join i guess let me just turn on this level to find yes this is join this particular column needs to be joined so select this column and join and here to okay Actually, not first floor, but uh, terrace level floor plan. No, first floor, first floor only. And this is supposed to join this and this to this. Yes, HL and yeah, it is fine. Just join WF and because the wireframe mode was not showing. Join and join this column to wall. Here we don't have column and here this column is exposed. Here we need to join it with this, this to this. This is already joined. This to wall. Yes. And HL, yes, fine. So all the columns are joined and up to that particular designated level. Wherein we see that we have these two exposed columns. So in that case, I need to select the rectangular beam and also tag, take that to terrace level. And likewise, this particular column is embedded in wall, so we need to draw that. So I will just select this and see yes. And what will be the constraint? Oh, this is a rectangular column. So uh, 
How can we do this? And let's go to first floor. And let's say that architecture column and rectangular column, architectural column, sorry. And what should be its constraint height to terrace floor? And this is the placement plane. And align, align this face to this internal line and this to, it's not snapping to, so move it, move and move it 0.5 an inch. Yes. And then, yes, so now join and join the structural column with that architectural column. Oh, made a wrong connection. First, watch this point. We need to select this tab structural column and then join with the architectural column. Okay, so the columns are taken, and now we also need to join this lot of geometries which are visually seen and have a one uniform surface here there is a small glitch that's okay just ignore that and this to this there must be a small sliver gap gap and the laying will the laying of that particular and that's why that um, here to this to this and one homogeneous surface yeah fine here i can visually only see that there is a glitch yes okay that's gone and also join this to this this to this okay so this line okay it's not going and this is the autocad plan let's just hide it okay yes this to this and join this to this yes one homogeneous surface fine and when you zoom out those lines will be seen but that's okay here if i just zoom in you see that there's a small little gap which we need to rectify in order to have a flush connection and yes so if i just move this from this point to this point and then if you will in 3D, then now you can join it in order to have one uniform surface. Yes, see? And this to this, yes. Okay, that's perfect. H, H. And join this wall to the bottom. Wow, okay. And only this. Again here there will be a small gap. Anyways, but I hope that you understood the concept and that you can just rectify wherever needed. Okay. So now uh, the structural framing. So again, select this and filter and check none and structural framing. Okay. And with that selected, copy and paste align to selected levels and to terrace level. Wow. Okay. Great. And let's quickly join that. 
but this beams at this particular floor if i just take it to this uh, terrace level this line now needs to change its work plane edit work plane and go to terrace level okay and let's open the terrace level floor plan and then insert import cad and terrace level last manual center and fine and vg imported categories and terrace level turn it to half tone apply okay and modify and align this to this and this point to this okay fine so what i was saying mm, yes the beam grid over here so on terrace level first floor plan if you just see watch wf where is the autocad plan yes and if you just hi this then you see that on this particular first floor again this beams are of the smaller size fine so i will just take you to the terrace plan uh, ceiling plan of that first floor and yes so this particular beams at that level see the reference level is terrace level so these are the beams on that particular level i will just uh, co and copy from this point to this point and also from also this needs to be just delete and delete this as well and co and copy it from this point to this point yes so regular beams okay so just watch that in 3d yes okay now the exposed beams are well, first let's join so we'll be able to figure out that which all are the exposed beams so first let's join and this to this and likewise this to walls uh -oh, sorry join and this to this this to this yes and column and then wall yes we did all, we did this particular step for all the floors so we have to do it here also in order to have the perfect and then wherever needed we will add that plaster layer okay here there is no beam over cancel and yes yes this wall doesn't have the beam join and join this to this this to this sorry cancel and join and this to this this to this this to this but where it will join there is no beam here so let this end here only at this level okay and join
join and yes and perfect okay still join and few things always remains sorry this particular beam i think it has snapped too long no yes see instead of so terrace level floor plan not not terrace level first floor first floor ceiling plan and yeah see move it from this point to this but that will let's change the view range and make it nine foot okay and with that concrete rectangular beam what is the depth of this Ten inch, yes. So one inch. So we need to move it point five an inch. Wow. Okay. Perfect. So this is how you can work in multiple segments and get your thing rectified. Thing get your error solved. Okay. Fine. Now, wherever the beams are exposed, we need to add that particular beam wall or see. So, where to select that from? Yes, concrete rectangular boom, CS. And I'll just pick lines and one pick lines uh, placement plane footing level name join and, and still see that yes join and yes join and yes join and yes okay and now that particular concrete rectangular beam but that is a structural framing i want wall beam wall so let's say that wall the blue a and nine inch and just snap but it's snapping too long see so this should be eight foot five point five and up till terrace level so one feet six and a half so yes just drag it it has been drawn all the way till this point, but we don't want it for Oh, no, delete. Okay, let's just do that in ceiling plan. Just delete this. Sorry, not this undo. Yes, and ceiling plan of first floor. Ceiling plan. 
of first floor. Yes. And there we'll be properly able to visualize this. Yes. And just change this to fine. And view range is perfect. Only this main wall. Here it is exposed. But uh, I will say that WA and with this, those constraints, I will draw from this end to this end. Yes. But the WA and wrong constraint selected. This this point needs to be selected. Press tab. Yes. Okay. And just like that here too. Press tab. Press tab. Okay. And where else here? Wherever you find the beams unwrapped, you just need to draw that wall, beam wall. Okay, where else? Here too, there is an internal wall, so it should be having that. Yes, and because of the internal wall, that conflict. Here there should be, the main beam is placed wrong, otherwise this is already, see, some weird proportion. So that means the beam is not correctly placed. Okay, we will check that out later. Now let me just go to 3D and what are the remaining. We have placed it here. This uh, yeah, this is that particular remaining one. And WA and with that let's just draw. Okay. This is still remaining, and this too. Here to here, and here to here, and this point to this point. I hope, no, this is still left. Yeah, because there is a wall also and we are drawing a beam also to overlaps. Doesn't matter. Now just join it quickly. And here also there will be on column. HR. Column rectangular. Copy. This point to place it here and rotate it, move it from this point to this point, move it from this point to this point and move it from point 0.5 here and that will flush. Fine. Okay, so Let's just join the remaining this to this. And you see it has not been made properly. It should flush with this end. Yeah. And then join it. join and yes
<laughs> Why is this not joining? Join and this should join. Okay. Then why is this? Oh, because it is, we need to join it with the column and not the wall. Column and yes. Uh oh. Is the constraint wrong or what? Join and and cut join elements. So they are already joined. Yes. Okay. So, but that needs to be joined with column also. Yes. Okay. Sometimes you have to work hard in order to make it join properly. Yes. And this is the flushed face. So no problem. Here, join. So me as a tutor is facing so much of problems and difficulties. So just imagine the tenfold of that you are going to encounter while doing the modeling part. But once understood, the concept understood, then you will enjoy the modeling and the result will also be fruitful. Join and this to this. And likewise join this. No, this is the yes. Why this beam? This beam should continue till this end. This edge. Yes. Okay. Join. Uh oh, too fast. Okay, this is something always remains. Join and this to this. Why? Join and this to this. Okay, and yeah, this is already joined. CC, R enter, and last one. Yes, and I hope that nothing here. Yeah. The moment you think that nothing remains, there pops up something. And you can see here this one, two. This beam is not needed. Okay. Oh my God, again this two. Oh, oh. This wall will come up. So change it to terrace level. And yes, after that, you can join the geometries. And yes, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> this still remains. Okay. Fine. This too is not needed. Here. So there are some walls remaining of that one is this WA, press tab and connect, this is one connect, also this one 
Ja. This face. Sorry, wrong. W A and yes. Which portion is this? Oh, oh. Okay, okay, sorry. So here there is the toilet and here there is the balcony. So join and join this to this. Or no, the column needs to be tab and join. Yes. Why is that the column? H H. Oh, we. I guess that we made the wrong connection over here. Finally, nothing remains. Okay, only that this column has been changed. It's not changed, the order has been altered. So we need to CC or enter, join this with this. Yes, so that wall was overlapping, and that's why. But this particular one column, I guess that I have made a mistake. Join and switch order. Where is the concrete column here? I'll just take a section from this point. Then see that concrete column has lost. So, how to bring that back? Switch order. Yes. Okay. So, see how beautiful and perfect. I got it that I have made a wrong connection. So, we will understand that, and that's why. Okay. So, with that. We are completely done now just need to make the terrace slab and finish off the modeling part for this particular structure but i guess i missed this particular wall here on this portion cs and with that same constraint just pick and pick this and yes it shows that the overlaps but that's fine you just need to join it join and Join this to this, and yes, it will be perfect. Okay. Also, join this to this. CC R enter. Uh, sorry. Join and yes. Okay. And with that, now it is perfect. Okay, and we have no overlapping volumes. Uh, 
okay and yes here also there will be one and this also oh my god cs and pick lines yes and just like that we can oops sorry uh, redo and just join this to this join this with this and continue we need to continue this and instead of continuing just select that same wall and cs and pick lines and make it pick lines and yes. uh, undo and select this wall oh we made two beams i guess so see join and join this to this and not the beam but the wall and cs and join okay and join and done join and yes and we need to join this to i cannot snap to this wall yes fine perfect and just like that no this is a different phase so that's why it is going that niche fine and i think that i need to take this wall so let me just go to the floor plan and select this section and this wall will go all the way to terrace 11 yes highlight it and we will join it this to this this to this okay and likewise this to this and this to this and perfect join condition 3d <clears throat> yes see okay so now let's take this particular reference line to the last that is it is on the on terrace level did we take it up yes we did so just close all this hr and go to terrace level floor plan and not ceiling plan so terrace level and yes and we have already taken that autocad plan so what we just need to do first step first step is that we need to select all this and actually we can select everything and filter and check none and say that structural columns apply and okay and with that selected just just eyeglasses isolate category and yes which columns do we need to take so why is this column showing this column should not cut like this Oh, and so the few columns are here. Anyways, forget it. <clears throat> so, HR. Yes, here there is a box wall, and because of that, I guess. But okay, that's fine. Which column, which wall will go up? AutoCAD. And one, two, three. And that retaining wall. Only three columns will go up one two and three there's three columns and just change this to slap up okay and just hr fine first let's lay the slab for that on the terrace level so what you need to just do is that copy to clipboard and copy to clipboard and paste 
or sorry not paste but line to selected levels and just place that to terrace level okay and then we can edit the footprints and this four three columns are okay fine so let's go to let's select this door plate and edit boundary go to terrace level and draw that the floor plan for that particular terrace level uh, tr and this will join and also this will join to get rid of this line and split lines uh oh sorry tr and join this to this this to this this to this and let's have close boundary one to two yes and Delete this and join pick lines. This to this, this to this. And let's get rid of this. Okay. <clears throat> so this will be the clap pattern for the terrace level. And here and here we'll have pergolas or canopy or whatever that we'll decide later. Just finish. Where is the problem? Yes. Continue and TR and we need to join this. Finish. Uh oh, we need to join this as well. Finish and don't attach. Only thing is that, and this would be duplicate and call it terrace slab. And we will already be having material for that. Terrace. Oh, terrace we don't have. What is the material for terrace? I have already defined. Why is it not showing me? Roof tiles okay yes and you can manipulate this uh, brick bed layers now there will be a brick bed layer insert down and this will be finish one four as well because we need waterproofing brick beds okay and that too i am just now giving the standard that we give 100 mm then you can decide it on the basis of your neighborhood and your office standards. Okay, and this is the terrace lab. 3D. Perfect. Okay, and just elevate this wall. Take it all the way till this laptop. Get the top offset of 15 inch. Yes. And we need to draw some wall over here wherein this wall i guess again we need to join this overlapping volumes wall to this okay and as per the autocad plan this is the toilet pantry and lift shaft so this floor will entirely continue and wherein we will draw this particular thing so just select this particular floor a slab not able to select select this and the sunk slab will go on the terrace level also copy and paste the line to selected levels and to terrace level okay but 3d and edit boundary we need to get rid of rest of others hl 
yes so terrace level floor plan and just get rid of all this one and two and just yes don't attach okay 3d and section four so with that laid now again you need to join this particular thing on the terrace level before taking up the walls our enter or let's draw a wall window because there will be only few walls over here so once and for all we can then go for join or join condition of all that <coughs> sorry <coughs> wf and yes wa and main nine inch wall from terrace level zero and up till slap top with the top offset of 15 inch tab and join and space and yes okay and this walls are already taken above i guess yes this walls are taken this was the only ball which we need to draw and also this ball yeah sorry so wa and starting from here this point to this point and this point okay what else yes this wall will continue i guess tr and join this with this okay and here we have the opening fine so what next structural grid yes the most important part also this wall will go up on three rectangular beam and this wall up to this laptop 15 inches not 15 inches not here but it should be on the, only on the periphery to act as a coping parapet or whatever but that's fine not important right now one two three four five six seven one two three four and just remove the top offset of 15 inch for now okay <clears throat> Fine, what else? Yes, now the join part of this. This material is uh, annoying. So let's just go to and let's it replace by load bearing wall. Yes, this brick wall, this material is fine. Okay, and apply and okay. Yes, this this looks good better than what it was and now what next here there will be a so we actually don't need beam here but yes just delete this and H H and I hope that it's not yes and I select category and join this to this TR and yes okay fine HR yes perfect okay Fine, and let's draw the parapet wall, and then once and for all, we'll have a join connection. So the blue A, and now unconnected, and that would only be three foot parapet wall. Here till this point, and oops, we joined wrong. We take the wrong point. WA and three foot height and yes this should be the one two three four and likewise
Okay. Okay, fine. Let's just check. And absolutely perfect. Okay, so now we can lay the third slab also. And to lay that, we need to um, go to laptop, not be able to see anything. So just say that range level, floor below, that is terrace level. At least you can see the footprints and floor architecture and uh, first floor public first floor public name uh, which is the last terrace slab yes and let's place that and join don't attach ED H H and what about the beams? First is that we need to join the beams, the structural framing. And I had selected this concrete rectangular beam, structural framing, and I'll just isolate that category. Or what we can do, yes, just isolate that category. But here you cannot visualize anything. Here, so I guess this all are the beams which needs to be taken above. Also, this okay, just guessing games, and let's try copy and align to uh, uh, sorry. Modify and paste nine to selected levels and up to terrace laptop. Yes, okay. HR and wow, okay. No issues and slap top and uh, ceiling plan of terrace level and wow, okay. And join this to this, change this view range to nine foot and change this to fine and just concrete rectangular beam structural framing is there what else main wall so hide that category first hide category yes and just see the beams wireframe yeah join this to this this to this and here there is a left shaft okay and yes, join this to this. Okay, perfect. Join this to this. HR. And no issues. Absolutely perfect. Fine. Go to 3D. Yes, so we have a lot of geometries to join. But that's okay. We can do that real quick. So first, just like this, we'll start with the topmost terrace slab. <clears throat> and we're not able to select the floor. Tab. Yes, terrace slab, HH. And first join the beams with the wall. And deduct the overlapping volumes. Yes, this is the ball on your terrace and ribbon have been. Okay, and join. Join and join this to this. Perfect. This to this. Yes, and run this to this. Here there will be no beam because of the left shaft. So we need to break this. 
but that we can do just with I select category and just split lines, split this point or slap top and ceiling plan of terrace level. Let's go to ceiling plan of terrace level. And yes, this was supposed to stop here. Okay. No shoes. Because this is the shear wall, so the beam will not pass through it. Why is it not snapping? And likewise, same way here too. No, but this connection is fine. HR select this laptop, press tab HH, and yes, this is fine. Okay, yes, we need two beam walls. One onto here and one onto here. So let me just select this wall, main wall, CS, and constraint will be terrace level and height 8 foot 5.5 inch. And up to slap top, yes, and just pick lines and one onto here, overlapping volumes, yes, I know, one onto here and one to here. Okay, and one to here as well. And this would also WA and pick. And yes, okay. So join. Uh oh, sorry. Join and. Okay, this particular beam, I guess that this wall, this wall is a problem, terrace level and it will snap to a wrong. Also here it is showing some problem, both of this wall should be or is this the beam wall that is creating the problem? Delete. No, that is perfectly laid. So here it is. Just look that, look into that once we are done with this. Okay, so what is the problem here? The problem is that extra one inch. So I guess that will rectify that in section. So HR. And now we need to draw join all this in. So join and join this to this, this to this, and yes. Highlighted or inside join, but not overlap. Yes, join and Join and select this. Select this. And this. And all of this. And this.
Yes, and this is the problem. Yes, perfect. Okay, no issues. Finally, and then what we can do is that uh, we can just go to the slab top and just construct a peripheral wall of 15 inches, wall WA and slap top 0 and unconnected 15 inch that would be from this point tab and this point yes okay 3d yes fine that's okay so just modify and join CC join this wall and this with this, this with this, and this with this, This, I guess, is the concrete rectangular beam in the environment. Oh, so just CS and with that slap top, one feet, sorry, eight foot, 5.5 inch, and unconnected knee, but up till the slap top. Terrace level and slap till slap top. Yes. And just pick lines and create one. Again, we have overlapping volume, but that's okay. We can always join. Join this with this. Yes. And join this to this. Okay, perfect. Take care. Fine. So we are completely done with the modeling part. Now joining is left for this two floors at in plan also, I guess. CC and just plan in plan we have joined, I guess. Yes. So here there is the problem. WF no HL. Yes. So the, here there is no problem. Let's go to the slap top. A slap top it will be terrace level pay join karna tha. Yes. And first floor peto, I guess that we have joined everything perfectly. Not the ceiling plan, sorry. First floor. And yes, here we have joined everything perfect. except for this particular one because of that wall type HL yeah and yeah see perfect no issues first floor and yeah now we need to take the section at various points in order to perfectly so for that I will just take this first floor plan and and take this point to here and see this section okay just this is the terrace slab and this is that particular box wall so hh and this is fine okay only terrace slab needs to be joined so join and join this concrete beam with this and then Again, join and this with this, okay, and join and switch order. And yes, join this to this, this to this, uh oh, join this to this, okay, perfect. And again, being for this particular 
portion in order to be perfect no but uh, it is the slab is below the level so we don't need to do that we can just select this concrete beam join concrete beam with the floor yes and then join the layer of plaster here too and thus switch order and let this go okay perfect join and this to this plaster layer and switch order great and join and concrete beam then plaster layer and switch order and join and join this to this okay perfect see how beautiful all the join conditions perfectly here there is a problem because of this this is a box wall so wf and yeah join and join this with this yes box what have okay mm, okay perfect now first floor and just take this section to this point everything perfect no issues yes so join this to this yes this to this this to this yes okay which is this place your first floor public why is this cut out here Cancelia section yeah okay that part okay let me just check whether the first floor was HL and see. So this was remaining, this was remaining, this was remaining, and this was remaining. Okay. Now this point. and we again need to do that oh my god i did type and first let's check this this is perfect and join and switch order yes join and switch order Here there is a problem on terrace. This wall alignment of this wall is not move and move from this to this one. Okay. And with that, I guess that this also should be move from this point to this point. Okay. And what is this? The terrace lab. So edit boundary and go to slab top. And just take it in. Yes. Don't attach. Fine. Join and move it to this. This to this and switch order. Oh, oh, sorry. Yes, finish. Don't attach. And HR and first is that we need to join. Yes. Okay. And then HR. And then, okay, that's fine.
Yes. <coughs> okay, now this is big fix HH and join. Yeah, this is join. So HR. And what we need to do, we need to see that concrete beam. And in order to see that concrete beam, again, the same. That is 100 mm. OK. Apply and OK. And align. Unfinish to unfinish. And then join this to this. And switch order. Great. And join. OK. Perfect. And here, anyways, there is a concrete wall, so no need to worry. Here again, edit and 100 mm. Okay, apply and okay. Yeah, but that is perfect. You don't need to change that. Okay, only this sunken slab. Yeah, fine. So again, 280 apply. Okay, yes, it doesn't matter. Okay, and okay. Oh my god, 280 feet. 280 mm. Okay, and apply and okay. Align it this to this, this point to this, and then join. Okay, join this to this. Yes, okay. Which is that line? There is slab, yeah, okay. So that's need to be terrace slab, say rather thick, I can. Actually, it should be the other way around. Anyways, forget it. So join and concrete beam. If the wall is done. I'm not able to visualize this. Okay. Yes. Okay. Join and join this to this. Switch order and array R. Sorry. Okay, so the hierarchy of steps says that this concrete beam should join with this, and then the plaster line layer should join with this, and then the switch order and this. Uh oh, switch order and this. Okay, <laughs> hierarchy of steps is very important in Revit. Okay, so this is done. First floor, and now again take this here. Edit type, uh, see the section. All this is perfect. Why is this line? Terrace slab. Yeah, it is joined then why it is here also see ah uh, actually yes I did boundary and go to terrace level and this should be the inside line on all the faces okay fine sorry my mistake Finish, yes, attach, don't attach, and now if you see the section, then yeah, fine. Okay. Anything to join here? No, perfect.
join condition and this is the staircase block right where is the staircase h h uh -oh. yes so same function copy to clipboard align paste selected levels and this is what this is ground level i guess so upper ground and first okay mm, galat one two three and align to selected level and which level is this and i think that we have taken the staircase above Achha, staircase is not coming oh, yeah staircase is only coming up till this level and from here we don't have this this is the upper ground for the upper ground first and fine so section basement to plinth level yes but here there should be a staircase why 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 can't we see that h h h h okay the staircase is only coming from basement to plinth and from there Blint, oh, okay, 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 sorry. So, section and select all of this and paste align to selected levels to plinth upper ground and first. Okay, mm -mm. I guess that there is some problem. Oh, okay. It has that top offset of base offset. Oh, sorry. So that wouldn't be in this case. So align to selected level and plinth upper and first right. But what we will do is that we will select all this staircase. And remove the base offset and top offset. Wow. Base offset and top offset. And base offset and top offset. Fine. <laughs> so this is how we have continued that staircase. Okay. First floor. And let's check that also. But let's hide that particular category, hide category, and let us concentrate on the sections because they are switch order and just to oh, oh sorry. Is it getting cut? Yes. Then join and switch order and this to this. Yes, hierarchy of steps again join and concrete beam with this this to this and then switch order this to this okay this to this And we have a parallel again. Okay.
Mm, see? Join this to this, this to this, and switch order. Sorry. Yes. Same way, this to this, this to this. Join and this to this. Switch order. And yes, this is that wall which doesn't have that beam. Uh, which which carpet section? Yes, this wall doesn't have the beam. Beam grid nahi hai yaha pe. H R W F. And yes, the beam is here and it's not here. So this is that wall, I guess. See, beam is here, but it's not here. Okay, so join and this to this. Join this to this. And switch order. This to this. Well, if there is a beam over here, then I guess that switch order. Ah. Oh. But in order to make that switch order, we need to hide this. And how will we switch order? Uh, HR. Difficult part. How to switch order for this? So, switch order and try to select concrete structural framing and then join it with slab yes <laughs> join and join this and this with this switch order this with this and also switch order this with oh my god Mm, let's remove, yeah, fine. No, but that is. Let's do one thing. Let's select on both of this wireframe and let me select this. And while in 3D, let me HI. And then here I can switch order. Okay, so see, sometimes you have to use your brains and make it work properly. Join and the concrete beam with the wall, yes. And then this with Okay, let's forget it. Uh, let's not waste more time on this. I mean, this plaster layer is again creating a. Let's hide this. Hide this as well. Join this with. Not allowing to. Maybe switch order. Oh, yes. Oh, it was already joined. It was already. Switch order with apply. Yes. Okay. Join. Yes. Okay. Finally. HR. And this should actually. Both of this eyeglasses and height category. Okay, 
and hl right so now we need to complete this one to two and this to this this to this and switch order and finally this to oh sorry this to this and join this to this and this is the grass so again in order to join this perfectly 100 mm okay apply and okay and unfinished to unfinished yes and then join oh it was joined yes perfect no issues again 280 mm okay and apply and okay and just flush this unfinished to unfinished yes no problem hl and join this to this yes and this to this this line is of wooden deck and first floor and last section and yes this is the same as that so i don't think that we'll have anything to join here okay and now the verticals one start with this oh my god okay let's start from this end join join this to this and this to this why is this particular wall undo and first is that hide this and yes then hide then join and join this to this okay then join this beam with this and switch order okay yeah Now what is this washroom chunk slap? So again, oh my god. Let's hide this and this and hide category. Okay. And also now edit and again 100 mm. Okay and apply and okay and align this to this okay and join this concrete beam with the slab and join and switch order this with this and then join this with this perfect and likewise join this concrete beam with this and switch order this to this perfect and join this to this yes okay and after this you can again enter that 280 mm and okay and yes apply and okay and align unfinished with unfinished yes but just need to join it here again yes okay and which is this oh terrace lab my god let's try and switch order 
this with this, yes, thank God. But this is again not, yeah, it did, perfect, thank God. We didn't have to change the constraint. Again, this is going to create a problem. Join and switch order. Yes, undo. Let me just hide this for now. Yes, what is the problem? HR. We need to join beam with this and then switch order. And this should go up. Yes, and then join this with this. Okay. Here it is perfect. Here absolutely perfect. Fine. Here also everything is fine. The first floor. And from here to this point. Oh, thank God. Everything seems joined perfectly over here. And yes, this is going to be Again, join column with slab, join plaster layer with this and plaster layer with this and then switch order. Yes, same way, join beam with this, plaster and this with this. Oh, sorry. Before that, switch order. Hierarchy of steps very important. Don't forget. Yes, and then you can join this with this. Okay. Join this with this. This with this. Switch order. Okay. Okay, fine. Everything here seems perfect. Okay. Yes, this one is still. Okay. What is the problem here? Just join this to this. Then join this to this and join and switch order so this was one glitch which was remaining at this particular floor which we forgot to do when we were doing this particular thing okay and Here, let me just take. Hopefully, everything is fine. Oh, yes. This one is the main join. Join. Switch order. Yes, and here it is fine. Join and switch order. Let this go. Okay. First floor and this one. Oh my God. Join this to this, but before that, this with this, this to this, switch order, and then join this to this. Everything seems perfect for this particular section. And finally, with lots and lots of hard work, we have been able to complete this particular thing. And first is that I need to close all these views, this unnecessary views. And let's, and now you see our model is complete and you can see one uniform surface 
with perfect joint condition and everything okay so now let's complete this model by adding door windows and uh, landscape park cars trees and everything okay so let's go to plinth level and let's start with that okay so if i just h h this auto get plan then we have a lot of elements being seen here that is that might be because of the view range and yes and yes see so this should be seven six and this cut plane should only be four feet fine okay and h l let's turn it to hidden line and with that yeah but if i turn it to wireframe in order to see the autocad plan okay and fine so here we need to host a door and window and all this windows fine so let's first go to architecture and you can here also you can go to that particular section for example where is door yeah door and Revit has only provided the single plus door. I will just say that load family and US and go to doors. And I want to load a couple of doors onto this. Very, I'm just going to select this storefront, and this is already there. Double sliding, and yes, first let's do uh, just select any one type. That's fine. We can edit it and so are uh, not of this category door we want to okay so this problem occurs while so what you need to do that instead of if you will go to door category and then you will load family then you will be only able to load the door you cannot even load the uh curtain doors so instead just go to insert and in from insert you can load family and then you can do load anything so double storefront and then double sliding this too okay and open fine we can edit the properties later and now we need to load a couple of doors the residential and exterior this and what else first let me just have a check yes uh, this is interior but it's double and yes so this interior single full glass and exterior full glass and open just load any one type you can edit the dimensions later by duplicating it then go to we don't need any commercial doors because fine and then go to window windows and windows has lots of windows where in this skylight we can add to any of this so i will just load this and the stop hung okay and windows awning yes and vertical and awning 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 it's triple double triple so double hung and triple hung and with that this casement and this box window they will make it later but yes if we are adding then just let's make it let's just add it what is the hum then windows round top no all this later Casement, triple tantrum, middle, and this is not relevant. Windows casement, triple, with tantrum, yeah, double hung, this I want. And, and let's uh, just see that window fix. That is already the part of it. And all this, lots of windows, but right now just let's load this and any one type just select okay and with this oh it'll take some time to add and regenerate so just stay tuned and yes we added we selected a lot of categories so it is taking a little bit of time to add so just stay tuned and yeah added 
fine and now we can just measure this so modify and measure it from here to this point five foot eleven and a half so it is supposed to be because of that rectangular column that is reading wrong dimension but it is essentially it is to be supposed to be six foot the door and i will just select this uh, double exterior yes and edit type and duplicate it and call it six foot wide entry door yes and i just make this width to six foot and height to what should be the lintel lintel should be eight feet let's keep eight feet of lintel for all the openings apply and okay and let me just host this door somewhere over here okay fine then here to one simple door is needed what is this dimension two feet 11 inch uh, because of this particular plaster layer it's reading that so architecture and door and simple select that single flush mm, or we can select this also and edit type and two feet eight inches wide yeah that's fine you can just add it Oh, but we cannot add it here because there is no wall continued here so in order to add a window you need to have a wall over here we don't have a wall here as well so wa and just say that from print level with the mm 51 mm up to upper ground floor and yes let's just see that zero okay fine and just draw one wall simple wall okay and then now select door and you can see you can add door to that now since that wall has been added and you can just flip the fling swing and just add it and make it the other way around okay fine let's go this okay just like that you need to add windows and what is the width of this window four foot four and a half uh, this is a weird dimension three foot six inches two windows of three foot six inches so architecture and window and which window you want to place here so let's select this window fixed simple and just go to edit type and call a duplicate and three foot six inch okay and with that i would say that three foot six inches and in order to meet the lintel of eight feet you need to enter its height to five feet okay so height of five feet and the sill height of three feet so that will make its lintel eight feet and you just place it and then once place by placing it you can move it to designated and you can snap to the autocad lines also and place it properly exactly okay now why is this uh, four feet four and a half let's make it five feet so cs and just place it here or let it be just what it is right now it doesn't make any difference fine here there will be one window but that we will decide later how to add window for this particular segment because it has a box wall above it and here fine everything is complete now let's go to upper ground floor and there we will need a lot of doors and windows fine so here uh, hl no, but if you enter HL, then you won't be able to measure. Uh, this is very complex format you are seeing. Four feet. Yeah, fine. So architecture and door. And we can make this entry door. And entry door and duplicate and call it four feet entry door. And just enter this value to be four feet and height to be eight feet okay 
and apply and okay and cell height door door won't have cell height so just place it and you can later align it according to your preference but right now i'm just adding it you can also have a double glass actually here we have space so let's change this to uh, double interior six foot wide entry door yeah fine and just move it a little bit okay yes doesn't matter if you want to exactly snap then align and snap to this okay fine and now we have to add window for this particular puja so architecture and window and i will just enter this fixed window and even rabbit has that fixed window see this particular fixed window but what is the dimension modify and measure from this point to this point and just five foot six inches but we'll add five feet because we have shifted this wall uh, considering the upper segment uh, join and this needs to be joined with join and this to this uh, okay forget it <coughs> five feet <coughs> so window and let's make it duplicate and just make it five feet five feet and height of five feet and length of sill sill height of three feet okay yes you can flip the direction also now here this entry entry this this particular window will be entry to deck so we'll have add a curtain wall over here that is the later part now right now let me just finish this with this particular doors first this is three foot so door and now we will add single flush and duplicate and call this three foot and height to eight feet of lintel and width to three foot apply and okay and we will add that same door even to this particular washroom storeroom no storeroom has even the less uh, what is the dimension here modify and align and this is two feet nine inch yeah fine so just edit it and duplicate it and call it two feet nine inch and enter that value here and apply and okay yes and uh, then just you can position it properly i'm not going to take that into consideration right now and architecture and door and this is going to be that uh, four inch and i will rename this calling it <coughs> sorry three foot bedroom door and just make this width equals to three foot apply and okay and we will add use this particular door at a lot of floors and a lot of places fine here also we'll have the curtain wall so now we need to add windows to this particular thing this box wall and we will use that same three foot five inches three foot six inches and let me just host it here and let me just host it here and if i just make this then that would be better so we have a space here something to put here we also have a curtain wall here we'll have ventilation so window and we forgot to add ventilation did we add uh, no so there's the load family and where is that particular lures yes windows lures and with that loaded 24 by 24 is the perfect 
but the sill height is three foot i will just take it and make it six foot so again that will make match the lintel of eight foot okay and here is one window which is that six foot wide and this is the box window but right now i'm not going to that would follow in phase two right now i'm just going to add a simple window but make it six foot wide and let's change this double hung okay and just add make it six foot and height six foot height to three foot uh, let's change it to five feet so apply and okay and it's still height is three foot so that will make it okay now we need to add windows onto this particular face so window and i will just use that existing window one onto here and another one here we have to consider the upper floor also in order to match the elevation if we just simply add windows like that we will not be able to match the elevations so here on the top floor there is a column here also there is a column and here also there is a column so we don't have much space so let's just add here but here it will add then insert conflict with pole joint on the upper ground floor in this portion there is nothing so we can just add one window over here and yes we can add a small sliver over here so window and just this simple two feet by two feet and let's add that here fix window that's okay now we need to add curtain walls and openings complete glass window to this this particular thing one and this particular one one wall and this here and here two three three portions so how we will do that so i will just go to wall and onto that i will just select this storefront system edit this type and duplicate this and call it kitchen curtain wall okay and with that i will just change this to fix distance of let's make it uh, two feet by two feet apply and okay and what i'll do is that uh, the top constraint should be unconnected and that should only be eight feet okay and with that i will just draft from here to here okay and likewise i will add one window one complete full window over here to here uh, okay and this i would say that duplicate living curtain wall and why we need to duplicate because we are just going to change few and vertical grid i would just uh, keep it two feet but horizontal grid i would like to change it to three foot apply and okay but not even three foot we need to add the multiple because we have eight foot of lintel so we need to add uh, why cannot i select that yes so edit type and four feet yeah apply and okay fine and now finally this particular window and that would be again curtain wall but that would be going from an upper ground floor and unconnected height of let's say 18 inches and all the way till first floor and top offset will be minus 18 inches okay and we are the living we are leaving the space for that beam and yes this would be duplicate and call it stair staircase curtain wall the only reason of duplicating this every time is that we can edit the constraints and this i need to change it to four feet apply and okay fine and if i just change it to cc uh, wf then why is this particular box wall on inserts 
exterior interior both should wrap yeah then why we're not wrapping apply and okay just turn this to cc this should wrap see here also not wrapping if i just turn this to this end then to it is not wrapping anyway we'll look that later but right now with this particular this much portion done if i just go to 3d then you see that now our this particular building has started breathing okay let's complete let's complete it see here if i go to add window then here we can but we can add it yeah, so just uh, co and copy it from here to somewhere over here let's just place it that would look better yeah fine just change this to space no that is incorrect this is the correct okay space no okay and i guess that for this particular curtain wall we have selected the mullions yes so let's select the lower size of this particular interior type to be let let be one inch square and this to be 1.5 copy 1.5 okay and this also to be 1.5 and this and one in square oh, oh sorry uh, this should be one in square and just copy and make this also apply okay apply. yes fine yes but we cannot cc and we cannot see this because you see that the base offset is this but we need to elevate it 51 mm yes finish floor levels okay and with that we'll be able to perfectly add it okay and we can just get rid of this mullion and pin it delete and delete this as well and just add remove segment one and two or this okay only one was needed to be removed sorry so let's just remove this one and add remove segment and remove this as well and this as well and select this particular uh -oh. press tab yes and unpin it and if you remember that we have added that double front double curtain wall store front which you can add and make this part of this particular curtain wall okay and this should actually go all the way till not first floor but terrace level yes but how to deal with this particular thing because here we have a beam so what we need to do is that we need to shift this but we'll do it that later right now let's just complete let me just complete this particular thing and now i can actually copy to clipboard and paste align to selected levels and i'll just transform it this window to first floor okay and here this to copy to clipboard and align to selected levels and to first floor and uh, these two windows will not come here because here there is a different the wrong direction and here i guess uh, let's see what is happening above and then we'll decide but for this also curtain wall i need to give a offset of 51 mm and edit type and just change all of this internals to one inch square and the boundary to 1.5 1.5 
this way it is more easy rather than copy paste apply and okay okay and you can just get rid of just mullions delete and delete this as well unpin and delete cc and delete why is it not selecting that particular mullion Oh uh, yes, unpin and delete. And unpin and delete, and just uh oh, unpin and delete, and just add remove segments. One, two, three, and four. Add remove segment. Yes, this is gone. Yes, now this horizontals. Okay, and also remove this particular mullion. Delete. And also remove this and delete. And with that, I can just select this entire frame. Why is it not allowing me to? Yes. And unpin and just change this to storefront wall double point. Okay. Happy? Fine. Fine. This is not balanced right now, but I'm just showing you the function. You can edit it later and make it a balanced window by adding the horizontal and vertical grid that way. Okay. And now we need to move on to the upper first floor and herein we have a lot of doors so and windows also so this particular two window will continue mm -hmm. yes this two windows copy to clipboard and align pay to selected levels and first floor okay so that will be added on first floor also as well. Yes. Okay. Also, this is added. If you want, you can just copy it and add one here too. And this will be the curtain wall, which will be leading to garden. So we will add the existing curtain wall and which one will select the kitchen curtain wall. Yes or yes kitchen curtain wall is fine one over here and one onto here okay and this doors are modify align tab tab two feet 11 inches so architecture and door and two feet eight inches door we already have for that mm -hmm. This is three foot, so this will not be allowed to add. We, will, we can add it here. And we can add it here also. Now here also we need a wall in order to add a door. So see. Yes. Just flip this direction. And duplicate this and call it two feet nine inches. And two feet nine inches apply and okay and first is that you need to have a wall here so wa just uh, first floor with offset of zero april terrace level top offset of nothing and just draw a wall not kitchen curtain wall here 4.5 4.5 where is it yes and just draw that with uh, finish core core face exterior 
maybe yes just draw it and with that now we'll be able to add that door dr is the shortcut and we edited it not single flush this now you can add this particular door here also and here also here the dimension is still less no but fine it was added okay and this same curtain wall cs draw from here to here okay and here is one window which window should we add there but before that to cs and place it one over here and one over here okay and this particular window uh, this is a bigger window so window and which window should we add let's select this particular double hung casement double hung or yes this is fine okay but let's if i just place this first let me just place this and modify and align or not aligned <laughs> measure and measure from here to here 10 foot so duplicate and duplicate and call it 10 foot and enter its width to be 10 foot and height to be if i'm going to add uh, 1 feet 15 inch of sill and if i want to reach or 18 inch of sill if i want to reach then this should be 6 foot 6 inches apply and ok and let me enter the sill height of only of 18 inches ok then open outside ok fine and with this railing and sketch path with the height offset of uh, 15 inches and I would like to lay it on first floor and from here till here finish and cs from here till here and finish and just like that we will also have here too so that's cs from here here we'll have a simple railing because we don't have space to add that glass panel bottom fill cs from here to here and finish and let's add that and then we'll change it to something different so let me just select this glass panel bottom fill and change it to end rail rectangular that is not being seen yeah that's fine one feet three inches okay that's okay now we have to add let's see here also there is one fixed window but here there is no space for the fixed window because we have added a window over here let's see it in 3d now and you see your building has started breathing the structure has started breathing okay perfect see this beautiful window and this too i guess will come on first floor also right it added to first floor only only the cell height is wrong so yes and this too should have six feet of cell height okay and this kitchen doesn't have a window i forgot to add one so let's select this cs and just place it 3d yes wrong way okay fine so you see that how fast we can work with rabbit and this should copy to clipboard and paste align to selected levels and go to first floor yes so from elevation point of view i have something balanced okay and here we will add 
Mm, let this corner be just like that. Okay, fine. Okay, now this particular portion is the blank. But anyways, here there is the toilet block, so there is no point adding anything. The blue end. R enter. Sorry. That's great. Okay, and let's add the openings on the terrace floor. So with that, we'll be done. And WF, uh, sorry, HR, you can see the AutoCAD plan and door and a simple two feet, nine inch door, uh, not that, a single flush. Yes, because it is a toilet door. And WF, where is this? Yeah, here it is. So door and three foot. Yes, and this here. Yes. And we can add one curtain wall here to make it look. Kitchen wall, curtain wall. Yeah, find one foot six inches and base offset to be. 51 mm yes and top offset to be 1 feet 6 inches let's add it okay and likewise uh, we also need to add window over here because see this is the window and actually it should have a 3 foot of sill because it is just uh, for the intake of light Okay, and uh, here too we can add that window, terrace level and CS and from here to here. Three D. Okay, fine. We can add the same copy and align to selected levels. Sorry. Modify and paste align to selected levels. We can add it on print level. Okay, that's great. Okay, fine. Okay, what next? We also had added railings over here fine and what we need to do is that we need a railing over here as well so now what needs to be done is that architecture and railing and place on stair ramp and just select this so this will be added but we don't need it railing this side because we have a wall over here and this is fine okay so you have added the railing to that but the only thing is that there is creating a problem with this edit path and cc wf uh -uh, hl and get rid of this path and we'll add some because of the weird uh, thread it is not accepting that path and here we have to add independently so upper ground floor and not upper ground, first floor. Ne upper ground floor, sorry. And CS and draft from this point to this point differently and just connect it. Yes. Okay. And now it's heat and treating. That's better, but it's added offset of one foot. Yeah, that's better. Okay. What else? We need to add roads and some human figures. Okay. And here also there needs to be something on both this end, but that, that we'll do it later. Now I'm just uh, going to a road level, a road or ground level. One, two, and three. Oh, but before that, we should have added human figures. Fine. We'll do that later ground or road level and I would say that component model in place and site 
okay and okay and i will call this road an extrusion i'm just going to create a bed simple extrusion and from here to here that overlaps that okay delete and trim and join this to this and zero and one inch and give it a material of asphalt road road is there no road is not there as asphalt asphalt yes payment dark gray okay and okay and with that now we need to create the site let's create the site and that would from 0 to 0 0.5 inch and that should have the material of earth earth yes and just increase this to let's say 15 feet by 15 feet is fine okay okay and finish and finish yes ah wow okay so now you see that the size gone below okay let's add some trees so architecture and component and model in place uh, sorry not model in place place a component and therein we have all these trees which you can add uh, this is two let's add one here it's hanging in air <laughs> let it bring to ground road level and for this i think that we need to go to site plan where is site plan yes let's add and let add couple of trees uh, 30 foot and let's say 25 feet and 20 feet I'm just adding randomly and 18 feet Ten feet okay let's see it in 3d oh fine you can adjust it later according to your preference i'm just showing you the command because if this way is you will not be able to see the elevation only so we need to add it to a particular place in such a way that actually this should come here this should go all the way back this should start this is just a personal choice you know, whatever you want to add can add it to your ways I'm just randomly adding to make that building breathe okay fine and not only this uh... <laughs> so I just go to ground floor then what happening in this portion uh, first floor let's go to first floor and here Mm, there is a blank wall so what can we do to this particular wall is that you know, we think it later now I need to go to insert insert and uh, not insert but component uh, do I have the human figures no we don't so we need to load load family and US and 
furniture and not furniture sorry entrage yes and that beetle and i would like to add this and okay so let's add car space yes and here too we can add one okay and then uh, this added a brown ribbon yes fine so now component and you can add human figures in order to make it lively more live and then go to site and place it at upper ground floor and place this Alex but add it at load level sorry I'm supposed to add it at upper ground floor here and one female over here Tina and then we can add this to balcony upper ground floor and then we can adjust let's, let's see it in 3d so see this to snap to upper ground floor okay and yes see yes and place it on on to say first floor place it here yes and you can just change it to from Alex to something else okay and okay that's it apart from using the existing library of Revit you can also create your own custom elements and add those to this particular project environment and i'll just show you that file and i'll just open up this file wherein you can see that using that particular function component and model in place i have created all this different sets of furniture using this particular command and with 3d drafting commands okay with this you can create any custom 3d element and i have created this particular custom 3d elements which i can copy so this is because since i have created here itself in the project environment you cannot load it if you create it in the family of it then you can you have an ability to add that to project environment with this you can just copy this particular 3d element to that particular uh, project environment fine so that was pertaining to the 3d interface of rabbit wherein we have modeled this entire structure starting from zilch that is starting from footing and laying all the structural elements that is the footing column beams ground beams and plane beams and floors and all of the structural elements and its connection to wall with the perfect joint condition and all the wrapping layers okay but as i've been always saying that rabbit is not only about the modeling of the 2d interface but uh, 3d interface but it very prominently and efficiently does model the 2d interface also okay that again has a bifurcation that is that one the first part refers to the documentation of several different types of drawings with different disciplines which are feeded with all the information which are necessary for its execution on site okay and the next part is this scheduling and quantification of all the 3d elements okay so i will just give you a small insight of that so as far as the drawings is concerned then we have two parts that one is the presentation drawing and another is the construction drawing okay so this are the details of the drawings of the presentation drawing wherein this is the site layout showing its location and its approach and everything and this particular thing uh, the top view of that particular structure fine likewise we can have the presentation of a particular of a particular floor plan also when you can see that this is the presentation drawing of the upper ground floor with all its details fine and the same way 
you can have for the same floor plan you can have the working set that is the construction drawings which are showing all the details wherein you can i have not feeded it with all the information but i have just detailed out this one particular wall wherein i have provided dimensions and you can see that rabbit also very efficiently dimensions in different ways that is very several different designers are often interested in providing uh, defining the in, in dimensioning different ways for example this is the continuous style this is the baseline style and this is the ordinate style wherein it is taking one reference point and then for all the segments it is have dimensioning it that way fine and you can also see that the nomenclature yeah fine so let me show you that so as far as the nomenclature is concerned then this particular presentation drawing of this floor plan is showing this reading living room one and it's showing its particular square feet area but as far as the working drawing is concerned then you saw that you can see that it is reading that's horizontal by verticals and reading the dimension that way fine not only this within this particular floor plan you have an ability to switch between various options for example if i just take you this furniture option a then this is the configuration and this is the furniture that is showing it in this option wherein i have taken option b as primary wherein assuming that this is the option that has been approved by client and this is the configuration of the furniture set in that option this doesn't only pertains to the floor plans if i just take you to the particular 3d then too for 3d also you see that this is one option with a straight roof and which has no details no weather shades on window and no elevation treatment and nothing and this is the option that is approved by client which has all the details and all the elevation treatments and the sloping roof okay fine so that was pertaining to design options apart from that what else you can do is that it uh, creates different other types of drawings also that is you can see that here in you have uh, elevation and let me just take you to this particular south elevation and you see that the elevations can also be created so beautifully which can be presented to clients okay this is the west elevation also you can have the exploded view of any particular one type which you can make it the part of sheet and present to your client okay and with that you can also have building sections and you see that this is the entire section to the staircase which is showing all the details as far as the structure part is concerned that is the beam and its joint connection with the floor and wall and its wrapping layers and the finishing layers that are provided on the particular slab okay not only this you can also create legends you see that this is the door legend and likewise you can create details of any particular 3d element in rabbit but what my point is that as a designer as an architect or designer we are working on autocad for years and we have lots of details established and drafting like autocad is difficult in rabbit so for what you can do in that case is that under this view you have also this drafting view and this is that same drafting view and what you can do is that you can create your particular details in autocad and then uh, take that particular drawing to this uh, rabbit to this interface and here in also you can edit it by going to vg under this uh, imported categories you have that ca all the layers this are not uh, this are right now showing lot of layers but you need to segregate it and limit your layers and then you can have overrides and you can define it your own line pattern and uh, hatch pattern and everything and do whatever modifications you want to that particular autocad drawing also and then make that particular autocad drawing part of that sheet okay apart from that you can have this area gross building floor plan that open designers are interested in the calculation of space that what is the ratio of semi private is to private is to public is to circulation and that so that can also be efficiently created in rabbit and after creating all these details what can you do is that you can create beautiful schedules okay you see that lots of schedules has been created right now i'll just show you this particular area gross plan then this is the area gross area schedule gross building for this particular upper ground floor wherein it is showing different areas have different square feet right just like that you can create this particular door schedule wherein it is showing all the different types of doors that has been used 
on different floors that is on upper ground floor this particular single plush 2 feet 9 inches that is having two instances while the same door on the first floor are having four instances and you can add what all details you want to add while going to this particular fields and adding your preferred category okay i have right now just randomly added few details with random figures and random information fine just to show you just to demonstrate to you that these are the uh, categories of details that you can add and with that you can have the total number of door floor wise also and total number of door in your entire project see 22 doors but this is the costing fine and likewise you can have your window schedule and the same information is feeded okay and the floor schedule which are showing the floor plates that are the rct slab which you are going to cast and its area and that is floor wise okay that is right now the plinth floor five different types of floor uh, floor plates are going to be uh, floor five different types of slabs are going to get casted which is the uh, and this is the total of that particular area fine likewise you can also create this room schedule okay and the wall schedule which is showing its base constraint top constraint its total length area and volume okay so not only this in this particular floor if you just want that this particular floor uh, plinth plinth level private then what are the finished layers of that and what is the quantity of that so that also can be very efficiently done in Revit and how it is done is that I'll just show you you can have the material takeoff material takeoff for the example if I just take you to this particular material takeoff for this particular levels then level wise it is showing you all the segregation wherein right now I have uh, filtered it only to upper ground floor okay if I just click here none then all the floors details will be enlisted that on basement slab so and so is the material that are going to be used this is its area this is volume and I have also added the cost factor wherein I have just not added all the figures but I just added this one see if I just update it here 4000 and wherever that particular material is going to get used in their entire project that will compute okay and from this I have just filtered level and that equal to upper ground floor and okay so that will show you the materials that are going to get used on the upper ground floor okay not only this from this many materials which are going to get used on your upper ground floor if you want to segregate one particular material for they say that how much amount of plaster how much cubic feet of plaster is going to get used on the particular floor then that is also possible just by filtering it and filtering it by material name equal to brick beds so not plaster sorry brick beds so this are the uh, amount of brick beds that uh, are going to use for waterproofing on different floors okay as per the use and this also refers to the material takeoff for wall for example you can see that these are the different types of wall compound wall load bearing wall plaster beam wall box wall main wall and this is the detail from this if you let's say that you want just the quantity of plaster then this is the the quantity of plaster for base constraint for main wall 9 inch with base constraint and top constraint and its length area and volume so you can feed it with all the informations which are necessary for execution on site okay and after creating this all the details you can have the wonderful documentation of that that is you can create a sheet a beautiful sheet with all the details and this will take a bit of time to compute and regenerate because it has been added with a lot of details so, yeah so this is one sheet so of course the designer will never issue a sheet in this format but just to show you that drawings of different disciplines have different scales and different uh, information can be assembled together on one particular one sheet and you can have this sheet composition this way when in this you can see that this is an exploded view of a project which I just showed you and this is the presentation drawing this is the entire site layout this is the working drawing elevations and most important the schedule can also be part of this particular sheet 
okay and with that you can add revisions on the, also on the sheet you can just have a cross check of all the revisions that have been added to this particular sheet and right now you see that this particular floor plan are having two revisions and that has been documented here okay but what my point is that as far as the scheduling and quantification part is concerned then how will you cross check and verify that what all uh, this particular figures it is reading are perfect or not okay for example if we talk about this particular floor material takeoff then on upper ground floor these are the different types of materials that uh, the finished layer that are going to get added on the rcc slab but how will you figure out that what all figure that is reading is perfect or not so to demonstrate that i will just show you a simple example wherein i'm just going to show you this small structure which is i wherein i have switched between units from imperial to matric and i have rounded up the uh, figures just to have the cross check and verification of this okay so you can see that it has four walls wherein this is 3.52 and this is three meters wall and it is reading 3.52 because this is 20.26 see the 23 230 mm of wall and 150 mm of plaster on both sides you can also have wiper gation like 19 mm of plaster on this uh, external side and 12 mm of plaster on internal side but just to have a round figure i have rounded it up okay and with that you have this 3.52 and this is it okay so now what you read is that for this particular length 3.52 the area is 3.56 so 3.52 cross 3 meters that is the height and why because the area is always length into its height two dimensional okay and that will give you the area of this particular wall and what what can we do with that particular area why, why is that what is that area what is what is this particular figure used for that is the cost of masonry work cost of this particular masonry work the field that you can see that i have added let me just take you to this particular schedule and field and you see that cost of masonry work this cost this particular cost of masonry work is always done a, as per area that is area times cost okay so what what is the cost now to explain you the cost right now i have added 140 which is the standard cost of construction of one square feet of masonry work in my neighborhood that might differ in your neighborhood it excludes the amount of plaster okay the plaster work is excluded this is just a figure for construction work of one square feet okay so area that is length by height into its cost that is 140 into 10.76 because this particular file is in metric system and this particular cost which i have added 140 rupees of one square feet of masonry work is as per the square feet that is imperial system so that into 10.76 that will give you the cost of the wall also mission rework also okay with that you can design this number of bricks also and what does it read that is the volume that is this particular volume divided by 0 0.003 meter cube so where did i derive this particular figure from so to demonstrate that i will just show you one simple ppt wherein you see that the size of one brick in my neighborhood it, it might differ from neighborhood to neighborhood but in my locals it is 230 mm 9 inch cross 115 that is 4.5 cross 75 mm that is three three inch of height okay so that will give you the give me the volume of one brick now the motor of the plaster that is going to get used for this is 10 mm so with that the size of one brick becomes 2.24 cross 0 0.125 cross 0 0.085 meter okay so with that we have the volume of one brick and that is 0 0.00255 meter cube now that is the volume of one brick with motor okay now number of bricks in one meter cube is the volume of one brick that is one divided by volume of one brick with mortar so with that i have we will get that one uh one meter cube of uh, masonry work will require 392 bricks okay this figure is uh, just the tentative uh, i mean this figure is not perfect or accurate but it's just uh, it, it when you calculate it it will be this the number of bricks which you get this way which will be much precise rather than sitting with a calculator and spending an hour than hour okay so this is the way you can cross check and verify your sheet uh, your project okay and you can feed it with all information not only this you have also material takeoff 
wherein you see that you have or uh, you can also add the cost of you can also calculate the cost of plaster if i just take you to this particular field then for the cost of plaster what i have added is that the material area which i have feeded the information in its material palette okay not in its type properties into its material cost and into two times because both the sides internal and external plaster and again into 10.76 so with this, you can have the cost of plaster also. Fine. Okay. One more thing I wanted to show you is that what does this implies? What does all these things, what does this explanation implies? This explanation implies that there is actually no way to cross check or verify that whatever, um, as far as this project is concerned, then whatever, what all uh, figures that is reading for this volume and area are correct or not correct. There is actually no way. The only way out is that from day one, you be have to be very perfect and very precise and be very particular in your modeling. Okay. Then only you will be able to achieve this particular precision. Fine. So just to round off, just to round off this particular thing, that is three cross three is going to be nine meters square. And that cross three is going to be three point uh, that's cross three cross three and it's again into its height. So that is going to be 2.340 of meter cube of volume. So just that to just just to have a round figure, I have added this particular value. But if you just watch it here, this particular point, then you see that this wall has actually been designed this way just to have the round figure. And that's why it is reading this particular nine meter square of an area. But ideally, this plaster will not come. And if I just move it from this point to this point, element will be deleted. Yes, fine. And as soon as I do this and I join geometry, okay. And with that, if I just watch this point here, it will update and join and switch order. And you see. So with this, you see that this particular wall is reading exactly nine meters square of area. Whereas this particular wall is having length of three meters, but still the area it is reading 9.86 meters square. That is, it is excluding the amount of this much amount of plaster, okay, which was added just to have a round figure so that I wanted to make you understand. And this way is also if you add a column to this particular thing, column and beam to this particular thing, then that particular thing will reflect it changes in volume okay but what my point is that if i add a column to this let's say that architecture and under this column if i just go to architectural not architectural column but a structural column okay and structural column 12 cross 18 inch fine and if i just put it somewhere over here and sorry uh, it was supposed to be height and up to first floor yes and if i just add it over here okay and if I just go to modify and align, align this face to this face and this face with this face. And actually I made a wrong alignment. It should be aligned on the internals. Okay, fine. And as soon as I join this with particular this wall and this to this wall, then what do you notice that this doesn't have any effect on this particular figures? Why? And the figures are still the 9 meters square and 8.96 meters square. And as far as this wall is concerned, it's still reading 10.56 meters square. So, why is that? That is because area is always calculated on the basis of length cross height. And this particular wall, these two walls, despite of this uh, structural column, you see that this wall is going up till this end and this wall is going up till this end and the layer of plaster is grabbed. So if the area is calculated on the basis of length parameter, then how will you exclude this much portion from this machinery work? So again, at that time, your drafting skills comes into picture and what you need to do is just unjoin this and also unjoin this fine and then make snap it to this point and just snap it to this point yes with that you see that now your figures are updated so 
Now it is reading exactly perfectly the area and on the basis of that the construction cost. This construction cost depends on this area and now the area has been updated. Okay, but again you want to see the if, you, if I just take you to the 3D of this part. And uh, I hope that this particular concept is clear with you guys. So I'll just close out of that. But what my point is that you want to have a clean joint. But just to have a perfect area, you reduce it according to the size of the column. So what will you do in order to have a plus joint on this part? Okay. So for that, what we'll do is that under architecture, under columns, you have this structural columns and that will exactly wrap according to the and I have already designed it and already made it so that's why it is perfectly adding you just need to convert the units into mm and then compute and then design it okay so with this now we have a plus joint and modify and join and from architecture structural column I'll deduct this okay and you see that we have a perfect join condition and we don't have any issues and the layer of plaster in wrap but still if you just take this particular wall schedule and it will be still reading that same value that is 8.32 meters square which was earlier fine just like that what if i add a beam to it then how will you exclude plaster because just like rectangular columns for architectural purpose we don't have architectural beams so what will you do so the trick in that case is that just take this wall and have a top offset of minus 18.5 inch fine and that will automatically convert and then put your structural beam and onto that put a false wall which will wrap to that particular structure layer okay and that is why that is how you'll be able to perfectly quantify it okay so this was a little bit about building information modeling and this course BIM, which is the combination of structure plus architecture plus MEP. Okay. So if you think that the video was worth, then kindly enroll for this course and let's learn together and let's grow together. Bye and have a good day.